We are the bind. We are the set. We are the squeeze. We are the hit. We are Rhino. Home of the scrum. Hello everyone and welcome to the second leg of the 2022 Asia Rugby 7 Series. Uh, we got a full weekend of rugby action for you today. We're going to kick off with UAE China in the men's pool. Joining me today is a uh, Korea rugby referee and translator and manager and what we call an N-job role here in Korea, which means he's got many jobs. Welcome to Austin. Thank you, Andrea. Good to see you. I'm just here to have a um, do the commentary and the first time for me. We are even like this show us like, a good team. Okay? Um, and this is always a great tournament here in Korea. I know I've played on this field many times. We've got a perfect conditions here today. Probably looking about 15, 16 degrees Celsius. And a beautiful, luscious green uh, pitch here you can see on the screen. Here we go, the two teams coming out to the field. We've got UAE and China. This is a bit of a, a rival match. Uh, in Thailand a couple weeks ago, UAE pulled off a big surprise and beat the Chinese team, which normally is a, a semi-final team but uh, ended up uh, sending UAE to the semi-final, so a big grudge match here. Yeah, I think like, like UAE is like big quality guy, really, and the like, Chinese, they also like preparing a lot. And also I heard that the Chinese government, they've um, been trying to put the money into the Chinese team a lot, so I'm really get looking forward to those, both of those teams. Yeah, it always comes down to funding. The Chinese team is uh, well backed. Here's the head coach of the UAE. So he's ready to go. And here we go, about to kick off here with the second leg of the Asian 70s series. Looks like we got the UAE all lined up to the left. And here we go. Nice high kick. Just a little bit of a mistake there on the take. And the first tackle of the tournament. Oh, right off, right off the rock. Nice little play. Now China with a big, uh, wide opportunity here. We've got to be careful there. The good thing we have Oscar here is we've got the, the inside of a referee, with the uh, inside of a referee. So please, please uh, help us with some of the calls as you see it. Yeah, sure, yeah. The first time, I, if we look at the 12, I think the referee blew up for a roll away, and will like I think that play made um, the red team to bother the ball. So 
I think the referee will call it for a penalty. Right, you gotta away. get out of the um, ruck zone really clearly and really quickly uh, in the seventh uh, side of the game. Just uh, competing with the ruck there, so it looks like penalty to China, and they've decided to take the scrum, which is an interesting decision here. But looks, looking like they're gonna bring in the, the big UAE forwards, and the Chinese uh, are famous for their speed out wide and maybe release their backs. Oh, look at that big body, eh? I think they could push the scrum a lot. Scrum nice and clean. Good platform here for China to attack. A nice cut there. Beautiful. Nice and easy. First phase try. First try of the tournament for China. Look at the speed. I was really like amazing. I was really amazing. Yeah, look, there's a good look at the replay. Yeah, it, was it was just a simple play, wasn't it? It was just a scrum. Uh, the center made a movement, just a nice little C or switch, and uh, nothing but the uh, try line in front of him. It came down to a foot race, and it was an easy, uh, easy win for him. Now this is a tough con conversion here from the touch line. Just to the well, short end to the right there. It's a good start for China. You know, they wanted to start quickly here against UAE because they actually lost that match to UAE last weekend. So, um, good for them to get on the board right away. And China out here with a split field. It's a good kick. Get up there and contest. Oh, great take there by the UAE player. Now, first time for the UAE to uh, get their hands on the ball and do something in attack. There's a big deal here. He's got one option only. Uh, a little bit loose there. Yeah, that play, uh, when he made the uh, offload, it was a little bit poor, but like, if that guy made the offload really well, then I think that should be good to try. Yeah, it's one of those things, it's that risk, right? You know, it's early in the game, the first time you touch the ball, you might want to keep the ball in some fa uh, in some aspects, but sometimes you, you want to, you know, take that risk, take that challenge, but obviously didn't pay off there. I think the first game, you know, at 10 a.m., you probably want to just get through the phases a little bit, um, but unlucky there for the UAE, and another opportunity for China, basically in the same spot as the penalty of the school level. Let's see what they do here. A little role play in the middle of the field. Get the ball early to the middle. This is a speedster here. Oh, look at that. Oh, what was the decision here? It looked like it might have come off with the UAE hand in the tackle, but uh, deemed to be a line out for the UAE. It's the first line out of the tournament. Yes. The ball went to the left side, so I think the AO was giving the signal to the referee, and then after that, the referee broke for not straight. You can see what UA is doing there. The Chinese uh, historically have a really good set piece uh, in the sevens game, whether it's a scrum or the line out. They got tall, big athletes, so instead of throwing the ball up there, they did a little back movement. And they come to the front, but unfortunately, the, uh, just the, the lineup ball is not going straight. So we're going to start with another Chinese scrum, already third scrum in the first half. You can see UAE are quite physical at the breakdown. It's an opportunity here for the UAE. Turn over the ball, you want to be able to go here. Chinese line looks pretty good. Though. Let's see if the UAE can get through some of the games here. Yeah, that player was the red thing over there, he was on the ground, so that's the referee blow for the off feet. Yeah, straight off his feet there the yeah. situation. Quick tap here for the UAE. 
I don't think they want to get in a set piece battle with China quite strongly. Oh, that's a great play right up the middle. Does he have the speed? He's going. Oh, that's a beautiful try. What a nice try. Just nothing too uh, complex there. Just a quick tap, a little bit of movement in the middle of the field, a quick uh, switch play, and, and a bit of speed there from the player. But I think Chinese defense was also great, but for this moment, the white team, the UAE, they made a good Number four from game out and like, the carry. He, was really he was in speed and like he's really powerful. It's all about helping your inside defender in sevens. You got 70 meters, seven players covering the pitch. If the inside defender doesn't help your man, you get caught on a step or a switch like that, um, then the gaps start to open. So a little bit better connections needed there from the Chinese players in the middle of the field. But out wide, they look pretty solid in defense. UAE now this time opting to kick, looks like, to the right. Looks like we might have the last play here in the first half. Number four from Aramal, race of success, and the Virgin King scored two additional points. There's the Hooter, so this will be the final play of the first half. Well, that, well, that, that was a little bit high. Yep. In the booth and on the field, Oscar spelling that. This is the Chinese danger man. It's a little bit loose here. Ooh, almost intercepted. Now there's a bit of an opportunity here. There's another speed still. Can the Chinese make it? They could have just kicked it out in the, second, in the second half, but they decided to uh, to play on and let's see if it uh, plays, play, plays dividends. The UAE with the counter lock here. And that should be winning in the first half. So pretty balanced in the first half. It's like, you know, we've only got one minute here in halftime, right, correct? One yeah, minute, uh, two minutes. Yeah. Two minutes, two minutes for the teams to kind of debrief that half and, and make the adjustments needed. There's not much in it uh, in this game so far. You can see why China and UAE push, pushed each other in, in the first leg. Um, I think from UA, UAE standpoint, you know, they kept the ball once. They only attacked twice. They knocked it on once. Um, and scored on the other, so for them, it's just about, we'll for take China. Two it's about using their danger man out wide. But um, they're also making some mistakes as well, and a little bit loose in the ruck, so just cleaning up their, their ball in the ruck. You can see here. The Sorry, we're going to take the long bit of sprint. From the wall, we're going to take the long bit of sprint. Half time always a good opportunity for the players to get their breath back. You can see some of the boys, they're already struggling. Here's some of the first half highlights. Look at the speed, eh? Yeah, we can't get the outside to the speed so like that. And this just takes it away. Chinese defense not helping out on the inside. Get a switch. Too easy. Starting to, uh, starting to show here. Uh, beautiful day for OP. Now I heard that that afternoon it's going to rain, so I think they're tactically the team's going to prepare for the rain. We've got scheduled rain. I think I saw that the rain is going to come here after three o'clock. So. Uh, correct. It looks like from about 4 p.m. onwards. So that that last um, set of games looks like yeah, there is going to be rain. Okay. So time for the second half. China to kick us off. <laughs> She's going to come to the stadium. So <laughs> 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 
Substitution by our Number one is substituted for number eight. There. They put in a great kick and contested well. But UAE, oh, beautiful. UAE got some steppers on the field, everybody. Be careful. And that's the thing with seven. Sometimes you just need a little bit of individual magic there, a little bit of footwork to uh, get the gaps there for you. Uh, it's just it looked like the Chinese defense had him covered. Number seven from like Aero scored a try and scored That's by not one. a good start for China. They put in a great kickoff. They contested well. You'd think they almost won their ball back, but now they're going down 14-5. You'd think the kick is going to go over here in front of the post. Yep, and it's over. UAE have to be happy with the, the way the game is going so far. They haven't seen much of the ball, but three times they've touched the ball, they've scored two times, so very efficient. Number four from Aero Bamis has succeeded on coverage and kick and scored two additional points. Bit of luck there. to be um, a legal play there at the rep by the Chinese player. So UAE got another opportunity to attack right in front of the Chinese line. If they score this one, it could be over already. Ooh. Look at that. There's your first uh, big bump, big hit of the day. UAE looking good. Yeah, I think they trained a lot. Look at this. Just a one-on-one -on -one contest here. Is it you or is it me? Number 12 from Aero Bamis has scored the try and scored five oh, points. Number 13 from Aero Bamis has Power, speed, and a ball carry. Everything was really perfect. Great conversion. 21 5. This is looking difficult for China. They're going to need to get the ball quickly there off the kickoff, secure the kickoff, and score right away if they have any chance to get back into this game. Substitution by Aaron Amaranth. Number 4 is substituted by number 6. In a year's time, China bringing on four subs here. They're just bringing on the cavalry. Starters had their chance. Coach obviously didn't have to go to the so just made a good set of changes here. Number, Number 10 from Arab Emirates has succeeded on coverage kick and scored two, two additional, additional points. Okay, we're back here with the UAE kickoff. That's uh, a good tactic there. They're up 21-5, just playing territory. Oh, that's a perfect kick. Making China go to 400 meters if they want to score. That's uh, just tactically really astute, but really good play by the UAE. Uh, amazing stuff. UAE putting on a clinic here. Not from the mark though, so we're gonna have to take that back. Just looking physical at the breakdown. Here. Yeah. And like, if we look at this situation, like the white team, the UAE made a great, great pressure to the China, so that's why they made their best deal. Number two is something It's just too easy for the UAE team right now. I mean, they're playing great defense, but I mean, great attack, but the Chinese defense just seems to be not on the same page right now. Um, there's nothing too you know, complex about what UAE is doing. It's just a bit of footwork, and this playmaker here, he scored earlier. He's put it on a show this morning here in Minchang. I'm just really impressed by the game plan that they They clearly have some footwork and big ball carriers utilizing them very well. Um, they have the, the sense there to, to be 21 up and kick the ball deep into the territory and make China go the 400 meters. And then I think defensively, the, the main point is to attack the breakdown. And so far, they're winning all the plays in the breakdown. It's just really clinical stuff in the year. Oh, look at this. Oh, unlucky. Substitution by China team. Number five is substitution for number six. And they just spotted that one-on-one -on -one opportunity off the kickoff. 
no one was expecting it and he just chipped it up there and really unlucky if he brought that ball down you know UAE was right on the attack again. but you know you're always looking at statistics in, in the modern game of rugby and UAE have touched the ball six times in attack and they scored four knocked the ball on twice so it was just very efficient stuff here UAE bringing on two players here I think I think the job is done so I think it's about getting uh, the boys um, some rest getting some of the boys on the bench some opportunities to, to get a run out job done here at 28-5 where did it go wrong for China also, they started so well they looked like the most dangerous team but haven't been able to score. You know, they scored the first try. I haven't scored since. Yeah, like first time I expected that like Chinese could make they could make a try about like two or three tries, but like it's an opposite. And they can't secure their own ball at the ruck. And to be honest, I don't like to use this term, but just look a little lightweight in the in the contact area, and that's not what you expect from China. Normally, a very physical and, and very well structured team but just a little bit loose and a little bit light with the rock. You know, it, it doesn't matter if you're a 50 kg winger, if you take the ball into contact, you're responsible for the ball to come back down. Chinese coaches, coaches have not been happy with the possession and territory of the Chinese team in this first game. So he came out for the tunnel, so it's going to be a scrum again. They'll stay with Chinese ball, correct? I saw UAE, UAE, UAE yeah, was UAE. Sorry, yeah. China had the knock on at the breakdown, correct? Alright, let's, let's put on the shift. Get your rest, got a game in a couple hours. I think diving on the player, right? Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, you're not allowed to dive on the player there. Arab Emirates is going to take his seat up. Shiri wants to go. Go, 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 the game is over. We're about to have a hoover here with China just for consolation. We need to put something on the board just to feel a bit better about themselves going um, into later uh, games today. Let's see if they can finish with a try. I think it's going to be a loss of opportunity. That's good footwork there. And you know, the game is lost, but you know, you can feel good about finishing the track. The Chinese have the ability to score like this, they have the speed, they have the footwork. It's just uh, not sticking to the game plan, just being a bit loose. So I think China came down to just score the try and score five points. was able to contest the rucks and create turnovers, whereas China couldn't secure their own ball. If China can just take care of their own ball a bit better, um, they look like a dangerous team. And there you go, game one here at the 2022 second leg of the Asia Series is finished. UAE with another big win against China. Great performance. Number six from China has succeeded on coverage King and scored two additional points.
Alright, for the second game, it's gonna be Hong Kong against Sri Lanka. At the first um, Asia Open 7 series, Hong Kong made a, a trophy, so I think um, they could make a good result in this game. Is in this game also, but also Sri Lanka, they prepare a lot, of, a lot for in their country. So I think this game is gonna be really tough. How do you think about that? About this game, Andre? Yeah, I mean, Hong Kong is uh, slowly becoming the favorites uh, year in, year out at the Asia 7 Series. They have started to really figure out how to win this tournament. Um, and just probably the most consistent uh, team on the circuit. They have the, you know, they're always here with the same players, same coaching staff, and the same style of play. Um, and Hong Kong looking really impressive in Thailand. Also, really impressive last weekend at the Hong Kong Sevens. And uh, we, we'd like we just like to welcome back Sri Lanka to the Asian Seven Series. I know they missed uh, the first leg in th um, in Thailand, and sport and politics don't really have any uh, place to mix with one another. But it's great to see uh, the Tuskers back, even though uh, things aren't going uh, maybe so well in Sri Lanka. Uh, the Tuskers have an opportunity here to put a smile back on. Uh, the fans back in Sri Lanka, so we're really looking forward to both the Sri Lankan men's and women's team uh, this weekend here. All right, let's have a look for this game. Uh, Hong Kong made a good result in the World Cup, eh? Yeah, Hong Kong have been, you know, they've been building and building over the past couple of years. They, they you know, ever since they've uh, got pro contracts, I think almost 10 years now, and the Sevens program has really taken leaps and bounds really good result you know they won the 2018 Asian Games and since that they've just grown and grown and grown uh, a couple wins at the hunk, uh, the World Cup sevens in Cape Town again as you said they won the uh, the first leg in Thailand and they didn't win any games unfortunately last weekend in uh, Hong Kong at the Hong Kong sevens at the World Series level but they put in some immense performances um, you got to be really impressed with this Hong Kong Hong Kong side Well, I have a question to you, Andre. Uh, when when you play with Hong Kong, how did it feel when you play with Hong Kong? You know, I mean, I would say, you know, Hong Kong and, and, and Japan are the top two, and Korea, the Korean team, is trying to break into that top two bracket. I think they're right there. I think skill levels, talent-wise, they're right there. It's just about that con consistency. And when I always, I always love to, I always love those games against Hong Kong because they are the the gold standard, I think, in the Asian Seven Series. Um, so you know, mentally, it was the game I really wanted to play in and be prepared for. Um, and I think there's just so much to learn from from the Hong Kong team, just their systems, their management, um, their game plan, and just the balance of the team. Really great team. Really, really impressed by Hong Kong. And we're looking forward to what Hong Kong has to show. But at the same time, Hong Kong has that structure and balance. Sri Lanka has that speed and a bit of that X factor. And we haven't seen them yet so far in 2022. So we're really looking forward to what uh, Sri Lanka, the men's Tuskers, have to offer. Looks like we're having a little bit of a delay here. Um, probably the first of many, you know, as things go. Here we go, the two teams coming out. Hong Kong in their uh, traditional blue with the stripes and Sri Lanka in their traditional green.
You know, we know what we're going to expect from Hong Kong. We're going to expect clinical play. We're going to expect possession and physicality. Ladies and gentlemen, we really would like to introduce reference for the match between Hong Kong and Sri Historically, they're very quick team, not the most physical, but highly skilled and very quick. But looking at some of their bodies today, it looks like they've brought a bigger team than they have uh, historically uh, to the Asian 7 Series. Looks like Hong Kong are going to get ready to kick us off. And again, just said it before, but really happy to see Sri Lanka back here at the Asian 7 Series. They missed the, the first leg, and I know things aren't going well back in the home country, but there's nothing better for the Sri Lanka fans than these seven players here on the field to win a game and put the smile on the faces of the rugby fans back home in, uh, in Colombo and all over Sri Lanka. Russell Webb to kick us off with his left foot. It's a beautiful kick. What a contest. Just clinical. Oh, look at that power. Let's go field here. Off. They go left or right. They choose to go right. Just nice and physical. That's what you, you expect to see from Hong Kong. Nothing too flash. Just going to keep the ball and grind teams down. Too wide. Can you make it? Set! Set! Go to the wide, and I think they can make a try. I think, sir. So. Oh, it's a great tackle there. Got to finish it though. Oh, nice little offload in the tackle. First try to Hong Kong did not take long. Within one minute, the favorites of the tournament have already scored their first try. Even like Hong Kong get tackled, they try to get the ball, and then he. They try to give the ball to the, to the supporters, and the supporters try to give the ball. I think the Hong Kong was like, the tacticals were really brilliant. Yeah, it's just about that balance the, the Hong Kong team have. They've got some big ball carriers and some shifty guys. So it's like they're just trying to get the ball out wide to the big ball carriers and looking for offloads and, uh, and that sort of situation. Oh, Russ with a, with a nice little kick there. Doesn't matter how it looks as long as it goes over. Something you don't want to see is an injury in the first minute of your first game. It's like that's a Hong Kong player. I think Harry Sayers, the, uh, the winger, has been really impressed for the last couple of years. And that tackle just came up unhappy there, maybe the lower leg, and let's hope he's okay for the rest of the tournament. He's a big player for the Hong Kong. Looks like substitution has been made, so Hong Kong back to seven players on the field. Oh, that's a great take. Not an easy skill to go get catch that ball on a single left. Ah. Deemed not to be knocked on, but deemed to come off the field. So Sri Lanka still able to attack him. Yeah, that was a high tackle. It's just one of those ones where the attack, you know, they, they dive into the attack. So it's a bit difficult. It's a bit difficult. Okay, we get to see Sri Lanka attack for the first time in 2022. There's no knock on there, but uh, Hong Kong was able to win the penalty. And I think they're just going to slow the tempo down here. It looks like Russ Webb opting for the line out. When you got someone with an educated boot like that, you're always going to opt for the line out because. Not only can they gain meters on the kick, Hong Kong historically have one of the most clinical lineups as well. Hong Kong showing great play, but I'm not sure about these haircuts though. Hey, it looks really cool. Uh, I can introduce some good barber here in Incheon maybe. <laughs> nice line here. Good footwork. Just settling things. Oh, look at the speed, look at the power. Bit of hot potato, but it comes back to Seb Bryan and he gets Hong Kong's second try under the post. 
Well, I think that Hong Kong, they could find out this space and they try to attack the space. So that's where they make a great gain line. Look at that. Uh, the nice thing about Hong Kong when you watch their attack is nothing seems rushed. You know, they have a clear game plan and, and everyone seems very patient. You know, even then, you know, one or two things didn't go to plan, but they're able to just get back into their systems, find the big ball carriers, make some meters, and then their nifty boys again. Uh, able to find a bit of space, find an offload, and finish under the post. You know, it's it's become a theme of Hong Kong rugby. It's just clinical. That's going to be a substitution. We're going to expect another high kick here from Russell. I mean, that ball's got to come down with a bit of moisture. It gets it so high. Nice contest there from Hong Kong. Uh, they just do it so well, that kickoff uh, aspect of the game. Bit of offloads. That should be another try. Sevens is all about possession. If you have the ball, you can score. If you have the ball, the, the opposition can't score. And right now, Hong Kong is just not even letting Sri Lanka touch the ball. Um, that's three kickoffs, two of them make one, and three tries in the first five minutes of the first half. It's just clinical stuff. Just walking it in. And I think we're going to expect to see Sri Lanka get better as the weekend goes, just because this is probably their first international comp competition of 2022. So, you know, they, they're coming up against the defending champs, probably the most clinical and, and well-drilled team in Hong Kong. Um, so it, it was always going to be a difficult first game for Sri Lanka. But, you know, at 21-0, you know, they can still um, flip, flip the game because they have that ability, they have that speed. They just need to secure this kickoff. So let's see how it goes. on there. It's just this 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 kickoff, this set piece. They're just so clinical and so tactically astute. The Hong Kong team, they've got a great you know, it starts from your kicker and then it starts and then the, the next step in the process is is the chase line and the compete. And it's it's a hard thing to replicate 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 in uh I haven't spoken English in a while, so I'm always <laughs> speaking Korean, but uh, it's a hard thing to uh, to mimic in training, but Hong Kong obviously have done it really well and, and, and are prepared to do it with class. Maybe it's the tackler? Yeah. yeah, you have to have a clear release um, once a tackle is made. Looking like Hong Kong here opting to do a bit of a set, uh, like a tap move. We're probably going to see some runners make some changing angles, changing lines. Oh, didn't go to plan there. That's right though, to clean it up. Now the hooter is gone, but uh, choosing to keep the attack going. Looking for one more try before the end of the half. Oh, they got the ball. Okay, opportunity here for Sri Lanka. They missed the ball and to Hong Kong. They got the ball and going to the wide. Can you make it? Oh, nice little offload there over the top. Oh, out the back with Dean Ford. Unlucky. That was beautiful stuff there. Yeah, unlucky for Sri Lanka there. They only touched the ball twice in, in the first half and both ended up in turnovers within their own half. So, you know, that's just first game jitters, I think, you know. It's a bit of nervousness. Uh, they, you know, they have to find their rhythm again. But, uh, you can see when they turn over that, that first five, ten meters, some of the fastest players in the Asian 7 series is uh, part of the players from the Sri Lankan team. Similar to maybe China in the first game, you just want to see them hold on to the ball. If they can just secure their ruck, get a few phases going, they're going to push this Hong Kong team to the limit. But you can't turn the ball over. In the game, so. I think at the first time, like Sri Lanka, they do have a they they do have an ability, but I think they got nervous because of the Hong Kong. They went to the World Cup and also they won the tournament for the last tournament.
Well, I think they do. They don't need to get nervous. I think they just need to get confidence and do what they did before in the in their country. And yeah, that's a great point. You know, Hong Kong. You know, there, there's an argument that All Blacks win matches even before the game is kicked off because of the haka and the mental side of the game. I will be honest and say that Hong Kong has a bit of that mental edge over a lot of these teams just because of the dominance that they've showed on the Asian series so far. But at the end of the day, it's just you know 12 blokes against 12 blokes. You know, you tackle anyone below, you know, at the legs, they can't run. So uh, I think that's a really good point. I think Sri Lanka just need to focus not so much on Hong Kong and the opposition, but just about uh, themselves, just making those passes stick and securing the ball at the ruck. And I think they should be much better. Might be difficult in this game, but you would think they're going to win a couple games here in Incheon this weekend. It's funny, when I was a player, though, that halftime felt so quick, but when you're in the commentator booth, the two minutes actually goes by quite slowly. Yeah, it but was quite slow, yeah. When you're huffing and puffing in the middle of the game, th those two minutes feel about 10 seconds long. Maybe about like three years ago when I was a referee in that moment. For me, for the two minutes, it was really short. Exactly, yeah. Like, for me, like, like I thought that like, since it too short and like, I was running again, <laughs> it was too tough for me. Sri Lanka to kick us off. Ooh, it's a nice little chip shot. Uh, unfortunately, there's a nice little idea there, just putting a little chip shot there for the Sri Lanka forward to compete, but just a little bit long. But I think if that player competed and tried to slap that ball back in, there might have been a chance. That's where you got to lay out and sacrifice for the team. The kick might not be perfect, but you got to put your body on the line there, try to save that ball. Little tap play, little switch in the middle of the field. All slow tempo stuff. Ooh, nice little line there, but now we've already we've seen two offloads now go to be intercepted by the Sri Lankan team. I think you're Hong Kong, you don't need to force that offload. It's not really part of the game is, is, is off the deck, off the stuff. It's just Hong Kong is all about just keeping the phases, go, go 10 phases and score, especially at this level. But a couple turnovers here, one at the end of the first half and one to start the second half. You would think uh, the coaches might not be happy with that. Going to the left side. Just not on the right page so far, Sri Lanka. There's this element in sevens where um, you don't have to score every time you touch the ball. And that's something that it looks like the Sri Lankans have a bit of that pressure is, is you know, they want to do well. They want, you know, it's the first time in 2022 on the series. It's the first international game. So I know they're they're buzzing to go, but you still got to, you know, keep the ball, get through the phases and look for the gaps, not force anything, but take the opportunities given to you. But they're just forcing stuff a little bit too early. Ooh, nice little switch play here in the middle. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Does he have the speed? Ah, oh, what a sensible play there. Didn't have the speed, so found the offload. Nice set piece try there from Hong Kong. Making it look easy. Typical of Hong Kong on the Asian 7 Series. your breath there so tough angle Jamie Hood though the uh, the old statesman of the team just a bit short on the first conversion of the weekend the uh, Hong Kong boys sporting that uh, some mustaches from November for a good cause but I'd like Jamie with a bit more of a clean shaven look. But obviously for a great cause there, the new women with mustaches. Historically really good at the kickoff. Yep. Some things don't change. Just another kickoff, another Hong Kong opportunity. It's like clockwork. Oh, they didn't make a try. 
No, they made the chalk. That's one of those, uh, the baseball slides where you slide in the opposition well, well, you touch the ball down, but actually you haven't touched it down, you down to the post. Nice little sneaky play there. Make it that much easier for your goal kicker. They'll appreciate that. Got to get the stats up. Well, I heard that you have a lot of friends in Hong Kong. Um, how do you think about your friends about right now? Are they doing well? Or not? Oh, I wouldn't say we're friends. I'd say we're uh, friendly rivals. Um, no, but impressed. You know, I've played against these guys for almost six, seven years on the series, and nothing but the utmost respect for for Hong Kong, just because not the way, not only in the way they play, but the way they carry themselves. They're really setting the bar in Asia for consistency, and I think for the Asian teams, when we get to that next level, is 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 about finding consistency. And Hong Kong set the set the bar with that so I think that's one thing that the Korean teams and the Japanese teams can learn is I think the talent is there with the Hong Kong teams it's just about finding the systems of balance and that ability to perform week in week out um, uh, that's what's so impressive about Hong Kong now Sri Lanka they have to make their momentum they make it on the right side yeah, you'd like to see Sri Lanka get on the border. Ooh, nice little pace there. Couple minutes still left on the board. Still time for Sri Lanka to get a consolation try or two. Yeah, they're going to want to go up-tempo here. Their game is always up-tempo, win or lose. Good physical carry. Now it's about moving the ball away quickly. Sri Lanka not looking to, uh, you know, take tackles or create breakdowns. They know that this Hong Kong team is more physical. So they're probably trying to keep the ball alive. That's one of those options where you don't you don't really see. It. It's a play that I I really kind of dislike. I don't know if I'm allowed to put my opinion on is when there's nothing going on just to put the chip kick behind. Because look at that, you, you're just turning the ball over to Hong Kong, a team that's so clinical that can score out of anything. And, you know, Sri Lanka, you know, they can just keep the ball, get through the phases, and look for the opportunities. But again, looking to force things, and you can't force things in rugby. You got to be patient. You got to wait for your opportunities. And one turnover, one phase, China's under the post. Or sorry, Hong Kong is under the post. So, yeah, unfortunate there. I was commenting on uh, this boy's hair here, but I don't think I can. Uh, he's just played a magnificent game, a couple tries. Bleached mullet or no mullet. If you can put in the performances, you can rock whatever haircut you want. Jamie Hood there with the extra two. Now we have 10 seconds and let's look at the Sri Lanka if, we, if they can make it or not. You'd think the coaches be a little bit happier there, but that's just just goes to show the high standard that Hong Kong uh, carries himself and 33 nil and you know no smiles on the, the coaching staff. Okay, Sri Lanka with the last opportunity of the game to do something. Mm. That's something I don't like to see. It's just a low ball and the player was going into tackle. Ooh, another interception. Opportunity here, two on one. Go yourself, lad. Where's the support? There's no support. Holding on. Unfortunate because there was an opportunity there to, to finish on a high note for Sri Lanka, but just clinical stuff from Hong Kong. 33 nil. You know, nothing, uh, never really got out of second, third gear. Just clinical stuff, keeping the phases, looking for the gaps, looking for the opportunities. Just typical Hong Kong Sevens rugby here at the Asia Seven Series. Sri Lanka, great to see them back on the series after a bit of absence. Um, I think, you know, first game, so it was likely that they were going to make some mistakes, maybe not have that rhythm, that continuity. I think they're going to get back in the shed and, and talk some tactics over, and hopefully we'll see a better performance from Sri Lanka in their second game. Final score, 40 nil Hong Kong.
Welcome back to Incheon. Here we're about to kick off with match number three. We've got Malaysia in red and Japan in the dark blue. Joining me here is former Malaysian sevens player, yes. Liana. Good to have you here. <laughs> Thank you for having me here. No, we love to have you here. So you played with the Malaysian women's sevens team for a number of years, I understand. Ah, uh, yes, it's correct. And now you're living in South Korea. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to our country. Glad to have you here. Thank you, thank you. It was good to be here, actually. It's great to have you here, especially um, to, to, to commentate on, on your fellow countrymen here. Should be an exciting match. Um, Malaysia, historically, a lot of speed, a lot of skill, a lot of nifty players. Um, Japan with kind of the new team this year so if Malaysia was ever gonna get an opportunity to beat um, Malaysia it'd be now unfortunately the Malaysian team looks like they've be all become Korean because that's the wrong team line up there um, but that would be the Korean team coming up next interesting to see with the Japanese team it looks like a, a full you know you see it Okay. Yeah, full squad here. You know, Japan, it's always um, interesting what type of team Japan sends to these events because they are a core World Series 7 team. So have they sent a development squad? Have they sent their squad that will be competing in Dubai in a couple weeks? That's the big question. No Simon Amor here. Mm -hmm. He's back uh, seeing his family in England. Mm -hmm. um, so it looks like Japanese assistant coach is taking charge. First kickoff. Ooh, unfortunate take there. Japan with a great kickoff, opportunity to attack here. They're looking real crisp in their passing so far. So far, Malaysian defensive line holding strong. Oh, great oh. tackle. Now Malaysia with the opportunity to counter here. In their half, Japan line coming up really strong there. Oh, this is dangerous stuff here. I think they have to like release the pressure. Yeah, you got to get out of your yeah. own half here. Oh. Uh, so that's always the danger of, of just like tactical management, mm -hmm. right? Like Malaysia, they have that ability to play from anywhere, but you're risking a knock on. And mm -hmm. now you're just giving Japan an opportunity to, to have a scrum within year 22. So maybe you want to see a bit better management there. True. I totally agree with that. Let's see what can they do from here. Yeah, we're looking at a, a big physical difference there between mm. the Malaysian and, and the Japanese pack. 
But so far, tackling well, defending well so far, Malaysia in front of their own line. They are defending really well for now. Let's see. Ah, uh, so one on one. <laughs> I'd just like to comment the center of the Malaysian there. He he put a lot mm -hmm. of line speed up mm -hmm. to try to cut down the space and time, but he left his outside defender yes, outside defender by true. himself. So the Japanese player was easy. It was since the number eight there of mm -hmm. Malaysia put that line speed. He went alone. Meaning the you know the winger had a one on one opportunity yeah. maybe just better connection true, true. just a bit more patience in defense. But I know that feeling you're eager you know it's the first game you want to get that first hit you want to make an impact but sometimes you just got to stay cool, trust your inside outside guy and just yeah. keep that line. Japan will be happy with that, seven nil. Nice kick off mm. here to the short side. Aww. Again, same thing. Oh. Deemed to go backwards, so Japan will be able to play on. Split field here, so they decide to go to the right hand side. Not much space here. Mm -hmm. But always going forward, the Japanese team, always going forward. to the at the end <coughs> yeah just fun you know there was no one there on the blind side rock yeah. it was actually really good heads up play good vision there by the Japanese player to spot that space and take it. Japan, the try scored five yeah so far Japan pretty comfortable in what they're doing uh, for Malaysia, it's just about you got to secure the kickoff, right? I think True. both times they've kicked it out here to the near side. They've put in that double lifter, but there needs to be a cover behind if they mm -hmm. miss that ball. And Japan has been able to just get in that pocket and get the ball. So, you know, like the old tale says, the boy who calls will. If you can, you can trick me twice, but you can't trick me a third time. Yes, if let's see for the next kickoff. Yeah, if you're the Malaysian <laughs> players, you know what's coming. They're gonna kick it short on yeah. this near side. Let's just see if they can get the ball. So for Japan, you just stick to what's, you know, there's no reason to change the tactic. If True. You just stick to what, what's work, what's working. Mm -hmm. As they, they're going the same way. Yeah, the you same have to thing. Compete, you have mm -hmm. to compete that, though. <laughs> okay, that's Shirley okay. forward. A double knock on her, so it will be Malaysia ball at the scrum. It's Malaysia 12. Can you tell me a little bit about him? He's, I've played against him many times. He's a bit of the danger man. Yes, I agree. Uh, she, he's one of the speedster for the team. But I think now he's still in on the winger. Bit of a social media star as mm. well. Very active on the <laughs> Instagram. Because uh, if I'm not <coughs> mistaken, he used to be the most younger players in the team. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's been around the, the series for quite a number of years. Yeah. Played against him. Stepped me once or twice, that's for sure. Mm. We'd like to see him get a lot of the ball. Um, but Malaysia just haven't been able to, to secure the ball and, and, and keep the phases going so far. But as for now, I think he's one of the senior players in the team. Because now they have a l many young players in the team as well. Oh, they brought a young, yeah. young team this year. Yeah, so he considered one of the senior players in the team. He's standing there alone on the blind side, but they decide to go right. No roll away there from the Japanese player, so Malaysia with the quick tap. Good offload, foot race. Back yourself. Oh, just short. Uh, unlucky there. Did really well the Malaysia number seven there to to beat his man, step back inside. And look at that. Look at where the ball is. Maybe one meter from <laughs> the line. Unfortunately, um, you know, it was deemed to be holding on. Yeah. Japan very very good at the breakdown there. And Japan with the opportunity here to just release pressure with, with the kick. But Malaysia, you know, they have 
uh, the ability to to make something out of nothing correct mm, is yes, that something yes. is that something that's maybe coached in malaysia or because for what maybe sometimes the malaysian team lacks in structure they definitely have individual footwork and brilliance is that something that maybe they focus on in training mm. but still um i think that the physical team play the important thing as well in this game go on oh, oh unfortunate there did we just see a little bit of a fake kick <laughs> and then a line break? <laughs> bit of nifty stuff there. That's one way to get your recovery and your breath back <laughs> is I agree. Not, not to score the try. <laughs> give yourself a bit of time to <laughs> recovery there. It was a foot race. You want to see him just go low there, chop the legs. <laughs> You're never going to tackle a man of that size up high. True. Number 13 for Japan, doing a bit of everything here today. He's putting in the nice kickoffs, scoring the tries. Just playmaking in the middle. I'd love to see what some of those, uh, how, how do you say this correctly? Bigger bodied playmakers. Mm, I uh, agree, yeah. It reminds me a bit of a, like a Tongan Andy Good, you know? Let's see. They still haven't figured that out, huh? You just got to take a couple steps back there, Malaysia. You know, if you're just making a, you know, a tweak at the the kickoff, you just gonna start on your touchline and go you forward step because back, yeah, yeah you, it's hard <laughs> to go back. You can't, but it's easier to go forward. But they they've been caught three times there. Okay, we got the final play of the uh, half. Hopefully Malaysia <laughs> can can uh, chalk a score up and finish the half strong. A knock on there at no. the breakdown. So 19-0 to Japan at the end of the first half. Just clinical, nothing too fancy for the Japanese team. Malaysia just unable to, to keep hold of the ball. What does Malaysia got to do in the second half, you think, Liana, to maybe, uh, or maybe win the game? It might be difficult to win the game, but at least build some momentum uh, going on. Because, you know, it's not just one game you got a full weekend ahead of you so you might lose the first game but you still gotta finish well to um uh, to as you said like um after the second time they should figure out what's going on and they should fix on the kickoff uh, because everything um starts from the kickoff exactly. if you cannot like maintain from the kickoff it's gonna be a little bit hard for them to go further yeah, so we've seen <laughs> four kickoffs from Japan, I believe, the, the first kick of the mm -hmm. game. And then after the three tries, and Japan has secured all four kickoffs. So that's a bit of an issue. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like you said, I I everything starts from the kickoff. Mm -hmm. it, it's something that we don't focus as much as mm -hmm. in the 15s game. But mm -hmm. in 7s, it is yeah. probably the most critical um, set piece. Um, you gotta, you gotta secure the ball, especially when the opposition kicks it to you. But uh, so far, Malaysia has been able to figure out the Japanese kickoff. True, because like from the kickoff, the Japanese like got the most opportunity to break the gap and everything. So kickoff is really important for sevens. You know, only 14 minutes on the clock, so it's all about possession, right? And there's only a couple opportunities in rugby to win the ball back, whether it's you know, at the scrum, at the line out, at the kickoff, or, or in general play at the ruck. So, if you're giving one set piece straight to Japan, you know it's 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 always going to be difficult. Normally, when you start the second half, you want the opposition to kick off, and Malaysia pro may be happy to kick the ball off. <laughs> That's a good kick, but no compete there from the Malaysian player. So far, defensive connection's not bad. Bit stagnant there. It's a good line from Malaysia. Oh, Japan attacking with a lot of pace there. Just keeping that ball alive. Uh, good decision not to offload and just, just take the contact, restart again. 
now we're seeing some disconnections in the Malaysian line. This is an opportunity for Japan now to score the next try. It's too easy. Break the line, very small space. If you just want to break that down mm -hmm. a little bit tactically, that first phase, mm -hmm. Japan secured the kickoff, and Malaysia had a really good defensive mm -hmm. line, and it went to the, the big winger, the, mm -hmm. the foreign winger on the Japanese team, but no one wanted to tackle him. So they, they gave him 5, 10 meters. That pushed the defensive line back. And you're going backwards in Japan, and then it starts the next phase of play. So two, three phases, there's no reason for Malaysia to, to give that 20, 30 meters that easily. Yes. You know, they can be more physical. When you have man-to-man, -man, three on three, four on four, you, you got to take away the space from the Japanese mm -hmm. players. And it looks like they're just a bit too passive. And you're passive two, three phases. Japan's going to punish you on uh, that third, fourth phase. They're too good of a team to, to, to be passive on defense on. Malaysia keep on defending. They are going to lose a lot of their energy. So Japan really took advantage of that. So everyone here in the stadium and everyone back in Malaysia can see kick kickoff was the issue. Let's see if they figured that out in half time because Japan is going to kick off here. Let's see if the Malaysian uh, team can secure the ball. Change a kicker. Let's see how accurate he is. Okay, Malaysia with the first opportunity of the second half here. Just keeping it tight at first. Now releasing the ball. See the difference in defensive line. Japan is really quick off, off the mark, so they're not giving Malaysia space to attack. But high tackle there. Lucky for... Uh, Opportunity here for now Malaysia again. So look at that line mm -hmm. speed, right? So by the time the Malaysian players have the ball, the Japanese players are already in their face. So mm -hmm. it's difficult for them to do to do anything. True. They don't have any chance to go. And that's one way to break oh. a strong defensive okay. line is with footwork. I think that was forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Forward pass. Yeah, I think Japan, I mean, just being patient on attack and, and doing what Japan does. But I think the one really impressive thing uh, we've seen from Japan compared to the other teams so far is just their defensive line speed. Mm -hmm. I think they've spent a lot of time um, focusing on that. They're really shutting down the space mm -hmm. of the Malaysian players, not giving them any opportunity to catch and run. Mm -hmm. And it's maybe something to talk about <laughs> because Malaysia is is a team that you know if you give them space they can step you mm -hmm. but japan's just not even giving them that opportunity from their own goal line in malaysia what can they do oh just oh, just like that just robbed of the ball there how did that happen it was a quick one. <laughs> Just ripped out of the yeah. basket there. Number two from Japan and scored a try and scored five points. Oh, was almost bullied there. You can't <laughs> just give up the ball like that. He's got his candy stolen from him there. And you know what Malaysia are trying to do. I mean, you know, there's only a few minutes left in the game, so... They, you know, even if they're on their own goal line, they want to attack, they want to get that try, but that's, that is the danger we saw in the first half. T attacking from your own goal line is you're inviting pressure on you. Yeah. I don't think I've seen that in a while, though. Just one man robbing another man of his ball. There's approximately like two minutes left. Hopefully, Malaysia can do something in these two minutes. One positive is they have mm. been able to secure the kickoff in mm. the second half, so that's something they can build on. Mm. Oh, Japan, physical to break down here. Mm. It's just this mm. line they speed. They just lose their chance there. It's this line mm. speed is, is applying so much pressure to Malaysia mm. that whether it's at the breakdown mm. or then once they can release the ball, the defensive line is so quick that they're forcing Malaysia into mm. errors. Very impressive, this Japanese defense. Mm. 
deemed to not go straight mm. at the line out, so it will be Malaysia ball at the scrum. Let's see if can, they can do something here from their their half. I think it's just about one minute left. Mm -hmm. You know, not a lot of left uh, rugby left in this game. It's mm -hmm. just about maybe finding a try or two, or just a couple positives mm -hmm. that you can build on. You know, yeah. Japan's always going to be the toughest game in the True. pool. But they got to go on. They got to play Korea. They got to play Philippines. So mm -hmm. you want to build some momentum here. Maybe nice. take one or two positives that you can take into that next match. Just need to warm up for the yeah, next game. It's a nice kick mm -hmm. from basically his own touchline to put it almost up to the half. Now, can you execute? You know what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You've kicked the ball out. You've got your line out. You want to score this final mm -hmm. try. Can you now execute? It's got to be a good throw and a good lift. Yeah. They've won it back. Okay, opportunity here. Let's go. Just keep the ball. Say, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> it's Malaysia ball. Yeah, Japanese player oh. deemed not releasing Released. in the tackle. Center of the field. Last play of the game. They're looking, not faking the line out. Maybe a little kicking behind. Does he have the speed? Japanese player is going to get there first, it looks like. Yep, end of the game. Just kick it out. No need to, you know, fatigue yourself. Yeah, when just you got save energy for yeah, the next game. <laughs> two days of rugby left. You've already won the game, no need. And a bit of bit of good manner there, right? Yes. You know, you've already won the game, no True. need to uh, score the next try. Anyways, Japan, what we expect. Uh, runners up in Thailand, mm -hmm. very clinical stuff. From the Japanese team, Malaysia, uh, you know, they're going to be disappointed, I think, at the kickoff aspect of the game. But there were some positives there. They're going to come back and uh, they should be uh, hoping for much better performances in the next two games. So they just got the warm up for, uh, from this game to use for the next game. They should be okay. So that is game number three, full time Japan 29, Malaysia 3. We'll take a quick break here and we'll be back with the final men's pool match of the morning.
just the uh, Korean commentators here since the home team will be playing and this broadcast will be going live in Korea. We, can you translate this one, uh, Simon? Uh, <laughs> it's a bit beyond me, mate, but uh, we can have a little watch and we're not too far away. We've got the players coming down the field now. Looking good, got the home team coming out in the white, and then we have the Philippines in the blue there. Just like to introduce Simon here from the Seoul Survivors, staple of the Survivors team. Uh, Survivors down in Busan today playing a match, but Simon picked up a bit of an injury a couple weeks ago, so he's blessed us with his presence here in the commenta commentating booth. Yeah, excellent to be here. Uh, unfortunately, I've got a knee injury, so I won't be playing down in Pusan. But over the years, I've played in many of the cities across Asia, including Manila, the Philippines. So this game uh, could be quite good with uh, the Philippines versus Korea. Me being in Korea, me being played in the Philippines before. It'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Um, in the past couple of years, Korea has had Philippines' number just with the, the speed and the structure of the game. The Philippines have made vast improvements over the last five years or so. Let's see how this goes. Uh, nice kick off to start. Korea unable to claim the ball, so the Philippines have it. Yeah, it's a great restart there. Be able to contest and, and win your ball. Good platform. Just keeping that ball alive. Yeah, seems to be playing quite tight at the moment. You think the Philippines want to move out of the congested area? Because that's where all the defenders are as well. Maybe yep. they'll go wide from here. Opportunity here now. Oh, well, they're going straight through the middle, <laughs> deciding not to go out wide. Maybe they uh, feel that the Koreans have the pace on them out wide, so they're trying to go through the middle. The one thing the Philippine players do have is that, is that bit of physicality. A lot of um, mixed Filipinos out there, so uh, pretty big big units from the Philippine side. They like to play that tight brand of uh, sevens rugby, but a nice turnover there from the Korean team at the ruck. That's the only problem once you start to go through the middle, you have to commit numbers to the breakdown and uh, Korea did quite well on defence, they committed some numbers, drove over the ball and uh, managed to get the turnover. So what will Korea do here? Korea probably realised that they've got the pace uh, out wide, um, Korea being the qualifiers of the uh, Tokyo Olympics, uh, probably one of their favourites here. So having the pace out wide, they're probably going to look to, there we go, kick to touch, uh, play the line out and really stretch the Filipino defence. Uh, so I've been in that, uh, that Korean team environment for a long time and, and in a game like this when you're playing kind of an unstructured and physical Filipino team you just want to stick to your systems, stick to your game plan. So Korea is probably not going to be too expansive. Just go to the line out, just get the ball in and probably just look to go wide and as you said utilize that speed. So here we go, first touch for the Korean ball, first really attacking opportunity. That's Pak Woo Bin, youngster who's just come into the squad for the first time. So they are looking to stretch the Filipino defence. They've gone from one side and back again. So the Filipinos are really going to have to be on their game with defence. Penalty again to Korea. Quick ball. They're really trying to up the tempo, trying to get the pace going. That's a good carry there by Kim Hyun Soo. So now the, the Koreans have caught the Filipinos offside. Not enough defenders there and uh, gone through for the try. Well done, Korea. Yeah, just sticking to the game plan there, nothing too crazy, just a couple hard carries, bring in the, drawing the defense, and then finding this, uh, the gaps out wide. You know, it was a three on two, but didn't, need, didn't even need a support on the inside there. One thing with today, uh, the, the weather forecast was actually meant to be rain and cold, but being uh, uh, on the ground this morning, it's quite warm, which could be in favor of some of these uh, teams from warmer climates. So the Philippines might not have had a lot of experience in colder weather. But thankfully uh, for them, the advantage is that it's quite warm at there today. So maybe uh, an advantage for them looking further into the game. Yeah, historically, the Asian 7 Series has always played in some humid environments. Hong Kong in August, you know, Bangkok in September, Dubai, um, Sri Lanka. For rugby, I, I will say, and I might be a bit biased here because I live in Korea, but in terms of conditions, you know, you can't find any better conditions in the Asian 7 Series than probably middle of November in Korea to play rugby. It's perfect pitch, perfect weather, uh, and the opportunity to play fast-flowing rugby. So Korea unable to contest, uh, to uh, convert the, uh, the try, so 5-0 uh, Korea over the Philippines. Uh, that's a bit of a mistake there. Yeah, a little too much breakfast there, yeah. so a bit too much power on that ball, so we'll come back to halfway. That's a good, good friend of mine, you, Jayok. Jay he's uh, always squatting and I think maybe a bit too much there on the, uh, the kick. So these days the, the Korean rugby team have become quite, a, uh, quite famous in Korea, haven't they? After the competing in the Olympics, I've seen them on TV quite a bit. Does that go to the players' head, mate? To our heads? I, would, I wouldn't say so, no. We're uh, just humble lads here in Korea playing rugby. Got a little bit of tension and um, 
after the Olympics, which is great, not for us individually, but for the sport. You know, it's still a very unpopular sport in Korea. But if we can, you know, get on TV and just get a couple more kids to pick up a rugby ball instead of a soccer ball or a baseball, you know, that's a win for us. So we're enjoying the exposure. But with the exposure comes responsibility. You have to perform and, and, and play well. And so far, the Koreans are doing it. Here we go, the Philippines with their first uh, attacking opportunity. Uh, will they go through the middle again or will they look to push it wide? Uh, before they, they previously turned it over, going through the middle and not really putting enough numbers into the breakdown. Playing sevens, you don't really have the, the, the option of putting all your players into the breakdown, so you've got to have really quick ball, get it in, get it out, uh, and move it, move it away from the defenders. So they've gone for a line out, kick to line. Can they, can they win the line out here and uh, move the ball across the back line? No, it's a really good point. In the sevens game, you, you can only commit about one player to the breakdown, whether it's on attack or defense. So it actually starts with the ball carrier. You need him to have a physical carry to win that contact so the support is easy. We always talk about the support being late, but there's actually responsibility on the ball carrier to make sure the ball comes clean. That's a great throw. Very nice and uh, <laughs> very untraditional maul in a sevens game. That's the first time I've seen that in a very long time. And so I think they've caught the Koreans uh, napping a bit as well because they weren't expecting that but uh, didn't manage to hold on to it and double movement on the ground so in the tackle you must place the ball back within the first move but it looks like he's gone for a second movement and the referee's picked that up. Ah, this could be a costly error from Korea not out on the kickoff so gives the opportunity back to the Philippines. Will they attack from inside the 22? Looking to move the ball. Uh, you have to make sure those passes are a bit crisper, a bit cleaner. And unfortunately knocked on by the Philippines. Yeah, Yu Jae-ok, the uh, Korean number 10, is actually in this side because of his boot. Um, but, you know, that's already one kickoff into end goal. That's one error and then uh, missed line out. So that's already two kicking errors from a guy who's in the team because of his boot. So he's going to want to find his kicking boots uh, as this tournament goes on. Korea now with a good opportunity, a good platform here, just inside the Philippine 22 for, I think, I believe the first scrum of the match. That kick was actually a good kick. The distance was fine, but he got a little bit greedy and tried to eat off a little more territory than uh, probably should have. So maybe next time he'll uh, adjust the radar a little bit. Here we go again. Korea attacking through the middle. Will they do what they did before? Oh, penalty. What was that for? Oh, high tackle. Maybe a seatbelt tackle there. Take the quick tap. got no option just hold on to the ball but uh, yes again probably not enough numbers to the breakdown from Korea maybe they were expecting an offload in the tackle so his uh, supporting players didn't go in but by the time he went to ground he uh, had a couple of Filipino guys on him and they managed to turn the ball over that's a, that's that point earlier about just the break uh, the ball carry having responsibility at the at the breakdown if he's caught in two minds there, then as you say, the support doesn't know, is he gonna offload or is he gonna go to ground? Just make a decision and stick to it. There's no bad decisions in rugby if you if you give 100%. So the previous line out from the Filipinos was very good. Let's see if they do the same thing again. Will they go for the driving ball? Again, a very untraditional uh, aspect of the sevens. So here we go. Oh, short one to the front, popped off. There goes the whistle for half time. So this may be the last play. Can the Filipinos get on the board? Good defensive line here from the Korean team. Uh, maybe he thought he had an extra man outside, or maybe a breakdown of communication there. It looked like it was a pop to the outside, but nobody there. So that uh, brings us to half time. Very, very tight one here. 5 0. The Filipinos are probably quite happy, being that the Korean team is probably the favourites coming into this. So 5 0 at half time is probably a, actually quite a good score for them. Gives them an opportunity to come back. They probably need to tidy up a few areas. What do you think, mate? Yeah, I mean, I think Philippines will be happy with that. They haven't been in the Korean half as of yet. I think maybe just off the first kickoff. So Philippines hasn't really had a really good opportunity to attack, but they're defending really well. They're showing that physical brand of Philippine rugby that's become quite famous the past couple of years. The one thing from the Korean side, and I know I've been in these team talks, is Charlie Lowe is just going to talk about execution. You know, Koreans have all the skill in the world, but it's about executing and holding on to that ball. But they've entered the 22 here, come away with one try, but actually uh, come away with two turnovers. So it's about efficient possessions. Every time you want to enter the 22, you want to come away with a try. So I think that's going to be the message at halftime here from the Korean boys. Mm, I was going to ask you, with your experience playing for the Sevens national team, what would your advice be at halftime for those boys? Uh, just for watching from up here, you can see the whole thing. What would you say to those boys that need to change? 
Yeah, I think it's just that. I think, the you know, Charlie is, is a master tactician, so the boys are going to be well-prepared tactics-wise, game plan-wise. I think it's just about executing. I think, you know, this is the first game on home turf. There's always going to be that nerve. There's always that um, that um, little bit of ambition to, 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 to really strut your stuff. But it's just about sticking to the game plan, trusting your mates, releasing the ball early, and staying patient. Korea right now, um, as you said, uh, as I said, a couple of turnovers within their own 22 just got to be a bit more patient and let the ball do the work. You move this big Filipino uh, team side to side, the gaps will open. Yeah, maybe a bit of nerves being the first game and being at home. Um, the Filipino team had to travel, so does that give the Korean team a bit of advantage? It's a home home game for them? Yeah, of course, you know, Korean team, uh, you know, the National Training Center not too far off here, only about an hour and a half drive, so, uh, you know, you got to take advantage of the, the home advantage. Here we go, about to kick off for the second half. Can Korea get, hold the lead, or will the Philippines come back? Yeah, I know Charlie won't be happy with that first half. Okay, opportunity. Uh, yeah. So, opportunity for Korea. Maybe he looked up and uh, got a bit of white line fever before he could get going. Yeah. Lucky for them, though, the Philippine player had knocked it on at the kickoff. So it will be uh, Korean scrum, center of the park within the Filipino half. Good opportunity here to uh, score a try to kick off the second half. Yeah, with the scrum in the middle of the field, it gives Korea uh, quite a bit of opportunity both sides, uh, meaning that they've split the defence. So with their speedsters, perhaps they can go out wide to one of their quick players and have a go on the outside. Come to the short side here. After, this is the danger man, Jang Jong Min. Oh, he's well looked after there, though, by the Philippine defence. There's three guys in that in that mall there. There's only two Koreans. So somewhere out in the back line, there is a mismatch on defence. So if they can tap quickly, which is what they've tried to do, obviously, but uh, slowed down a little bit by the Filipinos. Here we go now. The Double. Filipinos, with the good line speed, they're taking away the space from the Korean players. Not making it easy. Physical, really kind of top that Filipino team. Yeah, very nice steal there. Managed to get over the ball and pick it up. So now they look to counter attack from within their 22. Popping the ball off the ground is always good in sevens. It gives you guys, it gives them a bit more momentum. They don't have to bring more players into the breakdown. It's been a while here since the Filipino team has had an opportunity to attack. Let's see what they can do. They have advantage. They haven't managed to get out of their 22. Yeah, that uh, comes down to the pressure from the Koreans. Their line speed's very good, marking up and coming forward, putting a lot of pressure on the, uh, the Filipinos who are trying to get out of their 22. So we'll go for a line out here again. Uh, We've seen a few tricks at the line-out so far from the Filipino team. We've seen a, a driving ball. We've seen a ball to the front. What else have they got up their sleeves for us, do you think? Maybe they're just trying to put a bit of uh, bit of magic so the Koreans don't know what's going on. Yeah, just keep them guessing. We like that. We like surprises. So uh, what's your money on, mate? Is your money on a, a driving ball or an off the top? Uh, something to the front? Something fancier? Looks like they've, they've brought in three... Uh. They've done two trick uh, back to the front. Okay, at the front again. So I think they probably don't have the height on the Koreans, so maybe that's why they're pulling out some of these trick plays during the lineouts. Yeah, just about getting the ball in and out and recycling it. So there's three Koreans within, in that in that ruck there, but have they stayed on their feet or have they come off? Team to be a penalty by the Koreans, so it will be Filipino ball again. Possibly not supporting your weight there. I think one of the Koreans may have had his knee either on the back of the Filipino player on the ground, meaning that he's not supporting his body weight, so you have to be careful there. Well, well spotted by the referee. What a kick. Did, what did I just witness? He just put that on the five-meter line. So now they have a really good opportunity with their line-out. So they must have something else. The last three line-outs, which we've been impressed with, have been within the halfway area. This is out five meters, so maybe this is an opportunity for a, uh, a, maul, a mauling try from the Filipinos. Yeah, Koreans only defending two, so they're not going to compete this line out. Yep, you're... Yep, there it comes. So how many players do we have in there? There's possibly nobody in the back line. And the Koreans don't have an answer for this, and it looks like they're going to go all the way, and wow. yes. Wow. Amazing. Very, very smart play by the Filipinos. I don't think I've ever seen that on the sevens field. A rolling mall try. And honestly, I don't think the Koreans have either. That's why they didn't have an answer for it. I think there were three or four players out in the back line, of the Korean back line. How many Filipinos? Scratching their there? heads. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, six, six players are, I think, in the Filipino mall. So Kai Strom from the Philippines uh, scoring that try there. He's, he's got a moustache that looks like it uh, possibly wasn't started on the 1st of November, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he uh, 
Here's a bit of growth. He's a bit of a grower. Difficult kick from out wide. Let's see what he can do. See if he can convert his own try. It's a great strike, but just there to the left. I mean, it, that was always going to be difficult on the angle there, but interesting stuff here. We've only got a couple minutes left, and Philippines have tied the game up. Didn't expect this. To so be now the game is tied up. Uh, is the pressure now on the Korean team, being that they were possibly the favourites coming into this? So uh, the Philippines has no nothing to lose now, whereas Korea are going to feel the pressure. Is that going to cause a few more mistakes? Yeah, and that's the one thing I will say about the Korean team is one thing that we've had gotten better at over the years is just handling pressure. We have all the talent in the world. It's about are we able to, um, you know, get the job done when the pressure is on. So let's see. This is a big challenge for the Korean team. And here goes the superstar, Chang Jong-min. Uh, there's the guy. If you need to get out of trouble, get the ball to the Korea number seven. We've seen that time and time again over the years. Just changes gears up and goes into a nice canter and just smoothly goes into the under the post. So going under the post is going to give his team should be a uh, easy conversion there, which will push the Koreans out to seven. Uh, with very little time left, it's now up to the Philippines to reply. You know, sometimes when things aren't going to plan, you can't get into your rhythm. You just need your superstar, your ace, to just help you out there with a bit of individual uh, brilliance. And Chang Jamin had been quiet all day. He actually was. Uh, well looked after here once uh, earlier in the second half but decided hey you know what I'm gonna carry my team out of trouble great play there almost a hint of a smile from the coach there from the Korean team uh, the only time you see Charlie Smith smile uh, Charlie Lowe smile is when uh, if Korea win uh, lifts the trophy at the end of this tournament okay so they're in a, a very good position at the moment so probably another high start for them uh, being at the Koreans are quite tall oh no we're doing another bit of a switcheroo here that's a good kickoff, but deemed offside. That's a coach killer right there. So if there was any hint of a smile on Charlie's face, it has disappeared after that uh, offside at the kickoff. This is a very professional game, and you can't afford mistakes like that. That's a bit of a schoolboy era there from the Koreans. Um, they, sh they should have done better. So now can the, the Filipino team capitalize on a Korean mistake? I mean, just giving, you're just inviting them to, to tie the game, you know. All you have to do is get that kickoff. If you're not going to contest, you can just put it deep and, and try to defend Phil the Philippines for 100 meters, make them go the full length of the pitch. But now you're giving the Philippines a great opportunity pl uh, to attack here. And it's only a one score game, but look at that. Uh, another mistake, uh, crossing there, which has caused a penalty. So the Koreans actually called out to the referee, and the referee agreed with them. Crossing, so cutting in front of your own player, meaning that the defender can't uh, have a fair... Opportunity to access attack, to tackle yeah. there. Probably a little disappointing for the Philippines because they were looking quite good. So now we go to a scrum. How much time we got left? So this will be the last uh, last play. If the Koreans can manage to win the ball, clear it out, they've uh, escaped. They've got out of jail here, I think. You know, the Philippines are coming. They're going to put absolutely everything into this uh into the scrum to try to win this ball back. Korea just need to get it in, out, and into the, into the stand. Oh, it's messy. Ooh, well Ooh, done. A there. little uh, a little flick pass between the legs. Back to his number 10 and bang it out there. So well done to both teams. I believe the Philippines played very well. Uh, some interesting plays put together by the, the coaching staff in the Philippines. Yeah, that variation of play. Sometimes when you're going up against uh, a better, op historically better opposition, you got to try to catch them off guard. I mean, an, an historic uh, ball line out play there, but uh, Korea just too good in the end. I think it just came down to one bit of individual brilliance, but not too much between the two teams in the first game. I think the Philippines are going to be happy. That's going to be a good building block going forward. I think the Koreans are going to go back into the shed and uh, they're going to have to figure a couple things out, just execute a bit better in that next game. Yeah, as you said, man, I think the, the Filipinos caught the Koreans off guard uh, using un unconventional uh, non-traditional plays like the, the front line ball or the, the drives in the line out so maybe how do you adjust to that how do you adjust within while you're playing how do you adjust to those sort of game plays yeah it's just switch on you know like the the filipinos if they're gonna maul that's no problem the second they come down you gotta be uh at, a tentative at each phase of play that that's what makes a good player a great player and i think two times the korean players got caught off guard at the front and that that's sort of to be honest, that's unacceptable. You have to be switched on for that play. And I've been in that Korean camp before, and we've talked about that a lot. It just comes down to uh, just how focused are you in that moment. Anyways, Simon, I'm off to lunch. Thank you very much for that. And Oscar will be joining you for the first round of women's games. Thank you, mate. Enjoy your lunch.
Ставить фронт. All right, welcome back, and we're looking to kick off the first game from the women's tournament. So we have Hong Kong versus Kazakhstan. Both teams look like they're ready to go. A few breathing exercises. Some very happy ladies in the uh, Hong Kong team. Looking hungry. So uh, on the commentary box today, you have myself, Simon Walsh, and we have uh, Oscar, who is a seasoned referee in Korea. Oscar, uh, how do you think this is going to go, mate? Hello, good to see you. Uh, well, I think, like... Um well, for me, it's a little bit nervous, but anyway, like, it's good to have a commentary with you. But anyway, like, I'll try to explain a lot about from as a as a referee. So, being a, a powerhouse in rugby, Hong Kong are possibly uh, the favourites here. Uh, with Kazakhstan, uh, I'm not quite sure about Kazakhstan, so we could see how they go. Um, well, first one. Well, first of all, I um thought that like Kazakhstan, they have a good physicals and like they, they have a good power, so. I'm really expecting that they can make a good result. Good start so far from Kazakhstan. Took the uh, kick very well and a good power run through the middle. Ladies now they look to move the ball. Like As you say, mate, the size of the Kazakhstan women, they look like they uh, have it over the, the Hong, Kong, Hong Kong team. They look to go wide and going through the middle. And some nice pops are uh, unlucky there. Missed the ball and the referee has judged that as knock on. It looked to me to go sideways a bit, mate, but um, ref is on the ground. She's a bit closer. So this will be the first scrum of the game. So as we just mentioned, possibly the Kazakhstan women have the size. Will this affect the scrum? What do you think? Well, I think um, well, as a referee, we always think that it's a 50-50, so I'm not sure that they could push a lot. But anyway, like, let's have a look. All right, fed and out quickly. It's popped out the back. Hong Kong are looking to move it. Possibly their strength is out wide with the pace. Ah, uh, unlucky. So I think a little bit of miscommunication possibly there, possibly some pressure from the Kazakhstan woman coming forward as well. But it looked like they were looking to do a, a, a cut pass and the ball was a little bit too high, uh, ended up taking it on the shoulder and couldn't hold the ball. So now it'll be Kazakhstan's opportunity to attack. They are just inside the Hong Kong half. So will they do something similar? Will the ball pop out quickly or will they look to control a little bit more at the back? Let's have a look. Ball's fed in. Ah, uh, so possibly the ball may have got caught under her own player's foot there and she went to pick up. Slight little knock on, picked up very well by the referee. Well, personally, I think um, the scrum half from Kazakhstan, um, she got really nervous and I think 
um, the Hong Kong is going to use that point and give it pressure to her. Mm, sometimes with these first games, there can be a little, a few nerves. So hopefully both teams have managed to dust those off. Now the ball has gone back to Hong Kong and a bit of attacking opportunity. What a nice ball going to the wide. So going out wide so far, the defence has stood strong from Kazakhstan. They're very quick up in the line. As you can see, the players are catching the ball and actually catching a defender at the same time. They've actually lost about 10 to 15 metres here so far. Oh, look at the Hong Kong. Their defence pressing out quickly and they're giving a pressure. Oh, look at that. So they've actually forced the Hong Kong team into kicking, which is not often used as an attacking tool uh, in sevens. So managed to kick it forward. It hasn't gone out though. So the ball's now back in the Kazakhstan hands, which gives them an opportunity to attack. And they decide to go right down the blind side. And she's not held. Oh, she could have picked up and probably gone again there. And she's just flicked it out blindly out the back. Now it's a Hong Kong. But it helped the scalp here. The ball's sort of bouncing all over the place. But uh, Hong Kong have managed to, managed to secure it. And they seem to like this blind side. They're attacking down here rather than going out wide. Oh, I think she got the ball. Yes, uh, very well done. Over the top there, strong over the top. And a quick tap from Kazakhstan. They've gone here. Oh, oh very nice. What a nice support. Cheeky little offload off the ground. And she's still got the ball. What's oh. the ref called here? It's a That's a little bit unlucky. Yeah, it sort of bounced around a bit there. Very hard to see from up here. So what's the ref judged? Has it been a knock-on by Kazakhstan? Or has she called it? Oh, she called for a knock-on, I think so. Okay, so uh, lost in the play there. Sometimes with those quick balls off the ground, uh, passes, they can be knocked on. So, yep, lost from the Kazakhstan team. It's still nil nil. Yeah, so that shows the pressure from I think both teams have managed to defend very well, put a lot of pressure on the teams that are trying to attack and forcing a lot of turnover ball. So now Hong Kong are going to look to run it out of their own 22. I think that was a little bit high. Yeah, so the referee's also agreeing with you, mate. Uh, he's called it high. So rather than kick this time, they've decided to tap and go. They're going to run it out and possibly out to one of these speedsters out here. She's finally got the ball in her hands. Uh, unlucky there. So she got the ball in her hands, but she actually probably ran away from her own uh, her own support there. So she got caught, left alone. Uh, and as the Kazakhstan women have already have been doing earlier on, they managed to get over the ball, really contesting those breakdowns. Will they go for a line out here or a quick tap ball? So they've gone for the line out. And just from up here, it looks that the Kazakhstan women have the height. So it should be an easy line-out win for them here. And this is the, a very good attacking opportunity. With the line-out, it, uh, it brings in the defenders. So the Hong Kong women are going to have to commit four players right inside that five-meter mark, which gives the whole field out wide only three defenders out there. Lots of holes, maybe. Nice going, going. Going to the wide. Will she go around the outside? She's got, ooh, she's going to have a go. Can she uh, make it? Can she make it? Oh, I think it's a well, it looks, looks like it's down to me. We may have to go upstairs here. But uh, from first glance, it looks like, yes, and I think the try has been awarded. No. Nope. Yes, yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. Finally. So, yeah, the hard work's paid off. And I think the idea of having that line out uh, really pushed the Hong Kong defence. And uh, the Hong Kong defender there, unlucky. Uh, Number two, uh, Julia Meboy, unlucky there. She, I think she lost her footing, maybe a little bit slippery out there. So she uh, got caught on the step inside, lost her footing, and the Kazakhstan defender managed to go around the outside. So first points on the board, and we've almost had uh, six minutes here. So shows how strong the defence is from both sides, that nobody's managed to get through the line. Very tough kick, uh, hasn't gone over there, but Kazakhstan lead, 5-0. Now we have one minute remaining. I'm sure that, like, I think Hong Kong could make a, a good opportunity and make a good score. So just one minute remaining, so the Hong Kong women are going to want to want to reply to that. So we'll see what Kazakhstan's tactic is here from the kickoff. Is it going to be a high ball? Are they going to go through the middle? So they're going to go right up the oh, guts here. A nice kick. Taken well by Hong Kong. So look to go down the side again. The defenders there waiting for it. There's three defenders there. They look to push her out. Uh, strong defense. They caught her up high and un unable to get the ball to the ground or to offload, which means that we'll have a line-out throw for Kazakhstan. Another attacking opportunity. Kazakhstan will want to get some more points on the board going into halftime. 
Looks like we've only got 10 seconds left, so possibly at the last play of the game. So if Kazakhstan managed to get some points from this play, then they will be very happy going into halfway. Hong Kong will be disappointed with that. They want to defend this. Uncontested at the line-out. Looking to go through the middle. Wrap around there. Looks like almost a two-on-one. Hey, oh, she's going to have the gas. She's going to go wide. She can make it. She's she going to go it. wide. The defender's she's there. Oh, oh, well done. Well done. Going around the outside. That's number five, Gillian Kasavina, scoring on the outside. That's two for her. Very easy to spot because she's got that headgear and that very uh, distinctive hairstyle at the back there. Look at the speed. She was really, really quick and the ball carry was really perfect. And there was a player coming from the Hong Kong and she won that player and made a, made a try. Yeah, I think uh, Kazakhstan have, all, have already identified where they're strongest and it tends to be to go wide uh, to her and she's got some wheels uh, burning on the outside there. Unable to convert again. Very close, oh. though, just off the post. That was really close. Yeah, that's impressive from right out wide. But, uh, yeah, unlucky. There's a little bit of wind out there. Maybe that wind helped push it forward. So uh, the wind has been in uh, on the on the backs of the Kazakhstan women. So maybe at half time, as they switch sides, Hong Kong may get a bit more opportunity with a bit of wind. So give them a bit more strength in their kicking game. What do you think, mate? What are the uh, Kazakhstan women dis discussing at home to half time? Are they happy with that score? I think um, we'll players will we'll think that they're happy, but the coach always they have they always pre they give a, a the coach always gives a pressure to the players to make a to make a score again and again and again like that. So I think the coach is going to say to the players just give a pressure a lot to Hong Kong. Well, Hong Kong is a strong team in Asia, so I think they're going to um, order to give a pressure a lot. That first half, we've seen a couple of turnover balls at the breakdown, particularly uh, from the Kazakhstan woman getting in over the top of the Hong Kong ladies. So maybe uh, at half time, the Hong Kong coach is possibly telling them to commit a bit more to the breakdown because they, they need to win that ball back before they start to move it out wide. Possibly the Hong Kong women have already got a plan to move it out wide and uh, not quite securing the ball at the breakdown. So what do you think? Uh, what would you be saying to the Hong Kong woman at half time? Well, I think, um, well, if I think as a coach, like, their ability, I think they're really brilliant. Like, look at her, like, she's really powerful and like, the ball carrying is really good. But I think everything is like, about the confidence. I think if they, if they just have a confidence, then they, they can make a try and they, they could get, get a good result, I think so. Yes, confidence is key. And I believe that with that score line, the Kazakhstan women definitely have their heads up. But they're going up against a very strong Hong, Hong Kong women's team who would consider themselves possibly uh, one of the best teams in the competition. So now we're about to kick off again for the second half. Let's see how we go from here. Oh, very, very nice uh, kick there. Put that right on a dime, right on the 10 meter mark. Uh, but what's the call here? It's calling for an offside. The referee has called the woman offside from Kazakhstan. So the quick tap ball, not okay. wanting to go with the kick, wanting to get the ball moving. So again, there's a lot of hands in those rucks. Referee lets it play on. The Hong Kong women are looking to move the ball wide. They don't want to get caught up in the traffic. But they've covered her nicely. And uh, with that pressure, she's flicked it back inside. And I think the ref may be playing advantage here for a, a forward pass. Now it's Kazakhstan's opportunity to attack. A lot of defenders out there. So they'll look to carry it. Maybe uh, let their, their teammates catch up a bit. And they've chosen to go in the other direction. Very nice dummy, held the ball in two hands. Hong Kong defense, don't really know where it's going. Oh, there's what? a lot of Yeah, she should roll away, yeah. Yeah, unlucky there. I think uh, she was the tackler, got caught in there, uh, unable to get out, which gives the penalty to Kazakhstan. You've got to roll away very quickly in the tackle ball there. But like, especially like sevens, like, if the referee, if we see the player who's on the ground, and like, if she was, on, if, he, if she didn't roll away, then the referee just blobs up in one second so the player should get roll, roll away quickly so Kazakhstan are looking to do the same thing in the first half they've gone for a line out kick which again what, what I say brings in all the defenders brings it in nice and tight within that five meter mark possibly giving their speedster uh, on the outside a, a chance to get a, a triple could possibly be a third try for the for the uh, the pace lady out in the wing there Ooh. so they're keeping it in tight a bit of a basketball pass over the top there Thought about offloading it, but uh, oh. notice the Hong Kong defender coming in. Good carry, good strength. Getting some nice clean ball for the backs now. Not Starting to move to. it out wide. Oh, 
look at that. Oh, that was a little bit unlucky. A bit of miscommunication there, I believe. She was going in to clean out the ball where the ball was popped up. Sometimes that happens. You drop your head to clean out the ball. Then the ball hits you in the face. But in this situation, it came off your legs, but the oh, ref did knock on. This is a good chance for Hong Kong. Can they make it? So Hong Kong have looked to move the ball, but Kazakhstan have been up to the task of defence. They've managed to get out there. They'll look to come back the other way, looking for some holes, just probing, probing, looking. Here we go now. Oh, unmarked on the outside. Can she get around her? Oh, inside step. Nice step, but stepping inside to find two defenders. Released the ball, unheld, so she can do that. She's released it and gone up and gone again. Maybe the Kazakhstan defence is stretched now. There looks like it could be a two-on-one. Last one here. All she's got to do is back herself. She's got the pace and she's gone right around. Will she go under the post? It's 10-0. So if she goes under, it'll make the conversion a lot easier. Bring it, bringing the uh, gap down to three. A nice try from number seven, Kama Nun. Look at that. Yes, finally, a, a lot of pressure on the Kazakhstan defence. They went left, they went right, and uh, eventually. They ran out of uh, players to defend, so uh, Hong Kong finding the space out wide. And just like the gas on the end to get around the last defender. Very smart play going under the post. I think every point's going to count in this game. Very, very tight game. Now we have 3 minutes and 20 seconds, and let's look at uh, Hong Kong, they, can they make it or not? So yes, the, the try was converted, just looking at the points there. Just 3 points in it. We have... Three minutes, ten seconds, plenty of time. That's plenty of time in sevens rugby. Uh, in, in, in fifteens rugby, that doesn't seem like much, but that's plenty of time. Oh, little cheeky grubber gone through, but Kazakhstan have an answer for it. They managed to clean it up. Switch play. Hong Kong will want to get their hands on the ball. They want to get it back so they can go back here. Yeah. Kazakhstan won't want to give them any. They want to starve them with the ball. And they'll be looking to score again. If they can score again and push it out to possibly eight points, Puts a lot of pressure on the Hong Kong women to, to score twice. They have to get the ball. They have to get the ball. So far, the Kazakhstan women are going sideways. Not a lot of go for it here. Bit of crabbing across the field. Now, finally, someone starts to straighten it. And very nice offload. Oh, managed to get out of that cackle. Went low, but just missed it. And she'll just stride out. Will she go around under the post? She possibly should go around under the post, which will give them a... No, no, got a bit timing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard work out there. The, the heat's probably starting to get to these ladies. You can see there just what it, how much energy <laughs> is being sapped out of the body. She'll, she'll deserve that water. <laughs> get it out to her. Look at that. Like. Well, Kazakhstan, they, they try to look at the space and they try to go attack the space. And that's why like, they made the, a good try. Well, when I watched that moment, the Kazakhstan made the attack to the space and after they, the two players went, came for support. The try was scored there by Ludmila Shira, but uh, all the work was possibly done. Now, obviously hard work to run that extra 40 metres, but all the work was done in the middle when somebody straightened it up, went forward, broke the advantage line, and uh, that got them behind the uh, Hong Kong women's defence. So unable to convert that try there, but that uh, does give them a nice, comfortable lead there of eight points, meaning that the Hong Kong women will need to score twice, and... Time is not on their side with only 1 minute and 15 seconds to go. They will want the Kazakhstan women to kick off quickly, but the Kazakhstan women don't look like they're in a hurry, and I don't blame them. They'll want to milk this uh, clock down a bit. Here we go, a bit of a deeper kick, uncontested by the Kazakhstan women, but the defence is coming up nice and strong. Whoa, oh. here we go. Here, here we go, go. opportunity. Here go. The defenders are there, they're trying to get around here. Looking for Scrambling. Yes, referee has called that she uh, possibly stepped around the side of the ruck there in a illegal position to contest. 40 seconds remain. Well, Hong Kong, they do still have a chance to win. Yeah, but they're going to have to score quickly. They're going to have to move the ball. But this puts a lot of pressure on the women now. They possibly could make mistakes they wouldn't normally make because of the pressure. They'll, they'll know. They'll know they need to get down there quickly and score, convert, or, or just score and go again. They need to restart. Oh, they missed the ball. Yeah, that's what pressure can do to you sometimes. You push the passes that probably don't need pushing, uh, and you uh, are indecisive. Uh, the decision-making and the communication can break down. And again, uh, the pressure just from the Kazakhstan defence coming up. Very good line speed, uh, very good communication. Not wanting to let these uh, Hong Kong women go either around them or through them. There goes the buzzer. So it looks like it will be a... 
Kazakhstan victory over Hong Kong, uh, but we're not done yet. Will Kazakhstan try to get more points? Uh, being as the competition may be very tight, they'll want to get as much points as possible, or they may just look to convert it out, push it out. So a bit of, a bit of a sloppy ball there after it's going to go back, and she'll just kick it into touch, and that'll be it. Uh, well done to the Kazakhstan woman. Yeah, everybody out there looking like they left everything on the park. Struggling to even uh, catch their breath, hands on knees. And the tap on the back to the try scorer there. Well, for Kazakhstan, like, as a referee, like, we always think that about tactical things. And, but when I just look at the, the clips and, like, well, Kazakhstan, they made a good pressure to Hong Kong. And, like, every time, anywhere, like, Kazakhstan made a pressure to Hong Kong every time. So that's why, like, Hong Kong, they cannot get the they didn't make a try the first time, and like, they always get the back so. I agree with you, mate. I think what, what Kazakhstan did very well is, because of the pressure on defence, they really uh, stopped Hong Kong women playing their game. Uh, Hong Kong women would have gone out there with a, a tactic, with a plan, but just that pressure. Sometimes uh, you throw a spanner in the works and, and the game plan unravels. So they managed to get that try out wide, and I think that was their game plan to push it out, but just that constant pressure. And then that final try at the end, just to give them a bit of breathing space, and they managed to go through. So it'll be a well-earned uh, break from for both these teams. Yes, happy happy ladies of the Kazakhstan one. So who have we got up next, mate? What game next? The next game will be China against Sri Lanka, and it's going to start at 12-5. All right, so we'll take a break from the commentary, and we'll see you in the next game.
All right, welcome back to Namdong Stadium at Incheon, South Korea. We are on to game six. So we have the Chinese women's team coming out, looking to face off against the Sri Lankan women's team. So we have the Chinese women's team in their traditional red, uh, and our Sri Lankan women's team here in the dark green. So a little bit of a uh, huddle before that. So the Chinese go into a huddle, hold the ball up, where the Sri Lankans go in and take a knee. Now they've got their hands up as well. So. Very interesting here. Uh, you are joined in the commentary box by myself, Simon Walsh, uh, from New Zealand actually, but I'm in South Korea. And uh, just to uh, the left of me, we have Oscar, a seasoned referee from South Korea. Hey, Oscar. Hello. How are you? Well, um, well, as a referee, like, well, I was supposed to run in that pitch, but anyway, like, it's the first time to do commentary right now. Well, I'll speak to you a lot about uh, as a referee. So, let's have a look. <laughs> All right, here we go. Game six. Uh, we just saw the Kazakhstan woman uh, manage to win out over the Hong Kong woman. So now it's these two guys to have a go. Very nice, clean take off, uh, clean take from kickoff there. Uh, just from a visual here, possibly the Chinese woman may have a size advantage there. A uh, bit of a high ball there, unlucky, unable to take it. So that will go to our first line out, giving the Chinese woman a very, very good attacking opportunity. Just 30 seconds in, and they just 15 meters out from the Sri Lankan try line. Well, I think um, Sri Lanka, they have to win the pressure coming from China because, well, China, there's a, a top level in Asia, and also they have a lot of experience in the World Series. So let's have a look. So a nice clean take there from the Chinese team. It looks like they've got the numbers out wide. They will look to push the defense out wide. Yes, gas lady on the outside there is Xiao Zheng Lu, who managed to get on the outside there. Big, big smile, thanking her teammates for some clean ball. It's always nice when you get the ball on the outside, there's no defender in front of you uh, as, a, as a speedster, and probably she probably doesn't have a lot of size on it. It's always best when there's no one tackling you. So uh, first points on the board for China, and she managed to bring it back a little bit, making it a little bit easier for her kicker. Let's see if she can convert. Can she make it? Oh, that's a uh, It was a uh, accurate kick, but probably just didn't have the legs to get over there. Just off to the side. So we'll go back again. Um, Sri Lanka will look to clean up from this. Uh, it came off of a Sri Lankan mistake. A high pass that went out, and then uh, China clean line out, went wide, and score. Very textbook. Let's see if uh, Sri Lanka can take a clean take this time and give themselves an opportunity to attack. Oh, I think that's a nice high kick. A high ball not taken on the full. Uh, it's probably a mistake from Sri Lanka. You need to take those balls on the full, otherwise it comes down to a 50-50 ball, giving China the opportunity. But they managed to clean it up. A uh, bit of a low pass there, but she's managed to pick it up on her fingertips. A uh, very good skill set there. So China comp competing in the breakdown, making this ball a little bit slower than what the Sri Lankans would like. Very solid tackle. Very solid tackle. The ball was probably a little bit high for her. Now China going for a quick tap. They know their space out wide, but they've decided to go straight through the middle into the fence, sucking in a few more def defenders. The screams are coming from the wi out wide. They are asking for the ball. The referee has deemed a professional foul here. It looks like she's going to the pocket. A yellow card. Slowing the ball down deliberately right in front of the post. So during a scoring opportunity, deemed professional foul. So. Sri Lanka were going to six players, not what they need. Now, yes, e very easy now with six players on the field. There should be space out wide. So that's the second try from their strike weapon. Uh, number 11 is uh, Zhao Kuang Lu. She goes in for her second one. Her smile just keeps <laughs> growing as she uh, racks up another try. Yep, there we go. Oh, it's really impressive. Yeah. So now, uh, what does this conversion to go? So just dialing in the radar a little bit and again a little bit short and almost there but China will be happy with that 10 points up Sri Lanka now have even more pressure on them down to six players while they have their man in the bin or lady in the bin I, I should say so they will need to all pick up on the defense now well like as I said to you the Chinese team is at the top level in Asia so they are showing us that they have a good potential they have a, a good Tactical things and good power, isn't it? Much better from the Sri Lankan woman there. They took that ball on the full. But as you can see, that line speed from the Chinese woman, they're coming up very, very quickly. Look at the pressure. 
Yep, so, and uh, they're, they're attacking the that rock. Rache's play on, so it was fairly stolen there. Pinched it, and yes, uh, very difficult to defend with six players on seven. The Chinese are finding holes on both sides, left and right. They'll score again, pushing that out to 15 points now. Sri Lanka got to be a little bit careful. We're only we're only five minutes in, and uh, the scoreboard is starting to tick over. They'll want to make sure this game doesn't get away with them. They want to away on them. Third attempt at a conversion will go from the other side. A similar sort of angle here. Can she make it? Nice and high, but just uh, pushing it off there uh, to the right. But now China have a lot of breathing room here. 15 points. Sri Lanka are going to want to tighten up their defense. Hard to do when you've only got <coughs> six players on the field. Now there's a substitution coming from the Sri Lanka. Fresh legs for the Sri Lankan woman. Hopefully this will give them a bit more gas uh, so they can run around. It's very hard to defend uh, for long periods of time with, with the player down. It really sucks the juice out of you. So here we go again. China looking to do a trick play going into some open space. Look at that. They're just giving a pressure a lot right now. Look at the Sri Lanka. They kind of win the ruck. Yes, yeah, so a lot of down. pressure at the ruck. Three women attacking that ruck there and a very quick tap ball. Going a little bit too high on the defender, and that is a, uh, it's a triple. Ah, yes, that, as I mentioned, that smile keeps on growing. Every try it gets bigger and bigger. What would happen if she gets four? So the same uh, try scorer there. Uh, Zhao Kuang Lu going in uh, for the third time. Pushing them out to 20. They're not doing their kicker any favours, though, these uh, these Chinese wingers. They're, they're making it hard for her. They're making her earn her. Unu Paycheck kicking from outside. Maybe at half time she'll go have a word for them and ask her to run it in under the post. Again, pushed off. Uh, so that's uh, zero from four from the kicker. But uh, as I mentioned, they've all been very difficult kicks. Uh, no one's managed to run it in. Smiles on the bench there. The ladies are looking very happy. Just waiting their turn to get on. With the fresh legs. Bit of tape on their knees there. So it looks like they've been in the wars. Here we go again. So... China looking for the restart, just 30 seconds left. Let's see if Sri Lanka can uh, turn the tide a bit here and get some clean ball. Now they have to win the pressure, they have to win the pressure. Look at the space. So looking to carry the forward, the Chinese woman there seems to be on the wrong side. Referee seems it's okay, she managed to roll away. Running away from her support a bit here, got to be careful because these Chinese women are attacking that ruck. Yep, good there, managed to go to ground, Are the hounds out there for advantage. I think, Possibly, but I think that was going for offside advantage. Offside or maybe uh, even a little bit high in the tackle. What's the call here? So it is a... Ah, just a knock-on. So it's not a penalty advantage, just a knock-on here. So we'll go to a scrum or the referee call time. Because it looks like the time is over on the clock. But no, she's saying there is time for another one last play. <coughs> oh, there, oh, there we go. There's the siren. So... Just looking at the clock on our screen and listening to that siren, it's gone. So, siren's gone. This will be the last play. What will the Sri Lankan women want to do here? Are they a little bit tired from running around with six players and want to kick it out? Or will they want to attack and possibly get some points on the board? They are going to attack. It's uh, dangerous to attack from in your own 22 here. And that is a always a uh, an option there. Yes, and uh, unlucky there from the Sri Lankan women. Possibly caught... Uh, and no man's land without support, and the Chinese take advantage. Well, right now, like, that was a, a nice tackle, and the tackle was just rolling quickly. And after the jackal came to a ball, and uh, everything was perfect. As a referee, that there's no problem to the China. And look at that. Look at the power. Made a good try. Yeah, I believe the referee's doing a good job here. She's uh, letting the game flow. And when the women are able to attack over the ball, she's uh, letting them play it on. The Chinese are doing very well to attack the Sri Lankan uh, ruck. So the Sri Lankan women aren't quite securing their own ball here. Uh, just as that one was an example, they managed to get over the top. And what the Chinese women are then doing is, uh, rather than standing around, they're taking a quick tap. So those quick taps are uh, finding the Sri Lankan woman offside and they're going through and scoring the tries. So 27 nil at half time. Uh, breathing in some well needed oxygen there, the Sri Lankan woman. They uh, have, have, have had to do a lot of defence. And uh, as you know, as a player, defending can be a lot harder than attacking. Chinese women looking very confident. Uh, what do you think the coach will be saying to them at half time, mate? 
Well, like, as a, a, as the, um, as I said to you before, the coach, I think every time coaches always say to the players, give the pressure a lot to the opponents, give the pressure every time, every, anywhere. Like, so I think like that coach is going to give a pressure, saying to the players, give a pressure a lot more than the first half. And then like, I think, yeah, just give it a pressure a lot. I think that's it. So we can see where all the tries are being scored. They're being scored right out wide. Uh, meaning they're really pushing the Sri Lankan women's defence. They managed to get around the outside. With that card, uh, the professional foul card, that didn't do them any favours, allowing the, the Chinese to have more space out left and out right. And that, just look at that, that fend to the face. Okay. Uh, yeah, and that there is just... Uh, got to go low on, on these women. You can't go too high, otherwise you're going to get the old palm in the face, which is never comfortable. Now let's look at the um, second half for Sri Lanka. So Sri Lanka would have had a chat at half time. To, uh, I'm sure the, the coach would have told them about securing the ball, uh, making sure that they look to get into space rather than running into, straight into the defence. Uh, so, yeah, the kickoff has taken well. Not a lot of pressure on the Chinese. Uh, now they look very quickly to move it away. Look at that speed. They're really, they're really quick. So they're going to go look to the outside. Uh, they, whoa, oh, bit, of a, bit of an in and out. Uh, they managed to catch it there, and they've secured the ball well. Now they'll look to stretch to go to the other side. Some very nice passes, ball out in front, running onto the ball, and that's what happens. Manage to put your player on the outside, so she'll just go in untouched, and maybe she'll do her kicker a favour. Yes. <laughs> maybe that was the chat at half time. Please, please take that ball out of the post. So, trying to extend their lead very quickly in the, in the second half. Just 40 seconds, and they're dotting down under the post. Well, personally, uh, for Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka is really hot and uh, in Korea is a little bit cold. They have to win the weather. They have to win the weather. And then they have to go for defence. They have to go. They have to run a lot and they have to win the pressure. So very nice try there from Hong Ting Run. Uh, she looks like she's very tall. So those strides were just uh, very long and lengthy when she ran it under the post. And here we go again with the kickoff. Uh, China opting to go deep. Not a lot of pressure on the catcher. So that's what happens when you go deep. But they have a bit of a clean ball. Uh, she looks like she managed to secure it. The Chinese were looking to attack over the ball. But oh, Sri Lanka have managed to get it back. Look at the pressure. Yeah, that's the pressure there. Line speed, very good for the Chinese. But Sri Lanka managed to hold on to it this time. They're doing a little, a little bit better at holding onto the ball than what they did in the first half. Uh, yes. That went to forward, yeah. So that's what happens when you put pressure on it. The, the passes are not as clean, not as, not, as, not as smooth. And that pressure forced an error there for the Sri Lankan women's team, uh, giving the Chinese a very, very good attacking opportunity. They're just 15 metres in uh, and only 5 metres out. So this will be a very good opportunity for China to possibly extend that lead. 34 points. Can they push it out even further? Well, I think like, China is going to push a lot of pressure a lot. Now the pressure is on Sri Lanka to defend their line. They're all right. Toes are right on the line here. So will they look to come off as quick as they can? They've got to watch they don't come off too quick because they might have an inside ball or a cut ball that, that leaves them there. But they want to come off their line. They don't want to be back on their line, giving the Chinese a... Here we go. Ah, that's oh. too easy, too easy. So the, the Sri Lankans probably a bit of miscommunication there. They didn't really know what was going on. And just, I think that runner that ran off to the blind side confused them. Because it looked like the uh, the 10 for the Sri Lankan woman went blind, then decided to come back in, which created that hole. Very smart play for the Chinese. They knew what they were doing there. They had that runner go left, and then everyone else went right. So, deceptive play. And yes, nice kick there. That's where <laughs> uh, The kick is having a much better go uh, the second half. She's had some nice, easy shots out in front. Uh, China now stretched that lead out to 41 to nil. Uh, Sri Lanka want to get on the board here. Lots of smiles for the Chinese women's team. They're really enjoying themselves out there now. So will it be a deep kick or will it be a, a shallower kick here? They went for a deep kick before. But with the pressure they're putting on the Sri Lankan women, I think if they go deep or shallow, they're still going to come up and put lots of pressure on them. A bit deeper this time. So, oh, oh timing. Well, the referee has deemed that timing was a little bit too early. So she hit her, hit her too soon. 
pressure relief now with a penalty penalty here. The Sri Lanka have decided not to kick it out. They're going to run it out for their own half. They seem to be a little bit... Uh, don't really know what they want to do here. And the Chinese are attacking, but uh, haven't let them play the ball. So, yes, another relieving penalty here. Now Sri Lanka, they have to, they have to make a score right now. Yeah, they... Uh, they seem to be taking through the middle here, rather than going going wide. And each time they do it, the Chinese are attacking that ruck and maul. So, this time they've actually got the numbers to the ruck and maul, which is actually turning in their favour, because the Chinese are getting deemed to be not letting them play the ball, not letting them release, not rolling away. Another one here, yep, so referee's called. That's the third one in a row. Chinese are going to have to be careful here if they continue this, these penalties. Nice, solid hit there, and unlucky, tried to offload in the tackle, and lost the ball forward. So, the Chinese have given away a number of penalties here, all for the same uh, same foul, which is going in over the ball and trying to strip it in the tackle, uh, so they have to be a bit careful now. They managed to get the ball back though, and that's just from a dominant tackle. Now let's have a look right now. Can they, can they make a score again? I think China's going to make a score again. So Yuhu will look to feed the scrum and go out. Referee's playing advantage here. A little bit too quick for the Sri Lankans coming off the back. Big, big advantage out wide. Oh, She's starting speed. to crank it up. Here we look go, going speed. around the outside. Look at that. Whoa, and even a little inside outside there. <laughs> Unable to go under the post because the defense has come across. But the Chinese managed to go on the outside again. And just an inside, outside foot there. Sri Lanka unable to come across and cover defence. China pushed their lead out to 46 points to nil. They'll look to do that even further with a kick. Not an easy one. A bit of a tight angle. Can they make it? Can, you make, can she make it? Oh, Whoa. yes. <laughs> she made a, it. That's a beauty. That's a beauty. She's had a lot of target practice today, though. <laughs> No, every shot, every miss is an opportunity to uh, sort of side it in a bit further, but she managed to get that one from a very difficult angle, so very nice kick from the Chinese there. Now we have 55 seconds to go. China will not want to take the pressure off, they'll want to keep the foot on the throttle, and they'll go for a, it's a shorter one this time, into space. But the ball, a bit of a slippery banana out there, slips away. Uh, the ref has called, has gone back. And the same tactic, they'll look to go wide, they're looking to go to their speeds are out wide. Who is gonna put the put the gas on oh, again? Stride that. out, those long legs gonna carry her under the post. And I think it looks like the Sri Lankan women have just run out of gas here. They are really struggling to match the Chinese for pace out wide. And they'll score, but we still have some time on the clock. So if the Chinese manage to take this conversion quickly uh, before the Huda goes, we may restart. But possibly both teams, a lot of hands on hips, a lot of hands on heads. They may not want to restart this again. There goes the Huda. So this will be the last play, looking to convert. And it is converted. So the Chinese with a very, very dominant performance here. 55 points to nil. Uh, very tired Sri Lankan bodies out there. They will need to go into the chat rooms, uh, the changing rooms there, regroup, have a chat. Uh, more opportunities later on in the day, but yes, a very dominant performance from the Chinese. Yeah, as I said, you know, Chinese is a uh, top level in Asia, and then they showed us that they are they are the power, they are the power country in Asia. They do. Um, they do deserve like uh, 55 to 0 and I'm really expecting that they could show a good a good result against like, a top level country in Asia. Yeah, so the Chinese are looking dominant throughout the whole game, uh, but one thing that didn't help the Sri Lankan women was the yellow card. Uh, the Chinese managed to score a few times when it was uh, 7 on 6. I think this is an example here. That may have been when they had 7 players actually, but uh, the same tactic. The first half they went around the outside, and then uh, in the second half, they did the same thing. There were no tries really going through the middle, uh, which shows that the Sri Lankans were defending, were defending well up the centre of the field, but the Chinese, uh, with their very smooth passes, uh, right out in front, uh, women running onto the ball, managed to get around the outside on a number of occasions. Uh, the other women's teams were probably watching this and seeing what the Chinese are doing, 
and maybe they can adjust their game to know that the Chinese are I mean that, that was an example where they did go through the middle but they managed to throw the ball on the outside so we'll take a break in the commentary here and we'll look to come back uh, for our next game which will be since 1979 uh, game seven which will be uh, Japan for versus perfection. Malaysia we've been thinking sketching and designing We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. We've been cutting, shaping, and painting. strength and beauty time and again our machines are made for one thing the perfect hit we are the coach we are the bind we are the set we are the squeeze we are the hit we are Rhino, home of the scrum. Welcome back to Incheon Namdong Asiad Rugby Stadium. We're here with the uh, third women's match of the pool on day one. We've got Japan against Malaysia. Liana, you're back with me in the booth here. Yes, you know so I'm here right with you. It's going to be, uh, you're going to be seeing your fellow country women playing. Do you have some uh, mates or teammates that are still playing? Of course, yeah, there are a few of them are still playing with the team. It's great to see them playing out here in front and commentating on them. It's going to be a great stuff. Let's see. Are there any, s maybe some players that we should be uh, aware of? Some, some special players there on the Malaysian team that are going to be looking to take the team forward? Of course, um, you have uh, one of the spinster in the team, which is uh, Noor Farhana Aziz. She's one of the, uh, uh, the most uh, fastest player in the team. And also there's uh, one junior out of the team like really really fast which is we can see here number four jersey Kajolin Janison. she's one of the new player in the team for the national team and we'll be looking forward uh, to those players Japan no one special to highlight why because all 12 players are special players in the Japan team um, you know between Japan and China the two favorites for the in the women's tournament uh, China showing a very good uh, first game against Sri Lanka. Um, Japan here is also going to see that and also going to try to match them and put in a good performance here. Should be a fun game coming up shortly. As you can see with the flag there, there is a bit of wind today uh, from our screen right to left. So that's something that the teams will have to... Um, take into play when they are out there yeah they just need to be aware and get used to the weather in korea so this would be cold temperature in malaysia or does it ever get this uh i guess not really this is not the kind of weather in malaysia usually we always hot and rain all the year so do you think the Malaysian uh, ladies will enjoy this weather, or some, or is it something that they're gonna get, they're gonna have to get used to? I think they will get used to it because uh, it's not that cold. I think it still can be uh, suit with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A 
Okay, here we go. The two teams coming up to the field. Sorry, it is Philippines, Japan, not uh, Japan, Malaysia. So we just have a quick correction there. It will be Japan against Philippines in the third uh, pool match. And here are the starting lineups of the two teams. Again, with the Japanese team, no one to highlight, especially just because the whole team is just full of talent. Um, if China has some um, specimen and some real athletes on their team, Japan, more of a clinical team, more of a team that plays together really good with the ball skills and team pattern. So Japan is going to look to put on a bit of a clinic, attacking clinic, whereas the Philippines, um, you know, we haven't seen much of the Philippine women over the years. They're, they're bouncing back and forth between the first division and second division. But um, they will be looking to be physical and stop Japan and not let Japan get into a rhythm because they, they can be a very difficult team to play against Japan once they get into a good rhythm. That's a great take off the kickoff for the Philippines. Nice physical carries to start off the game. You always want to get that first hit to try yes. to get you uh, acclimated to the game. Just keeping it tight, not too expansive so far. You know, for them it'll just be about keeping the ball. They're just going to flow the ball to the wing and let's see how it goes. Oh, that's a good Quick. little play there. Quick pick up. Now an opportunity mm -hmm. maybe to go a bit wider. <laughs> Step back inside. Already five phases here by the Philippines team, but not going too far. Mm -hmm. And looks like they just got caught there a little bit short in the breakdown. So Japan with a quick tap, opportunity attack. Oh, it's a great mm -hmm. tackle there by the Philippines number 10. Deemed to be a bit high though. on one opportunity here for the first try and that's one thing with the Japanese team it's just the level of skill yeah they're just playing basic swing out wide and just gotta try yeah there's nothing uh, the, the Japanese women there's nothing you know they're not as athletic maybe or as, as physical as the Chinese team but the reason why they've been so good over the last few years on the series is just their execution and their skill ability um, you know, maybe if you don't have size, just mm -hmm. like the Japanese men's 15s team, how can you make up for that? Well, you can make up for it in skill and, and speed. And that's one thing that the Japanese women's sevens, the Sakura sevens have done is really, um, I think, train that catch pass and the mm -hmm. basics. Mm -hmm. They do the basics so well. They just do the basic stuff and then they actually kind of like prove that physicality doesn't mean and um, the main thing that is uh, really important in the game itself for rugby because as you can see our uh, Japanese team is one of the their physicality is not quite big but they still can be on top of the uh, Asian country for the women's rugby exactly mm -hmm. what they lack in size they make up in skill and speed yes And that's what the Philippines need to do. If they're going to be successful, they need their carriers to break that Japanese line and be a bit more physical. Oh, that's a great tackle. Just like the Japanese men, the Japanese women have real great line speed in defense. Yes. In your face before you even catch the ball. It looks like a turnover there. Turnover, but there Is was a knock. Yeah, there was a. It was a nice turnover, mm -hmm. but as she was pulling the ball out, she just got mm -hmm. tackled, so she knocked the ball on. So that will be a Philippine scrum. And referee has just asked for time off here. Oh, it's great to see the Japanese number one Chiaru Nakamura. Mm -hmm. She is a legend in the women's sevens mm -hmm. game, and uh, you know she is back in the squad. Um, the face of Japan women's sevens to be honest yeah when I was playing uh, with Malaysia I used to play against them and she was in the team and she's still in the team mm, absolute legend so referee I think is just signaling here for uh, HIA a head knock 
um, check. So we're just going to make sure the safety first, make sure this Japanese player is all checked out. Maybe just a simbin, a little bit of blood. Couldn't couldn't see uh, for sure there. Philippines deemed to push early, so Japanese free kick. Will be a try. Yes. Just a nice little bit of individual footwork there. You know, she caught the ball one on one situation. Look at this footwork here. First of all, it's a great little pass. A little bit inside outside. See you later. <laughs> and try. Japanese women haven't really gotten into their full rhythm yet, but they've t they've attacked twice and they've scored twice. So so far so good. Philippine women, you know, they're doing well to to actually secure their own kickoff, the kickoff ball, but they just need to find a bit more options in attack. Maybe I think for them that just like the Filipino men, maybe be be a bit more physical and use that physicality to get over the line and then maybe look for space. This is, gonna, this is going to be their first game in the day, so I guess they still need a rhythm. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. It's a, it's a real big difference in styles mm -hmm. between the Japanese team and the yeah. Filipino team. As you can see, um, for Philippines, they're using their size to just go into the rock every time. But for Japanese, they use their speed and just flow the ball out to the winger. So the kick is not 10, so it will be a Filipino free kick mm -hmm. from the middle of the field. Let's see if they can um, pull off a little set-piece move here and see if they can go mm -hmm. forward. You can see the Japanese mm -hmm. women not even putting anyone mm -hmm. into the breakdown, just seven people up. Oh, yeah. we got a bit of opportunity here. Aww. Oh, unlucky. They did well to find that mm -hmm. initial break, but yeah. then just, you know, the execution mm -hmm. wasn't there. And now Japanese women, an opportunity mm -hmm. to attack from their own half. Look at the footwork there yeah. on number nine. Sayo Yarusi. Just look at the mm -hmm. balls all, all perfectly mm -hmm. out in front. Good fence off by number five. It's yeah. just impressive the level of skill. Mm -hmm. Since the passes are so well, the mm -hmm. Japanese women, they don't actually have to change the rhythm mm -hmm. or check their run. They can just go forward mm -hmm. because the balls are perfectly out in front mm -hmm. every single time. Oh, it's oh, just oh, uh, oh, it's oh, a credit oh, to oh, how oh, skilled oh, these oh, women oh, are. That's Chikai Segusa, the number five. And we will apologize in advance for our mispronunciations of names. Yeah, I agree. I totally should apologize in, in advance. And we're going to try our best. That's conversion by number 12, Michio Suda. Bit easier for us. Oh, so that was a bit of a head knock earlier with uh, a, bit of a bit of blood there. Yeah. Hopefully she'll be okay uh, after HIA and a couple stitches. That is part of the game, isn't mm, it? Yes. to the Philippines and the Hooter has just gone so this will be the final play of the half if they go to the line out they will have an opportunity to play the ball Philippines opting for the line out this time this will be the final play there's a Filipino coach he is not cold <laughs> Stolen by the Japanese. Japanese still wants to play, let's see. Oh, great dummy. Oh, nice little dummy there. She sold that. Mm. Oh. You can see what they were doing there. They wanted to attack the blind mm. side, but just the pass not going oh. ahead. Philippines now with an opportunity. There's a bit of broken play here. If they can get the ball oh. wide. Hopefully she can make it. Number five. This is a foot race. Oh. Number five on five. Whoa! Oh, she made it. 
Yeah. Nice speed there. You know, Japan had an opportunity. They stole the lineup. They could have yeah. just kicked it out to end the half. Yeah. Instead, they decided to play, turn the ball over. And a bit of speed from the Philippines. We haven't seen this yet in the half, but looks like number five from the Philippines, Divine Juvenile Joe Mill. I think it was Lauri Nazareno. Oh, yes, Lauren. Sorry, yeah. I was looking at the Malaysia <laughs> team sheet. Apologies. Also, first time for us. Yes. Mazzarino with a nice clean pair of heels there, Jess. And the kick doesn't Successful go. Successful conversion. So that will conclude the first half. Good play by <laughs> Philippines <laughs> to, to, to wrap up the first half. Just looking at the first half highlights here. Just clean play by the Japanese women. Ball's always out in front, you know, so never have to, to check your run. This was right off the scrum. Just simple stuff. Draw and pass, draw and pass. Nice little bit of footwork there. Quick tap from the penalty and pass through the winger and score a try. And this was five on five earlier. And she got the try, but then the Philippines number five said, wait a minute. You might be 1-0 up, but I got a chance to take you on, and she burned her out on the outside. So it's Japan three tries to one, but in the individual battle, one to one. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. We've been cutting, shaping, and painting. strength and beauty time and again our machines are made for one thing the perfect hit we are the crouch we are the bind we are the set we are the squeeze we are the hit Welcome back to the second half here. Philippines kicking us off. Ooh, nice tackle there. Oh, physical clean out. What a physical counter ruck there. And that's, you know, they just scored at the end of the half, and that's the way to keep the momentum going is to come out and just be physical and win your ball. What a play there by the Philippines. I guess the first uh, try from Philippines make them want to do more and more. Unfortunate there. They had, like you said, you know, that first try gave them a bit of extra energy, a bit of extra fire, but right off the quick tap, a bit of a handling error there. So they're giving the ball back to Japan. But it's um, some promising signs from the Philippines. You know, they showed us a bit of speed, and now they're showing us a bit of physicality. It, you know, they're going to just improve over the weekend, I think. Japan off the base of the scrum. Nice little run here. Making nice meters. Pick up. Good offload yes. in the tackle. Inside, Inside ball. Just the fence off and she make it through the try line. What a smooth run there from I'm gonna attempt this. I'm gonna attempt this. You're gonna help me out here. Bati Vakolo. <laughs> Just nice balance and rhythm. Uh, it's probably the smoothest runner I've seen today. It just it seems so easy for her, but I'm not sure on the field. <laughs> how does she do it? Yeah. For me, it's always a struggle to run. When you see someone like that, you're just like, exactly. how, is that how does that happen? 
That was always going to be a difficult conversion to make from the touchline. There's the image of the try scorer there. Now Japan to restart play with a kickoff. A couple subs here on both sides, I, th I believe. Get some fresh legs on. kick the Philippines doing well to uh, even though the contest is coming in to secure that ball for the kickoff that's one thing they've done very well throughout the game that Japanese line speed is just something to be afraid of the Japanese players caught the Philippines by themselves they were able to win the turnover and then a bit of uh, the referee didn't like what he saw so moved them back another 10. Wow. wow. Dancing What a feet. great step. Just uh, twinkle shoes, <laughs> twinkle toes on her. She got her dancing shoes on today, not her rugby boots. Look at this. <laughs> 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 right. Straight to the tri pose area. Hop here, hop there. Looking at the the condition and, and just just like the body language of the Japanese women, they just seem very light on their feet, very poised, really balanced runners. Just just a lot of things to like about their play. I can say they are very agile. Yeah, they're a great mm. team, gelling really well. Then you got some individual players like mm. this who can just carve the defense up. They have the speed. They have the footwork. Okay, Japan restarting play. They've decided to go to the far side mm -hmm. here. Though Philippines has, have, as they have done, they have recovered their ball. Now let's see what they can do. They're just going to use their physic physicality. Oh, well, that looked a bit high there. Oh. It's not on the mark. The Philippines just don't have an answer for this Japanese line speed. You know, when a team has such good line speed, there's two ways to break it down. It's um, to either be physical and win that one-on-one -on -one battle or to put it in behind. But right now, Japan just looking so dangerous. Look at these runners coming from nowhere. Oh, look at showing that footwork again. Number 12, Michio Suda just with the footwork, you know, where, where she learned to step like that. Again here, look at this. She's literally dancing. She's dancing all <laughs> over the field. You know, she came to Korea, she thought maybe she was going to take part in some K-pop, but no, 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 she's playing rugby today. She set up the try there for Hakano Utsumi. Oh, kick does look good but deemed to be just wide there. So far, really impressed with this Japanese team. Not just the team play, but just the individual skill level and footwork. Yeah, I agree. But kudos to Philippines too. They are uh, giving them a hard time also by defending really well. Kick is a bit mm -hmm. deep this time. Mm -hmm. Again, Philippines able to recover the kick. Mm. Well, let's see what they can do in attack. Yeah, that'll give mm. you a little go forward. Mm. That's a good start, good platform mm. to attack. Oh, uh, unlucky there. Mm. They had done well with the first mm. two phases to yeah. get over the gain line and find some momentum, but mm. a bit of a knock on letting them down. Great tackle by the Philippines. Oh, it's silky hands mm -hmm. from the Japanese team. The running angles. Now opportunity here. We got a three on two. All the way to the winger. Oh no. And there she yeah. is again. Suda. Shibibo, shibibo. 
this time untouched. She's been very impressive in this game. Look at, these ball Look at the passes, just all out in front. Not one Japanese player had to check their run. It's just incredible. You know, they might be the most skilled between the men's and women's mm -hmm. team, most uh, skilled team here mm -hmm. this weekend. Mm -hmm. And I think we just heard the hooter in the background. So this conversion um, was the final play of the game. And look, Japan with, you know, uh, pretty easy first game out. Uh, Philippines, you know, nothing to be too disappointed because they actually showed themselves a really good showing, nice couple carries and able to get a try, which is not easy actually against this Japanese team to, to score. So, um, you know, the Philippines will take some positives from that game and Japan, you know, it's just uh, step one. You know, they gotta, yes. they're here to win five games. You win five games, you win the tournament and st job one complete. There's Suda there. She's, she's uh, probably the women of the match for me in that one. I agree with you. She's really incredible in her her footwork step and then she just do the basic things yeah and, th and that's that's what really mm -hmm. separates good players from uh, really uh, great players mm -hmm. is she has all the basic mm -hmm. skills the pass uh, the catch pass skills but then the ability to do that little bit of extra that little bit of x factor mm -hmm. that footwork mm -hmm. um, special player <sighs> this was a great Philippines try at the end of the first half Look at the balance here. Look at this run. Oops. Okay, that'll be us for women's game number three. We'll be back shortly for Thailand versus your home team. <laughs> Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. We've been cutting, shaping, and painting. strength and beauty time and again our machines are made for one thing the perfect hit we are the coach we are the bind we are the set we are the squeeze we are the hit we are Rhino, home of the scrum.
Okay, here we go for women's first session, game number four, eighth match of the game. We have Thailand in the bumblebee uniform here in the blue and yellow stripes, and we got Malaysia in all white. Looking forward to this one? Mm, of course, definitely. It's good to see my teammates still playing with the team. <laughs> Yeah, this must be mm. a special moment for you. Yeah. You're used to being out there with uh, with those ladies, but now you're up here in the commentator's <laughs> booth. We have to remain neutral. Oh, We are sure, commentators. We sure. have to remain neutral, but it uh, should be a good one here against <laughs> Malaysia and <laughs> Thailand. Bit of Southeast Asian uh, yeah. rivals, correct? The Thailand women have made some really big improvements, haven't I agree. they? They did really well on their home leg and can play some really good rugby at times. So. Um, uh, expecting a lot from Thailand this weekend. They're the one team that can really crack that maybe China um, and Japan and Kazakhstan top three. And I believe like the Thailand players, like half of the team has played for m more than 10 years From such together. A young age. Yeah, um, this nine, the number nine player, he, she's one of the senior player in the team, and she's really good with the footwork and everything, tackling. Yeah, we just saw mm. some speed there. Yeah. Unfortunately, she was tackled out of bounds. It was a great mm. bit of defense there yeah. from the Malaysian ladies. Let's see what they can do with the first line out here. Oh, just miss the line out. Yeah, just a little bit of an error there. It gives an opportunity mm. for Thailand. Mm. A four on three. Oh. oh. Ah. Did she get it? Oh. I think she, missed she just missed it. She, she read that mm. really well in defense, actually. But unfortunately, she knocked it on. Mm. So within the first minute, we're going to see the first line out and now the first scrum of the game. It'll be Thailand ball, attacking opportunity in Malaysian half here. It's kind of scrappy there, but let's see if Thailand can go forward. So far, um, just the pass is not going to hand so mm -hmm. far from the Thai women. Mm -hmm. It's a credit to Malaysia's <laughs> defense. They're defending really well, mm -hmm. putting the Thai women under pressure, but yeah. they have caused the penalty. Now mm -hmm. it's Thailand attacking. There she is with the she speed. Got the speed. Look at that, just around the corner. Mm. No one was <laughs> going to catch her, and now she can just jog it in <laughs> under the post. There you go, the first try for Thailand. Under the post. It was just a one-on-one -on -one situation there, and uh, unfortunately the Malaysian women were a bit tight in defense because they had to take care of uh, some inside pressure from the phase before. And you know, when once you attack the inside, that means there's going to be space on the outside. Mm -hmm. And they had the right player mm -hmm. in the right position, yeah. just gave her the ball, and, and she did the rest. It was a successful conversion by the Thailand, so the scores now it's seven to nil. Liana and I have made a pact here not to try to pronounce the uh, Thai women's names just out of respect mm -hmm. because we would butcher the name. So we will go by the player numbers. That was the Thai number one. I totally agree with you. <laughs> out of out of utmost respect, mm -hmm. we don't want to disrespect the yeah. names with the pronunciation. So we'll stick to the back numbers. Ooh, that's a kickoff. Just finding space there. It will be Malaysia ball to line up, but maybe that is a tactic there because Thailand was able to, to steal that first line out. Let's see if the Malaysian women can secure uh, this line out. Sometimes that's the best option. Yeah. Just give it to the front. It doesn't matter. They don't, they don't need to lift up the players. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't matter how the ball mm -hmm. gets back yeah. into the field of play as long as you can just mm -hmm. secure it. So Malaysia with their first opportunity mm -hmm. attack. Good passes Lucky. here. Okay. Let's see if she can make it because she's one of the faster players. But I think the defend the Thailand defender just up to her. They made the tackle, mm -hmm. but they said hands in the ruck, so mm -hmm. Malaysia will get another opportunity mm -hmm. to attack. Mm -hmm. 
You were telling me about a few speedsters, a few mm. new youngsters in yes. your team, correct? There she is, the, the one that on the winger. She is the one. The new youngster <laughs> who said she's got a bit of speed, correct? Yes. Uh, former Malaysian men's sevens mm -hmm. player, correct? There yes. With, with a coaching setup. Yeah. He was also here during the last 15th. The 15th match, yeah. correct. And now he's here once again for as a coach for the women's team. That's great. You mm -hmm. love to see that some of the men's teams helping out with the women's yeah. teams on the tactical side as well. Oh, Ooh. that's a great kick. Let's see if the winger could have it. Mm. She's got to make that tackle. Yes. Oh, it's a good tackle now. Yeah. You have an opportunity mm -hmm. here to now pr pressure Thailand mm -hmm. in their own half. Oh, good footwork mm -hmm. there. Want to keep yes. him here? You got to make this tackle if you're Malaysia, oh. Thailand. What an offload! No one is securing the inside. She's just gonna jog in until the try line. See? You th just when you thought the Malaysian women had uh, <laughs> took care of that situation, mm. number nine from mm. Thailand just popping out yeah. of nowhere. What a great support mm -hmm. line! As you said, mm. I think you you know no inside support there mm -hmm. from the defense. Yeah. If you don't support the inside, you leave yourself open to gaps like that. Yes. Something for the Malaysian coaching staff to mm. have a look at and maybe have a word at halftime. Mm. Look at this offload here. Yeah. Wow, nice line. And that is the power of the offload. Just when you, you think uh, from a defender's point of view that you've made the tackle, you've done your job, mm. one offload like that can just kill you. Mm. And she's one of the most experienced players, so she could read all the defense. So that's why she's cutting in inside. As you said, just using all that experience mm. that she's gained and just just choosing that line and waiting for uh, for her ball carry to release her into yeah. that space. She has the right moment to cut inside. Thai women looking good here, 14 mm. nil, um, just coming up towards the end of the end of the first half. Great kickoff. Been really mm. impressed with the the kickoffs mm. from the from the women so far this morning. They've all been very accurate mm. today from all the teams. So Malaysia playing with a bit of advantage mm. here. <laughs> There's a hooter, but Malaysia will have one final chance here at the end of the half to to do something. Mm. Probably not There's what they no wanted to do, yeah. From the team. The Thailand, they won't look to kick uh -huh. it out. They will take their opportunity. Didn't start very well, but mm -hmm. looking very clinical mm -hmm. towards the end of this first half. And that was a nice run there. Mm -hmm. I might attempt this name. Number eight, Wanari Mi Chuk. Yeah, Wanari Mi Chuk. Wanari mm, Mi Chuk yes. with <laughs> a try and converts her own try. So Thailand will be happy, I think. Mm -hmm. um, the Thai coach there going, you know, probably not too much to say. Just mm -hmm. keep giving the girls confidence mm -hmm. and probably just complimenting on the good stuff they want to do well. Mm -hmm. Keep doing well. Malaysian team. Showing glimpses there, a couple, mm -hmm. couple times they got the ball yeah. in space, but a couple things that they probably need to clean up. Yeah. They just need to sustain what they have when they having the ball. But unfortunately, like unlucky stuff happened in between. They, they, they could not sustain the ball very and well. Yeah, I think, <coughs> you know, we always talk about pressure and attack, mm -hmm. but you also there's uh, sorry, pressure and defense, mm -hmm. but there's also pressure and attack. And mm -hmm. I think what you just said, sustaining mm -hmm. pressure. Yeah. If you keep the ball and you make the Thai team, the opposition tackle you, mm -hmm. that's going to start to wear on them. Mm -hmm. But like you said, Malaysia, one, two phases, turnovers, bit unlucky, mm -hmm. uh, a knock on or a bad pass. So I think in the second half, Malaysia needs to just focus on keeping the ball. Mm -hmm. And the Thai women, I think, you know, there won't be too many big corrections there. Mm -hmm. It'll just be about more of the same in the second half. Mm -hmm. the first half 
For Malaysia team, I guess they really need to have um, consistent support from the teammate because they can make it uh, forward, but when there's no support at the back, it's kind of like going to be difficult for them to sustain the ball. Yeah, they got mm. caught there a couple yeah. times there with no, uh, no support. support yeah. yeah. Just final team talks there. You always got to have your call. Uh, I like to see the fight though, you know, just because they're losing, they still have the passion. Mm -hmm. The look in their eye, they're in for this game, Malaysia. These Thai jerseys might be my favorite jersey so far. Mm. I like this little. I love it too, just like a bumblebee. Yeah, <laughs> old school kind of rugby stripes, you know. Yeah. These days you see more solid color uniforms, but the old rugby tradition was a bit yeah. of stripes, and I'm really liking this. These blue and gold bumbles, uh, I totally bumble stripes. Agree with you. <laughs> a great turnover. Just gotta take it be behind the ruck there, right? Just the mark. We've seen that a couple Slightly. times today. Today, yeah. I I know what I they're feeling. They want to go <laughs> quick, but you gotta take it from the the correct mark. Yeah. Okay, Malaysia now just shifting oh. low. Just unfortunate. I think mm. you know. She, do I run? Do I pass? Yeah, and I she got caught yeah. in two two minds there. I think. And the teammate couldn't read the couldn't read her well what she's trying to do. Exactly. Mm. Okay, we got a scrum here to the Thai women. In and out, real oh. quick. A little bit loose, but they're not too worried. I don't think. Bit of a floating pass, but she won't mind. Good cover, Kata from the team from the inside. Yeah, it's a good level of skill here from the Thai women. They make it look there pretty easy. <laughs> right. <laughs> So these three will, will, will take charge for that. Yeah, this will help a lot. Except no one's, I mean, there's no chance on ever. Oh, no, 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 it's supposed, supposed to be there too. Yeah. Okay, so the women, the Thai women will kick off here again. So far, so good from the Thai women's side. Let's see for the second half, can Malaysia do something to get a point from Thailand? So far, all the kicks have been really great across the weekend. As you see, another good one. Oh, what a contest. It's very consistent, the kick. Uh, just put it in the right spot. Mm. Just give your, uh, your, uh, your teammate to an opportunity to contest. And yeah. she contested well. And look at this, Thailand now with another opportunity mm -hmm. to attack. They're putting on a, a clinic here in the second half. Mm. The one thing I noticed about the Thai women, they never seem like they're like under pressure. Mm -hmm. Even when the pass is bad yes. or things don't go to plan, they, they reset well. And mm -hmm. it's just going to show the the good level of coaching and just the belief in their game plan. They don't seem rushed. Yeah. As I say that though, they did make an error and even it will be a Malaysia ball. Even they fail to get the ball, they will try to recover from the mistake. They will not give up. Now sometimes when you make a mistake, you, you see teams piling on the mistake. One mm. bad pass can lead yeah. to a few, but with the Thai women, once they make a mistake, they have a really good system to yeah. just reset. Okay, let's see. This is that youngster you were yeah. talking about with the speed. Yeah. Uh, she did well to get down there mm. and earn herself and Malaysia a penalty. Mm. Let's just see if Malaysia can string a few phases here and, and find some rhythm and momentum. Ooh, nice little mm. offload there. Oh.
you see what Malaysia want to do. Maybe they don't have the physicality mm -hmm. or the speed of the Thai women, so they're looking to use the offload game yes. to to get forward. They haven't mm -hmm. been. Uh, it hasn't gone well so far, mm -hmm. but they just did, did one successful offload, and they were able to go forward. Now they earn themselves a mm -hmm. scrum. They tried to execute the the plan, I guess. They I actually I saw they tried to make it in the first few rounds, but. Uh, there's uh, some mistake on the hand ball handling. And that's just going to get mm. better as the mm. weekend goes, you know. Mm. Like I think, like you said, it's the first game mm. of the weekend, mm. first competition in a few weeks, right? Mm. I think about three weeks since yeah. the tie, the tie sevens uh, leg. So, you know, the first game is always, uh, it's about finding your feet. Yeah. And I'm sure the Malaysian women are, those offloads, they might not stick in this game, but mm -hmm. I promise you in the next game, they're going to they're gonna be a bit better. Yeah, they are trying to tuning their bodies to the condition of the field, the weather and everything. Exactly. Yeah. It takes some time. Yeah. There's a physical yeah. carry from the time in the two. Earning himself <laughs> and Thailand a penalty. Quick yeah. tap here. Mm -hmm. Look at the speed. Yes. And I was impressed with this number 11 in the first leg as well. She uh, showed some real good speed in the tie leg. And she comes on the field and I think almost with her first touch, she, she goes around the Malaysian defensive score. And she's one of the new player for Thailand actually. And she came from the athletic background. Ah, so she yeah. was originally an uh, athletic. What yes. a kick as well. So she uh, formerly like a track star. Mm -hmm. So I mean, clearly, I mean, she has some speed. Yeah. And that's when it can be dangerous. Yeah. If you give a track star mm -hmm. and you teach them how to play rugby yeah. sevens, just like some of those American players mm -hmm. in the men's series, yeah. they're asking for trouble. <laughs> Just the kickoffs, mm. just yeah. been just the same spot area. again. Similar story with mm. the Malaysian men as well, correct? That, that, that was the yeah, weak spot was the kickoff. So mm -hmm. maybe the Malaysian men's and women's mm. team just just need to tweak mm. their kickoff uh, reception a little bit. Did Malaysia get the ball. Turnover, it looks like double knock-on, mm -hmm. first knock-on by the Thai mm -hmm. player, so it will be Malaysia ball at the scrum. Now we're coming up on the last play mm -hmm. of the game. You'd like to see Malaysia maybe just get that consolation try mm -hmm. and, and get something score mm -hmm. so they can build and, and, and get ready for the next match. Yes. It's a good opportunity here. You're almost up to the halfway mm -hmm. line. It's a very wide field here in Incheon, so you mm -hmm. talked about the, the, the speedy winger. Yes. Maybe they, if they can just get her the yes, ball early and see it. what she can do. Oh. Ooh. And our broadcast clock says we're over seven minutes, but it looks like there's the hooter there. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's the referee's clock and, mm -hmm. and the broadcast clock, so we're going off of the referee's timer. Yes. This will be the final play Let's of the game. Let's sit down and we will play the ball. Said not to put into touch, yeah. but go for one more try. Because and it's that speed yeah. series you, talk, you talked about yeah. before. Here we go, the try from number 11. Come on the field, three touches, mm -hmm. one knock on and two mm -hmm. try. Not a bad outing for her in a couple minutes. Ah, she's been spot on with all her kicks. Kick. Very impressive with her conversions and her kickoffs. This Thai playmaker, and that will be 40 nil, I believe, to the Thai women starting their campaign off here with a great win. Just showing patient, clinical, high skill level rugby. Yes. And for Malaysia, you've been in that, you know, in that uh, locker room before. What do you say to the Malaysian, to your former teammates? Uh, I hope this is going to be like great uh, exposure for them for the next game. Um, just 
be uh, take this as a uh, experience uh, to improve on and uh, what they make the mistake before and to improve more for the next game. Exactly. I'm, I'm sure they can do better than this. Yeah, still yeah. four games left mm -hmm. and always you can always improve your next match. Yeah. So that will wrap up the morning session, men's and women's. So we'll be back with session two with some men's games shortly. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. been cutting, shaping, and painting. We've created strength and beauty time and again. Our machines are made for one thing, the perfect hit. We are the coach, we are the bind, we are the set, we are the squeeze, we are the hit. We are Rhino, home of the scrum.
ليش اسوي منجو؟ بعدهم منو؟ عيساري؟ Good afternoon. We are back with the um, um, the game against uh, UAE against Sri Lanka. So, um, Liana, how was your game? How was your um, commentary? Oh, since it's, uh, it is my first experience, it's so different to be on the field and also to be on the commentator's room. It's totally a whole different atmosphere. Uh, what about you? Because I, I knew that before this year, uh, and you're still a referee, so... How's your feeling? Oh, first of all, like, well, um, like, there's a lot of friends in the pitch, and like, also the referee right now, he's a Craig Chair. I, I'm really, um, really close with him. I also like, I really want to run that pitch, but right now I'm, a, I'm a commentary, so, well, it's a little bit nervous, but let's try to make a good, a commentary. Yeah, let's do it. Our right, first kick off from uh, Sri Lanka, the kick went into the dead ball line. Mm -hmm. That should be a free kick. It's quite deep. We are the first time UAE uh, when they play with against China. They made a, a good, um, good tackles and like, like attacking. They were really brilliant, and also we could I could see that they prepared a lot of times that like they practiced a lot. Look at that, going to the wide, going to the going to the right side. Let's see. Oh, what a beast! What a beast! Very big, and he got the speed uh -oh. too, actually. But oh, he just decided to. Sri Lanka got the ball. Wow. Is that in goal? Uh, in goal dribble? Oh, I think that should be um twenty two because um you will kick the ball into the to the in goal. So that's why I think going for twenty two. Oh, UAE, like, as a first game, when they play against China, they made a great pressure to China, and they made the score a lot. Let's have a look They what can they do right now in this game. UAE got the ball. Oh, nice tackle from Sri Lanka. Going to the right side. Going to space. Oh! They just missed it. Oh, you Sri, know, Sri Lanka got the speed. Going forward, going forward, looking for support, yeah. looking for support. Oh, that was a little bit slow, but they got the ball again. Going to the right side. Are they going to pass out wide? Going to the wide. Yeah, he needs the support. Oh. oh. Making a tackle, make a rock. Now they have to go back to the left side. They got the advantage for offside. Yeah. Alright, let's have oh. a look. Going to the side. Oh. oh. Well, there was a penalty advantage. I think he thought that was his teammate, I guess. <laughs> Alright, let's have a look at what, what Sri Lanka could show us. Well, both teams, they are really good. Mm -hmm. like, sh like, Sri Lanka will. They, did, they didn't play for a long time, mm -hmm. but anyway, like. Going to the middle side, mm -hmm. looking for support. Going to the middle side, can oh, they make it? They yes. made the try. The first try came from Sri Lanka. The Sri Lanka from Anjula Hetiachi. Look at that. Looking for support. And that that supporter, he didn't give up. Yeah, Get the ball. Using the very short space there nice conversion great start for Sri Lanka well at the first time I think UA made a great a great pressure mm -hmm. to Sri Lanka mm -hmm. but also Sri Lanka showed them that well we are not losing from that pressure we yes. could win that pressure so they tried to get the ball again try mm -hmm. to go forward and forward yeah. now let's have a look oh Sri Lanka oh. they got the ball again 
going forward. Oh. oh. No. You you have to they they have to make a chance. Mm -hmm. Going to the middle side. Oh, this is the beast. Let's see. Mm. Nice offload. Going again. Now let's have a look at what they're going to do right now. The player seems can read that the defense line is going up, so he couldn't make the pass. Oh, going to space. Oh, oh, what a nice ball carry. What a nice, what a nice attack. Mm. He's just going to get some air to breathe <laughs> and make the try. <laughs> look at that. Well, if I look at the UAE team, they have a lot of guys who is really, a, they have a big physical, physical physicality. Yes. Yeah, I agree. And they're just going to play with their phys uh, physicality because I know that Sri Lanka have like really good speed, but they are not going to use that as their disadvantage. Nice conversion mm -hmm. from UAE. Mm -hmm. I think there's, good, there's a substitution from Sri Lanka. Now, one minute and 55 seconds remain. Now, the score is 7 all. Oh, this game is really tough. Mm -hmm. oh, there's a kickoff. Get the ball. Sri Lanka got the ball. Making a rug. They have to get the ball out quickly. Going to the wide. Coming back again. Yeah. Going to the middle side. Oh, I think they got the ball. Oh, before that, the referee called for off feet. Now to Sri Lanka going forward again. Going forward again. Now let's have a look what can they do. What they could do. Going to the wide. Oh, what a nice contact. Yes, definitely, I agree about the penalty. Not releasing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, sevens is like, if the opponent gets the ball mm -hmm. about at least uh, more than one second, then just the referee blows for a penalty. Now, UA gets the ball, going to the middle side. Oh, oh. no! Oh, that was a little bit unlucky. Got advantage, knock on advantage. Going to the middle side. Oh! oh no. Knock the ball to the forward. That's a little bit unlucky. Well, I think both the teams are giving a pressure to each, each other. Each other, yeah, I agree. So, so that's why, like, like, each team they miss the ball to the forward. Look at that. Well, it's, it's also a nice tackle mm. from the Sri Lanka, yeah. Anyway, like, just unlucky stuff. Now, ten seconds to go. Let's see who can make a try in this moment. Now there's a hula. Sri Lanka. There's Sri Lanka chance to go for make it a try, but oh, I think there's no problem with mm -hmm. that. Oh, there's no one there to try to make a pass, but oh, did not ball. make it. No, okay. the beast is going forward. Mm -hmm. The beast is going forward. Can Sri Lanka stop it? Mm. Nice support from UAE and going to the left side again. Oh, they oh. got the ball. I think they make. I think they could make a try. Wow! Jog in, jog in. What a nice intercept. I think for this game, it's like the winning or lose mm -hmm. i think it's de it depends on who makes a mistake. mistake i agree i totally agree with you like as you <laughs> played before mm -hmm. like the pressure is like it's really important yeah. right now it's not only on pressure on defense but also on attacking so who gonna make the mistake maybe has a lower chance to win the game well, like, mm. I was uh, a tr translator for a national team, mm -hmm. and the, our head coach always said to the players, mm -hmm. make a momentum, mm -hmm. make a momentum, don't make a mistake, yes. try to keep the ball, yes. try to go forward, and try to give a pressure mm -hmm. to the opponent, mm -hmm. and, like, for example, in the D zone, how to give a pressure in that yeah. moment. 
I think that's the most important thing in this game. Actually, it doesn't matter if you make a mistake, but it's not okay when you like keep repeating the mistake all over again. That's the main thing. I also like um, the Asia Rugby 7 Series, the uh, first tournament was held in Bangkok, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the weather is quite hot. Yeah. Also, Sri Lanka, uh, UAE is quite hot. Mm -hmm. But in Korea right now, well, the as you see, the weather is quite cloudy, cloudy and like it's a little bit, it's getting a little bit cold. Mm -hmm. And also, at, mo um, after three o'clock, it's going to rain, so yeah, the temperature sure the goes down. So that's uh, a huge point to those countries. Mm -hmm. So well, anyway, they have to win that weather. Mm -hmm. Let's see if the teams can make it. Uh, playing under the weather, different weather that they have, like usually they train in their own country. Let's cutting, see, let's see. Shaping and painting. We've created strength and beauty time and again our machines are made for one thing the perfect hit we are the crouch we are the bind we are the set we are the squeeze we are the hit we are rhino Home of the scrum. Now we are back with, um, we are back into the second half. Let's look at let's look at UAE and Sri Lanka. Mm. Will both team make it made a, a great chance, but they made a, a pressure each other. So yeah, as you said, if they can minimize the mistake, the team will win the game. Let's see. As I've said before, like they just made a mistake on the kickoff. Yeah. Maybe they're gonna lose the chance, but nothing is impossible in sevens. Now Sri Lanka, they have to get the ball. They have to play the ball more than UAE. No mistake. Mm -hmm. Let's see, going forward. A little bit of miss pass there. There's no space. Mm -hmm. No space. Good pressure mm -hmm. from UAE. Mm. Going forward again. Limit. Go oh. Going forward. Can they attack on it? Oh. Somebody help him. Yeah, there's a supporter. <laughs> Great pressure by the UAE. I think that was that was a high tackle mm. from uh, Sri Lanka. We're going to the left side again. Going forward. Nice support. They have to use the ball quickly. Going to space. Oh, oh, what a nice tackle from Sri Lanka. Now, now they have to make a chance right now. They have to make a chance right now. Going to the opposite. Oh, going to forward. Going to oh, forward. Oh. All the way, number six. And. Oh, oh, they made a mistake again. Advantage not confirmed. Mm. Sri Lanka. Should be advantage over. Going forward again to UAE. Missed the ball. Oh. Well, still not out. Oh, and yeah, there now we go. Yeah. <laughs> well, right now, like as we look at right now, like mm -hmm. just a few seconds mm -hmm. ago, well, both teams had a chance, mm -hmm. and both teams could made a chance to made a make a try. Mm -hmm. But I think they got nervous. Yeah. And like they just they just need to get patient. Also to like to Sri Lanka, they they had a ch chance to make a try, but at the end, like they missed the ball. So anyway. Like you said, both of the team got the chance, but both of the team made the mistake as well. That's why they need to work on it. Now let's see. 
I think there's going to be a, there's a substitution to from UAE. I expect that there's going to be a change from tactical things. Let's see from the line out. Yeah. 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 can do anything from the line out. Pass from Sri Lanka. Move out to the wide. Go straight to the winger. Let's see the winger. Now going to space. Go to space. Oh. Nice tackle from UAE. A nice support from Sri Lanka. Going forward. Can he make it? Can he make it? Yes, there you go. Number 13 from Sri Lanka. Make the try. Sri Lanka number 13. Mm -hmm. Tarinda Ratrat. Mm -hmm. What a nice support. Now it's really tough right now. Mm -hmm. It's really, really tough. Conversion from Sri Lanka. Unsuccessful conversion. But it's okay, let's see. Are they going to go for more? There is still... Three more minutes left. Well, actually, like when when I remember about the game UA against um, China, mm -hmm. well, they do, they still have a time to mm -hmm. um, make them win. Yeah. Well, let's have a look. If they could do it or not. Oh, a nice kick mm -hmm. from Sri Lanka, and they got the ball again. Nice support. Going forward. Oh, mm -hmm. but it's a little, it was lucky. All goes to Sri Lanka again. Well, I could see that the, the players, play, that that player was not really happy with the referee. Mm -hmm. no, well, as a referee, like well, we don't care about the players. Yeah. <laughs> Got the ball, going to the left side. Going to four, going to space. Can they make Great it? Speed by number nine, and there you go. Another try for Sri Lanka. Well, for me, like the thing is, which it makes me surprising is that well, it was Sri Lanka when they played the game against um against Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Well, 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 Hong Kong is uh, is also the the top level top in level Asia, team, yeah, true. but like. Well, I thought that Sri Lanka got nervous to mm -hmm. to Hong Kong, mm -hmm. but right now in this game, I think they already they got their momentum yep. after the first game, I guess. Yep. Yeah. But for UAE, I think they got nervous, mm -hmm. and well, at the first time when they played against China, that was really perfect. Yeah, it was really impressive game. Nice conversion mm -hmm. from Sri Lanka. There's going to be a substitution from UAE. It's going to be pretty hard for UAE now to chase the score. But let's see if they could make it another one more try here. Now one minute and 24 seconds remain. Mm -hmm. There was, I think there was a uh, knock on from Sri Lanka. Mm. Was the it a knock on? Yeah, I think there was a knock on from Sri Lanka. Now we have one minute. Let's see, um, can Iwi really could win that pressure from Sri Lanka? Nice scrum. I hope they can make it from here. Let's see. Oh, what a nice tackle from Sri Lanka. I think they got the ball. Oh, that was a little bit unlucky, but... 
Nice pressure from Sri Lanka. Great move. Going forward. He needs help there. He's, he's finding a place <laughs> to pass the ball. Going to the right. He's just losing some gas, I guess. Oh, yeah, they could there make you it. go. Can they make it? Can you make it? Oh, oh what a nice tackle from Shulak. Oh. oh, the support just missed the ball. Oh, that was, was an offside. offside. Yes. Yes, that's, that's a definitely yeah. offside. Going to the left Here's side. Her. It's going to be the last play. Oh, oh, last play. oh, oh. was it a knock on? Oh. Nice offload. Oh, there's an injury over there. Ooh! Great pick up by UAE player. Nice try from yeah. UAE. We were like... If you, look, if you got, look at the players, like... Mm. Well, U UAE players, they have a lot of players the, who can support the ball carrier. Mm -hmm. So that's why, like, right now, in this moment, mm. that's why UAE can, they can make the try right now. Mm. Um, congratulations to Sri Lanka, but the sad thing is that there's an injury. I hope that he could get um, get better quickly and could play the game this in, in Incheon. Now the score is Sri Lanka 26, UAE 14. Congratulations to Sri Lanka. And how how was your game? How do you think about this game? I think. At first, uh, for me, I, I thought it's gonna be a 50-50 games, but I guess uh, as as we said earlier, like uh, both team made a mistake, but both team had the chance too. But I guess Sri Lanka minimized the mistake, and yeah, they won the game for this time. All right, thanks so much. <laughs> All right, see you at one uh, one forty-five, and see you at the game of Hong Kong against China. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. We've been cutting, shaping, and painting. We've created strength and beauty time and again. Our machines are made for one thing, the perfect hit. We are the crouch, we are the bind, we are the set, we are the squeeze, we are the hit. We are Rhino, home of the scrum.
Now we are back to Incheon Stadium. Um, right now the game will be the Hong Kong against China. Um, I think this game is, is going to be really tough. So Oscar, why do you think uh, this upcoming game between China and Hong Kong? Well, um, first of all, um, for China, I heard that the government, they put a lot of money to China. So try to develop the Chinese team and also well the Hong Kong they played in the World Series and like they won against Japan uh, well as you saw the, Ch the Chinese team when they played against UAE they made a lot of, lot of tries and like the physical it was really brilliant well I think like this game is good it's gonna be really tough and also there's there's an issue against um, with, well there was an issue China against um, um, Hong Kong. So anyway, I think this can be a really, really tough game. Now, kick off for Hong Kong. Nice kick off. Middle rock. Going to the left side. Look at the speed. I think he's going to be all over. Yes, definitely. That play interfered the guy who's coming to the gate. Now, going to the right side. It was, it's really quick. Going to forward. Can he make it? back inside well, Hong Kong as I said to you they played in the World Series and they show, they're they showing that they have a lot of experience through the World Series good defense from Hong Kong nice pressure Chinese are going to the right side going forward what a speed what a speed look at the speed he got the speed and there you go try for China like, as I said to you, like, like Chinese, they they try to prepare a lot, and government put the money inside in, a lot of money to the Chinese team. So, I think this game is going to be fifty-fifty. And you know what impressed me a lot with this China's team, because uh, as you can, uh, as you said earlier, they put so much money investing on the team. Look at their physicality; they have like the same height, the same, I mean, they are really well built, as you can see. Now, let's have a look. Can Hong Kong make it again? Well, I expect, I expect that they could um, show their, their levels to, uh, to China. Well, at the first, first round, they were the winners, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's have a look. Nice catch from Hong Kong. Now going to the left side. Making contact. What a good balance from Hong Kong. Now Chinese, they have to make a... Oh! Was it a knock on? There was a knock on. Yes. Now for this moment, Hong Kong, they have to win that pressure. Well, as we look at that, this right now, Chinese are putting pressure a lot to Hong Kong. But in this moment, Hong Kong, they have to win that pressure. Yeah. They also need to put a pressure on their attacking towards China. Now there's a scrum. Ball is out. Going to the space. Was it a high yeah, yes. that was quite high. Yeah. I do agree with, agree with the referee. <laughs> Got the ball. Will he pass? Oh, I think he might miss the ball to forward. Mm. Yeah, that was a knock on. on. We were like, as a coach, I think, well, the Chinese coach is going to be get got really angry because, mm -hmm. like, like as you know, when you're a player, when you play the ball in that moment, mm. well, coaches always ask to the players, we have to make a try in this moment. Yes. But if it was uh, just like a, a uh, just just a mistake, like mistake. a knock on, then. The Sometimes coach is going to be really angry. Is this unlucky for the team, but we still need to play on. Referee block for a heads up. Ooh. Nice kick for Hong Kong. Now they got, the Chinese got the ball. Yeah. Now they have to play the ball to the opposite. As you can see the Hong Kong defense, they just rush up to the Chinas. Oh. Rock. Going to the left. 
Oh, I think they can make a try. What a great shot pass by the China players. Another try for China from number five. Well, the sevens is only about the game. Who could play? Who could attack the space? Mm -hmm. Who could get the ball? Who could uh, win the pressure? Yeah. Who could pit, who could possible will? That's it. I totally agree with you. Well, right now, well, Chinese and Hong Kong, both of them, they had a, they felt the pressure right mm -hmm. now. But in this moment, mm -hmm. Chinese, they won the pressure. Mm -hmm try to attack the space, yes. uh, get the ball, mm -hmm. try to make a momentum. Yeah, the China coach looks so happy. Now let's have a look. Mm. Another kick off from China. What a nice kick. Oh, they missed the ball again. Chinese got the ball. There was a knock on from Hong Kong. Hey. Well, like, well, at the first time, both teams had a, a small mistake. But right now, Chinese won their pressure. But I think Hong Kong didn't win their pressure yet. That's Still try to, like, um, fit in the game, I guess. They couldn't like um, read the game well, and China just takes advantage towards them. Now it's going to the side, going to the right side. Mm. Look at the Great speed. Great stab by number six. Oh, can he make it? Uh, oh, before that. Let's see what's the referee the call. AR, yeah. AR call for a touch, I think. It looks like a. I think. Because the lake is already outside. Oh, there's the, there's no Timo and the AO call for the touch. Well, I, so, I also think that there's a touch definitely mm. because before the ball goes to the ground, mm -hmm. I saw the legs are going to the outside. So the touch for, to Hong Kong. At that moment, I guess the AR plays like really important role. Is that a mole? Or is it? Oh, there was a knock on. Well, like for me, like mm -hmm. as a referee, we I also had an experience about that moment. Like, mm -hmm. for example, there was a there was going to a try, but mm -hmm. I. How uh, did you handle that kind of situation? If you are not sure. <laughs> well, um, first of all, when I. When I'm a referee, I ask the AR, mm -hmm. but it depends on like about his levels and mm -hmm. like, but anyway, like I sometimes go for a TMO. TMO is gonna be the best choice. I think there's gonna be one more play. Ball goes to China. Let's see if they can make a try again. Advantage to Hong Kong for an Australia, I think, sir. Going to his side. See, Hong Kong can do something from here. Now they have to win the ball. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh I think. Right. Yes, definitely, yes, I it's agree. A yes. Great rock over by China. It was a little bit unlucky mm -hmm. that Chinese, well, they tried to get the ball, but yeah. the the referee called for a hands in ground, but I do agree about mm -hmm. that decision. There's a touch. I think it's gonna be the last play before the first half end. Well, I think Hong Kong made a momentum again. Mm -hmm. Oh, I there's a free kick for a one meter offside, I think so. Hong Kong ch chose the scrum. Well, I hope that Hong Kong could make a momentum in this moment. They have to make a try right now. This is the last opportunity before the first half end. Let's see. Nice ball going to the left. Going to the side, going to the space. Can he make it? Where's the supporter? 
Going forward. Oh, oh. what a great run. Nice try for Hong Kong. Will Sevens right is right under the post. Will Sevens is only this mm -hmm. one. Like it's only like catching the ball, mm -hmm. going forward, mm -hmm. looking for a support. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. And this moment, Hong Kong, as I said to you, Hong Kong made a, a good tactical. Mm -hmm. Tactically, they made a, a good try. Now it's a uh, break time for mm -hmm. two minutes. So for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, second half, uh, break time. Mm -hmm. What got, what you actually, like, what do you guys speak with the uh, players? Uh, you mean between the players? Yes, among the players? When, oh. when you were a player. Basically, we try to look upon what we've done, um, any mistake or uh, any good things that we've done uh, in the first half. And we try to improve, to talk about on how to improve for the next half. Well, as a referee, mm. like as mm. you see, uh, I should ask you. Yeah. yeah. What about you, as a referee? What were you like talking about during the break time? Oh, like for us, like, mm. like especially for sevens, we, we, we go to the middle side mm. over there and mm. just ask, like mm. for example, like, is, was there any issues? Mm -hmm. Was there any issues? Mm. Like, and that's it. Yeah. Mm. Do you have any cramps or anything? Yeah. <laughs> was it like that? Yeah. <laughs> You know, sometimes like the referee also could get the cram yep. kind of things, yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a little bit cold. Yeah. Since Retina's 1979, mm -hmm. we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking. Since the weather is quite pretty cold, and then the rainy, I think the team needs to, uh, really needs to warm up like a little bit more. We've been building, assembling. Well, for the players, it's gonna be really tough. Like mm. as I said to you before, they they just played from Bangkok, and like there's a lot of countries which is really hot. Like for example, like Hong Kong or like UAE, Sri We've Lanka. But right now, Korea right now is really cold and, and it's raining right now. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look. We could win that with a kick off from China. Nice tackle. Oh, they got the ball and they won the tackle. Supporter, but there's a roller player. Yep, definitely that's a penalty. I guess after the first try uh, for Hong Kong, I think they are going to do their best to like win this game. But let's see. Nice kick from Hong Kong. Mm. Well, like for me, like mm. as a referee, like mm. well, I always say to players, please stand over here and stand over here like that. Mm -hmm. But when the players don't listen to my word, I sometimes get embarrassed. Anyway, <laughs> so the Hong Kong got the ball, going to the space, nice supporter, going to the left side again. Oh, look at that. The Chinese, they're giving a pressure a lot. And they escape from the pressure, going to space. Oh, oh I think that's going to be high. Michael. Yes, definitely, yes. The hands went to the neck. That should be penalty for my kick, uh, high tackle. Now it's the D zone. Ooh, Chinese, they have, they have to win that pressure. There's going to be a substitution to from China. Hey. All right, time is on. Nice competition. The Hong Kong got the ball. Nice support. Coming back inside. Looks who's there to support. Oh, there's going to be a penalty, I think so. Offside, yes, definitely, yes.
Are they going to kick again? Now they have to they have to make a try. Right now Hong Kong is seven and mm. China's ten. Try to do something there. Nice contact. Mm. Going to the right side. Into the space. Where's the supporter? Great defense by China. Going to going to the middle side. Can he make he can he make it? Oh, well, like as I said to you, like mm -hmm. Sevens is only like attacking his space. Yes, and, and trying to win the pressure. Yeah, he's using his physicality to just go through the defenders. Conversion to Hong Kong. The scores now is 12 to 10. Nice kick. Mm -hmm. Now the Chinese isn't under pressure. Mm -hmm. But you know what, anything can happen in the seventh game. And we still have three more minutes left. Anything could happen. What a nice kick for Hong Kong. Oh, he missed the ball to the forward. It's going to Hong Kong. The remaining time is 2 minutes and 50 seconds and I think for this moment mm -hmm. the the team who wins is like who doesn't make a mistake mm -hmm. and who, the team who makes a, who makes a mistake mm -hmm. that's that team's going to lose the, lose this game so mm -hmm. I totally agree with you We could see that like Chinese and Hong Kong they both team are giving a pressure to each team so mm -hmm. go to the left side what he's, what he's going to Good do? Dummy. Balls out. I think there's an advantage for offside. I think so. Oh, that was just a knock on him. Now two minutes to go. Substitution from Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Well, in this moment, Chinese, they have to get the ball. Well, even if like Hong Kong has the ball, mm -hmm. but they have to push the scrum and give the pressure to Hong Kong. Well, Chinese, they they gave it pressure to Hong Kong a lot, mm -hmm. and then uh, Hong Kong made a mistake. So yes. Chinese have to make that chance to make to make the to to win this game. Yes. The Chinese trying to like get the ball. Oh, look at that strength. Eh? Make a rock, going to the side. Kane. Going to forward. Oh, great oh, handoff by number two. What a nice try mm -hmm. from Kane. Look at that. Going forward, just. What a beast. Well, I think like, well, the first time, as I said to you, like, well, Chinese government, they try to invest a lot to that, to the Chinese team. And also Hong Kong, they prepare a lot. And also they had the experience through their World Series. Yeah. And Hong Kong, they do, they are showing us that they do have experience through the World Series. Mm -hmm. so. But right now, we'll, we have 30 seconds, mm -hmm. seconds, but Chinese, they do also have a chance to win yes. the game. But even if Chi the Chinese got the opportunity to score a try, but I guess they couldn't make it since the score right now is 19 to 10. Now time is on. Going to his space, looking to his space. Where's his border? Oh, Hong Kong got the ball. 
and Hong Kong kicked the ball. But the Huda didn't blow up. Yeah, no. I think the players thought that the Huda, Huda was... They thought it's already over, I guess. Uh -huh. That's why he kicked off. Kicked out, yes. Now, now we Huda can hear on. it, yeah. Well, sometimes like players make a mistake like mm. that. But sometimes as a referee, mm. we also think that... Uh, I think the game is over, but anyway, like... Mm. We also get confused because of the players. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. The scrum. I guess it's going to be our last play. I think if Hong Kong gets the ball, I think this time around they will kick out, kick out the ball <laughs> <laughs> to just save their energy for the next game. No scrum. Ball's out. Yeah. As I told you, yeah, they kicked out the ball. It was a great game by Hong Kong and China. Yeah, it was really, definitely, it was really, really a good game. Mm -hmm. Well, first half, it was really tough. Yes. Um, both, of, both of them, they made a, they gave a pressure to each team, and we didn't think that who's was going to win. But anyway, like, congratulations to Hong Kong. The Hong Kong 19 and China is 10. So we'll be we'll come back here at two ten, which the game will be Korea against Malaysia. Right, see ya. All right, welcome back to uh, Namdong Stadium here out at Incheon, South Korea, where we welcome the South Korean men's team along with the Malaysian men's team for game number 11. So far, we've seen some brilliant rugby, and I expect uh, a lot from this match. Uh, you're joined in the commentary box with myself, Simon Walsh from New Zealand, 
and my good friend uh, Oscar from South Korea. Oscar. Hello. Good afternoon. How are you right now? I'm good, mate. I've had some uh, delicious lunch. I, I joined the players downstairs. I had a bit of a break, and I managed to get myself a bit of a feed, uh, some beautiful Korean food. I saw uh, a lot of the players in there getting some uh, much-needed nutrition after playing some games this morning. So we're ready to kick off. Uh, the weather has deteriorated slightly here in Incheon. Uh, this morning the sun was out and it was quite warm, but uh, just put a jersey on myself, it's pretty cold. Well, right now, we'll, I was a, a, a translator for a national team for three months. And the, when I look at the team list, there's a, a new place from the high school and also from um, university school boys. So let's have a look at what we could, do, what we could do right now in this game. Good start from Korea. They kicked off and managed to regain position. So they're on the attack right away. Going down the right-hand wing there and recycling the ball quickly. Is Malaysia up to the task to defend? Now, looking like they're starting to get some space out there. If they can get the ball out, uh, no need. The big man powers over. Look at that power. His name is Han gong and like He's the most powerful guy in Korea, I think so. Han gong -gu, does that tra translate to the human tank? Because it looks <laughs> like that's exactly what he did there. He just ran over about four or five players. Yeah, I, uh, he's lucky he scored that because he might have had some very angry uh, teammates out wide if he, <laughs> if he didn't score that. We call that the... Uh, a little bit hungry, but uh, that hunger paid off and he managed to get across the line. And it's in a good position for the kicker, so made it easy for his players. Kick off for, uh, from Yu Jae Hyuk. Let's see if he can make it or not. Oh, it was a little bit unlucky. Yeah, good strike of the ball, but it's just gone across the front of the post. I don't think the wind is... Uh, it's, it's a little bit of a breeze out there, but not much to contend with. He's probably a little bit disappointed in that kick, but a uh, good start from Korea. Only a minute in and they've already scored. There's the coach's face. I, I saw him down there having some uh, lunch. Uh, had a chat to him, asked how he was going. He said the boys are doing all right. They've got a few things to work on. Uh, so it looks like they've changed up their tactics a bit. They kicked a bit different. They, they won the first kick where they went short and then they decided to go long. So I'm not sure what the decision making was there from Korea. And they've been penalised for going over the ball, not letting the man to play it. Now it's time for Malaysia to have a go on attack. They're attacking from within their own half. See if they can get out. Malaysia probably want to play to their strengths here. Uh, they look a little smaller than the Korean men's team. Like I mentioned before, the, uh, the Korean tank who scored. There's a few big boys out there. And the Malaysian team are looking slightly uh, slimmer. So they want to use that to their advantage. And Yep, there we go. Quick ball, quick tap, quick go. Oh, just got him. Managed to hold on just by, the, uh, by his jersey there. And uh, within that tackle, he tried to offload, but unfortunately, Malaysia have uh, lost the ball forward, so it will be a scrum to Korea. Well, for this game, like, there's a, a new player who, who is from high school and also from the, from the university. So, well, the thing is that, well, as I said to the to the people in the the um the X game, like I said to them, like the sevens is only for attacking to a space and also win the pressure and I expect that those young players could win that pressure from from the from Malaysia. Good ball at the back from uh, Won Young Park, uh, the halfback from Korea. He's managed to get out the back but there is a lot of pressure coming from this Malaysian team. They've come forward and managed to pinch the ball away uh, but they have turned it over. Korea have managed to get over top of that ball and a man has cleaned out it looks like the ref's called cleaned out from the wrong angle. You have to come from behind the most foot and he's come from an angle Penalty to Korea, yeah. Look at that rain in the background there. It was dry as a bone this morning. Now it's starting to really come down out there. So this is going to put a test to these these players now. A uh, bit of wind, a bit of moisture. That ball is going to be slippery. So they're probably are going to struggle to get the ball as wide uh, as the previous games because that, that moisture on the ball is going to make it harder. Maybe shorter passes, maybe more running up the middle. As I say that, the Koreans are using the wide passes to go out wide. So they, uh, they're they backing their hands here. Oh, look at that balance. Doesn't lose the ball. You can see how quickly the Malaysians are up off the line. Uh, probably getting a little, little close to offside there. Luckily, the ref hasn't caught anything. But they're starting to open up a bit here. The, the Koreans managed to get behind the advantage line. Starting to go forward. Communication quite well for the Malaysian men's team. They... Uh, Oh, unlucky there. So the problem with Sevens, he fall off one tackle, leaves a very big hole, and the Koreans managed to go through here. 
So at number five, uh, Hyun Sung Kim has gone right under the post. Hasn't put the ball down yet. Yeah, finally does it. Does a bit of a does a bit of a teaser to the Malaysian player to look like he's got a chance. But look at this, uh, unlucky. I think there may be not only to do with the pace of the Korean player, but it's quite wet out there too. So it's very hard to hold on to these players. Well, for me, I think Malaysia is going to be really tough because Malaysia right now, their temperature is really quite hot. But right now in Korea, it's really cold. We're also, the Korean players is, is also, they feel it's going to be really cold. But compared to Malaysia, like, Malaysia is going to be really tough to get used to in this weather. Mm, as the rain comes down here in Korea, we may see, uh, like I mentioned before, it might be a little bit difficult to hold onto that ball. Korea now with a 12 to 0 advantage over Malaysia and we have about 1 minute 50 seconds on the clock. Can Malaysia come back and at least uh, get a, get some points on the before the half time? Kick off from South Korea. Yeah, it's Korea. interesting, Korea, Korea's gone for that long ball again. Uh, the very first kick off they went short which they recovered and since then the last two have, have gone long so uh, I don't know why you'd change your game plan if you were recovering the balls and then you're not recovering them now. This gives a Malaysian opportunity. They're looking to go out wide. A bit of a goosey step there. Korea's not falling for it. The tackle's taking them to ground. Now they reset and go wide again. Still playing within their 22. Bit of an ugly pass there. It bounces along the ground, but they cleaned it up. Trying to break through. The Koreans are up for the tough. That ball's just popped wildly out the side. Referee's called play on. He's managed to knock it through. Look how, how much he can slide on that ground there. It's definitely that's a not really simple. Oh, you got to be careful when you tap the ball when it's moist. Oh, the ref hasn't caught anything. I think they might have got away with it, the South Koreans. And they're looking to attack now. Is he supporting his own body weight? He's looking at the referee. The referee's looking at back. This sometimes can be a grey area here. And the referee's judged it in favour of the Koreans, saying that they uh, never got a chance to play. Starting to attack now. They're going right through the middle. Starting to fall off a few tackles here, the Malaysians they have to be careful. And here comes a bit of raw power right through the middle. That's uh, Song Dok Choi right through the middle, just powers over the last defender there. Boom, boom. Oh, I thought the Malaysian player might have had him. Maybe fatigue setting in a bit here, because it looks like he's gone in for the tackle, and then just uh, that last little bit of effort from the Korean player managed to break off and go through. Well, as I said to you, like, I was a manager for a national team, and I know there's a best player. Sung, Sung Dok Choi will actually like he always make his effort every time he will he always go to the gym and work out every time so that's why as we look he when the when Malaysia players made the tackle he he doesn't go to the ground he always tried to get the ball go to the forward so that's why he could make a try in this moment he definitely looks like he goes to the gym looks like a man that you would not want to meet in a dark halo way look at the size of that gentleman got some broad shoulders on him and that, that jaw Looks like he's ready to just run people over and smash people, like he has just done. So the Koreans were very happy uh, with that score at the moment, 19-0. Uh, wondering if we will see such a high-scoring game with that weather starting to deteriorate. The Malaysian men will go in and discuss what they need to do, what tactics they need to change. Possibly they have fallen off a few tackles. There's probably one area they want to tighten up. They want to make sure that uh, when they make a tackle, the player goes to ground because... In sevens, it's very difficult to cover if your inside man doesn't doesn't put you put the players down. So, uh, what do you think the Koreans will be saying at halftime? Are they happy with how it's going? Well, I think we'll they do feel happy, but will Charlie wants to make a pressure to opponent again? So, well, actually, like when I was translating that moment, Charlie always says to the players, do, just give her pressure, give her pressure, just do the basic things, just do the like ball carrying and go to space like that so i think charlie's going to order to the players just go to space just attack the space and get the ball go for the support and like do the basic things just to let our viewers know at home who you're talking about we're talking about charles uh charles low or charlie low who is the uh, uh south african born uh coach of the korean team uh we may see him on the screen again but we saw him before in the coaching box and he's been a, a massive uh gain for the korean team he's been very good for them so the Koreans are dominating at the moment. Uh, let's see if the halftime talk for Malaysia can help uh, bring them back into the game. Uh, the Koreans are using a lot of their power players to just smash up the middle to go through. Um, there's been times when they could have gone wide, but they haven't actually needed it. So they still have that ace up their sleeve. Well, look at that body. I think we'll, I gave up with the manager at maybe about October, uh, September, but 
since that moment, I think they went to the gym a lot and. So let's see what the uh, Malaysians do with the restart. We talked about the restarts for the Koreans. They went for a short one and then a couple of long ones. Maybe with this wet weather, they, they feel they can contest them. Oh, here we go. They're trying to put it into a bit of space, which is probably quite smart with that, with that wet weather. You can see the players are starting to slide around on the ground now. So they want to make sure they can control this. They're going to try to run it out from their own 22. The Malaysians are up for the task. Korea recycling the ball well. A bit of a show and go. Trying to smash it over. Ooh, yeah. Good, good competition there in the tackle. What's been called here? Uh, yeah, got to roll away. Now some of the big boys are trucking it up. There is a lot of holes out wide. I think uh, the players outside, the man running the ball, will be screaming for it. Look, you can see out there that they have a numerical advantage. And he's up for the little kick over the top. Is that the right option? Well, we might see it here. Oh, bit of gas, pretty. bit of football work going here. Nah, it's always the risk. The bounce of the rugby ball can go either way. And in this case, it's gone in favour of the Malaysians. Maybe out of a bit of, bit of frustration there that the Koreans have gone over and not let them play. You can just see that weather is really, really coming down out there now. Well, as a referee, like, well, I also ref in this moment, but for me, like, I sometimes miss my whistle. I always try to catch my whistle. Anyway. Maybe we should give you, give you a whistle here, mate. You can start blowing the whistles up. <laughs> <laughs> so the Malaysians have gone for a kick. And with that weather... Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the lineouts go. They can be very, very hard to catch those high balls when they're coming in uh, on a lineout. Will the Koreans contest? In the previous game, the Koreans opted not to go up. They opted to wait for the ball to come down. Now, this time they've gone up, but that looks like it's going forward. Yes, the referee has seen it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe he didn't see it. <laughs> He's got a bit of a cheeky grin. He thought he was away. Yeah, as a, I've, I've played hooker a few times myself, and those, those opportunities come few and far between. So when you get the ball and you run away, you can see the try. You, the, the last thing you want to hear is the referee blow the whistle for you to come back. So we will come back for a scrum, though. Well, for me, like, as a referee, like sometimes if the players try, try to challenge me, then like I try to just ignore that, but it's quite tough to me because they're really big, and also when they look at me, I'm really, I sometimes get scared. <laughs> It looked like a bit of a cheeky challenge, though. I think he had a bit of a smile on his face, and the referee both had a laugh. Yeah, like I said, as a hooker, you don't get many opportunities to get wide open running ball like that, so he would have been uh, almost at a meat pie at the other end. <laughs> almost was ready to go down and grab one. So here we go. We're going to have a scrum here. They're going to watch the uh, the footing here. If there's a bit, quite a bit of pushing in the scrum, it may... Oh, what's the call here? Delayed? I think it's an early push. Early push, maybe. So the referee's called a free kick. The Koreans are taking it quickly. They'll look to go wide. Malaysia are getting across well. Malaysia are really struggling to put these Korean players to the ground. They're tackling them, but they're, they're still staying on their feet and managed to get a few good good leg drives in. Malaysian players caught offside there. Can't get out. Stuck. Okay, they're going to settle down a bit here, the Koreans. They know that uh, their ball, once they speed it up, can be quite hard to control. So they're going to try a uh, something a bit more structured. Now have a midfield scrum. Which gives them options both sides. They may put either one of their power players or their speedsters on either side, and then it's going to be very difficult for the Malaysians to defend from this, this, this region. So number four is uh, Wang Yung Park will look to feed the scrum. Oh, look at the weather. I think that it is a heavy rain. So a cool time off here. Uh, what is the ref calling? Have we got some substitutes coming on? Yep, okay. Getting some fresh legs out there. It's been quite hard. There have been a lot of tackles going in. So the Malaysians are looking to get some uh, fresh legs. This guy looks so fresh. His hair's not even wet. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> These guys here look like they just come out of the bathtub. And he looks like he's just you know, ready to go to the club with that hair. Oh, well, within, within 30 seconds, it's nice and wet, though. Yeah? He's ready to go. Oh, no, the, the number nine. There we go. The, uh, sorry, number two. Who is uh, Mohammed Dim Zanundun. Okay, Korea will look to feed. Malaysia have to be on their toes here with defence. So far, so good. Uh, oh no, the hole opens right up. Number 10 is Jae Hyuk Yu. Manages to cruise between two players. Sometimes when you carry the ball in two hands like that, you've got a man on the outside, the defenders don't know where to go, and in the end, he just slices right between the two of them. There's our man we're talking about there, who is uh, 
Charles Lowe or Charlie Lowe from South Africa. Oh, he's finally got a smile on his face. I think he's really, he's really happy right now. Maybe he likes, he maybe he likes rainy weather because uh, uh, the previous game where they sort of struggled to get their set piece going, um, uh, unlucky there, bounce off the post. That's the second one we've seen off the post today. But that was a good kick from out wide, just unlucky not to get it on the inside of that post. So now they've subbed off uh, Jay uh, hyuk -yu, and they've brought on some fresh legs for Korea as well. A uh, bit of a switch and play here. They're going to go to the other side. And it is floating in the air, but well taken by Malaysia. So they're going to feed it out the back. Malaysia looking to try something new. They're going for a kick over the top, trying to get some... Get him behind the Koreans with a bit of wheels. Ah, nice sliding. And the cork here is... Yeah, you have to release the man once you go on the ground. The Koreans are going to go quick. They're up 24-0. I don't know if they're in a hurry. There's only a minute, 10 seconds left on the clock. Surely they want to probably... Yeah, see that... They probably wanted to slow that down rather than go quickly. And uh, as a result of not being settled, they will turn the ball over. The remaining time is 1 minute and 44 seconds. Mm, it looks like the ground clock is 1.40 seconds and just looking at the clock on the screen, uh, there is a slight difference. So it looks like we probably have a, a 1 minute 30 where it says 45 on the screen. So there's a little bit more time. Uh, Malaysians now have probably their strongest uh, attacking opportunity of the game. And with that weather coming down, they may be just as slippery as the Koreans. So if they can get Get some good ball out to their, their backs. They may be able to go through some holes in the Korean defence. And it's looking like a tight head. Uh, the Koreans have hooked it back. And, oh no, I think he looked up before he passed the ball. Uh, he had the plan running through his mind, but as a result, he has dropped that bar of soap <laughs> that's come out the back line. Yeah, uh, unlucky, mate. Yep, it's, a, it's that kind of weather where you really have to tuck it under your arm, hold on to it, make sure you have it nice and tight before you offload. Oh, it's gonna be really, really slippery. Yeah. Well, like the weather is really like, as we could look, like it's 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 a heavy rain. And, like, well, I could see that some players put something on their hands. Do you know what that is? Looks like tape. Maybe that's for their fingers. <laughs> Malaysia will get another opportunity here, and this time, no, they they tried to do the same thing, but the career as the referee has seen it differently this time and they managed to get the offload here they, they're running into some of the bigger Koreans and getting held off the ground but managed to get that to ground looking for support now the Koreans are coming through putting a lot of pressure on this Malaysian attack now they look to go wide have they got the numbers they do but the Koreans are coming across well a little inside ball and can he hold it oh very well done from the Malaysian men and they managed to get they managed to get something on the board, uh, a bit of a consolation, because uh, this probably is the last play, but a very nice play by the Malaysian guys. Yes, yes, good communication, good following, and a nice try in the end. Well, I'm a little bit surprised that well, Malaysia, they don't give up, they just try to get the ball and just try to attack their space and try to make a try. I'm really impressed to the Malaysia team. And they should be able to convert this. It's right out in front. This man has some very fancy boots. You might see that. Bright orange. Uh, they definitely kick his boots. And uh, well done to Malaysia for the last play. They managed to get on the board. Nice try and a good conversion. Hard work out there in this weather. But uh, the final score, 24-7. Uh, to 7, uh, Very convincingly won by the Koreans. Uh, used a lot of their power and uh, played well as a team. Uh, these guys will go inside and maybe have a... Might be uh, hot chocolate or coffee weather, I think. I don't know if they want water. They want something, uh, maybe a hot cup of tea. What do you think, mate? Well, recently I heard that they got the new manager and then I ordered to him, please give some uh, good stuff to the players. And I expect that I expect that, that, good, that manager will get uh, will provide a good coffee or a good chocolate. And whatever I think the other thing is, um, that they, they, both these teams have games coming up this afternoon. Uh, have they got fresh jerseys or are they going to have to put a wet jersey back on again? Well, I think... Um, they might have an extra. I will. I expect that they have an extra jerseys, but sometimes they put on the jersey which is uh, used. This. Uh, I hope we have a dryer at the stadium because that's. This, uh, I've played in many tournaments where you take your wet jersey off and you get nice and warm, and then everyone looks at you and they say, "Time to get back out in the field," and you put that cold jersey on. <laughs> it's not a not a fun feeling. Yeah. But uh, yeah, some good running, some good uh, decision making from the Korean team, and uh, very well done to Malaysian guys to stick in at the end and come back. So we'll take a break in the commentary and we'll see you again for the next game.
All right, welcome back to Incheon for the next game, which is game number 12, and it is the Japanese men's team versus the Philippines men's team. As you can see, the weather conditions have not improved, and they continue to deteriorate as that rain really, really comes down. So I wonder if the, how, which team is going to benefit from this, because I know it does get uh, quite wet down in the Philippines, but in Japan it also gets quite wet. Have these guys been training for these conditions? So uh, you joined in the commentary box with myself, Simon Walsh uh, from New Zealand, and just to my right, my partner from South Korea, Oscar. Ah, oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Well, for me as a referee right now, well, what I'm thinking is that well, there's gonna be a lot of mistake for handling, and also as you asked about the who's gonna be who's gonna have a benefit for uh, for this weather, but for me, I think um, well, I cannot imagine that who's gonna be benefit for it. I, I cannot imagine it but anyway like the kick off from Philippine ah they've gone for a deep option which is quite a good idea in this kind of conditions but maybe it's gone too far they might have overcooked this uh, but they managed to keep it in play and that ball managed to roll over so the Filipinos uh, as we saw when they played the Koreans they have got some interesting tactics they did some interesting line out uh, moves and malls but uh, the referee didn't know if he called that. Didn't look like he actually tapped the ball properly there. <laughs> it looked like it looked like an old school touch of the foot there. But referee says play on. Japanese going on the attack as we saw in the earlier game. Very aggressive on the attack. They are not holding anything back. They don't need any warm up. These guys. They just go straight to the straight to their work. Trying to clear out those rucks. They know the Filipinos are trying to contest in the in the breakdown. Well, as we've seen in the previous games, a little look up. A little look out the black back line, had the plan in his head, but the ball was not in his hand. So, knock on by the Japanese. Get out of jail for the Filipinos. So, still nil all, only after a minute. Filipinos will get the ball back. Well, as I said to you, like the weather is, there's a heavy rain right now, and there's going to be a lot of mistakes from the handling. Well, we cannot imagine that who's going to win this game. You can see uh, earlier on the day, there was a lot of gel out there, a lot of hair wax. They had some people looking really cool but now everyone has the same haircut <laughs> wet here going down now the Filipinos have looked to go blindside it was going open then they switch back coming back to the open the Japanese are coming up very very strong in defense but the minister hold on to the ball the Filipinos oh a bit of a hospital ball there but a nice little tap over the top it might actually play it pay off for the Filipinos here he's going inside decided there's not enough room on the outside there now they've got the numbers can they move it yes they can has this man got the gas it is number three, Jerome Rudder, who's got the ball and he's going to feed it back out. Not quite enough to go around. The back line is sort of disintegrated here, but they've still got players at the right. Enough number 10, uh, Eden uh, Henderson has got the gas. He looks like a man that is normally running straight, not, not stepping around players. And he's managed to push that back. Japan have restructured themselves. A bit of a breakdown of communication there, but the referee is saying it's okay, play on. Japanese guys might have find themselves offside there, but the referees haven't called it. They're coming up very, very flat. Looking for a power play straight over the top. Hands are all over that. They managed to get that back. He's decided to kick it through. It's such a surprising kick that even his teammates didn't know he was going to do it. But looks like they were playing advantage, so it didn't matter. And they're going to get the ball back. Well, after the kick, the Japanese. They hold the player who is running into the forward, so that should be definitely a penalty. What will the Filipinos do here? They had some very interesting lineouts in the first game we saw from them. They probably got a few more tricks up their sleeves. Uh, at the same time, I'm sure the Japanese did watch that game when they played the Koreans, and they will be ready for it. The Filipinos did a couple of driving malls the first game. Is this what they'll go to here? With these weather conditions, it's probably not a bad option. Well, I think like. Well, we cannot imagine who's going to win this game. Like, as I said to you, like, there's going to be a handling miss. So let's see who could try to win the pressure. That's a bit sloppy out there. It's going all over the place. So even the referee, uh, yep, he's got his hand out. He's going to advance to the Filipinos. So it's been a knock-on from the Japanese, which means they'll the get a free, free roll of the Can dice. And yes, well done. Straight through, powered on those legs. Uh, kids, if you're watching, at training, often the, the coach will tell you to pump those legs. This is exactly what's happened there. Two Japanese players on him, pumps the legs, pumps the legs right underneath the sticks and managed to get the ball managed to get the ball down. Well done, Philippines. Well, I'm a little bit surprised that we'll we at the first time Philippine 
play with it against Korea, and but like, well, I do support for Korea, but when I look at the Filipinos, like the tacticals and like powers, the physical, like everything was really perfect, and I could feel that they really, really prepared a lot for a long time in their country. And uh, as you look at the first for the first try, they made the try, and really expecting that they could win this game. So there we have the uh, Philippines coach, uh, is that Daryl Sua Sua, watching onwards. Not a lot of emotion on his face. The man is very focused. Uh, maybe he's the brainchild behind some of these tactics on the Filipinos. And we can see there number three is being called. We don't know what that is yet. Is that another long ball? Looks like he's going to go maybe a little shorter this time so he doesn't overcook it. No, it's still nice and long. The Japanese are ready for it this time. They've got a man back there. And they're going to look to counter-attack. They don't want to be the next ones to score. Switch of play, going back the other side. Looks like they've got a bit of a uh, advantage over there, but the man has decided to come back in. And we're going right back to the other side. So far, they haven't managed to make a lot of ground. Just a few metres. And... The referee's called the Filipino guys for offside, so we'll tap and go again. Go into space. Nice right, big hit up up the middle. Sometimes you just want to hit up the middle, settle it down again, reset. Uh, you got to give your communication pretty sharp when the weather's like this. Got to make sure you know what's going on. Unable to offload in the tackle, which means the ball will go to ground. And holding the call. Filipinos quickly over that. Yeah, referee right on it there, right and close. So an opportunity gone bigging for the Japanese players. They didn't even manage to get out of their half, so they're still attacking from inside their half. And the Filipinos are going to their strength, which is their line-out. Uh, the last one they didn't manage to recover because it was a knock-on by the Japanese player. So let's see what they do here. Now we have 15 second, uh, 50 seconds to go. and Well, I think Philippine, like... If we just look at the four or six minutes, I think we they can make a try again, and let's see that the Japanese can they make, can they win the pressure from the Filipinos. Here we go. They've gone a bit longer here, but again, breakdown of communication. But they've managed to uh, recover. They managed to pick it up. He's by himself there. He's got to need a ground. Yes, he's got to need a ground. So they'll need to release the player and a little pick and go and very nicely done. This is our big man that was on the wing earlier on. So uh, he gets around the field, number 10. Uh, number 10, who is uh, Edlin Han 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 Hernandez. Uh, Hernandez, he was on the wing earlier. Now he's riding close. And he's probably more comfortable and close because he's nice and powerful and managed to get around the side there. Yeah, and so he was really clever. He, when he picked the ball before that, he saw the space and he went to the space and he made the try. He was really, really clever. He looks like a powerful runner on Hernandez there. Managed to get over. So if they convert this, the Philippines will go in with a very... Let's see now. Oh, he missed the conversion. Ah, so just away. But still, that's a 12-point lead to the Filipinos. They go into halftime. I'm sure the Japanese, being the powerhouse of rugby that they are, will be a little disappointed with that start. Maybe the weather's got to them a little bit. Maybe it's just the, the pressure and uh, the good gameplay by the Filipinos. But uh, hopefully the Japanese manage to have a chat at halftime and then come back out again. Even there, we can see the coach's face to the Filipinos. He is very focused. He knows what he's got to do. The job's not over yet. Yes, they've had a good half. 12 points up at halftime is very good, but they've got to keep that momentum going. Can't let off. I'm sure the Japanese are really wanting to get back into this game as soon as possible. Well, like Philippines was like, they just need to get patient. They just need to win the ball and just play the ball and go to the space and try to get the momentum. Yeah, some of these power runners from the Philippines have been going really well. And I think uh, maybe the discipline's let them down a little bit, the Japanese. They've had a few penalties uh, go against them. Uh, we talked about the ball handling in this weather and uh, making sure that you catch the ball before you try to offload again. And I think the Japanese have been guilty of almost running the play through their heads before they have the ball in hand, looking up, and that, that's caused a few drop balls. Uh, that means opportunity has gone begging when they could have been down the other end scoring. But plenty of time to play. This is Sevens Rugby, anybody's game. Seven points to go. We're looking for the restart now. So Japan will look to start the second half. And that will be number four, Chikara 
Morita. He's just looking around, making sure everybody's ready to go. Plenty of tape on these guys' fingers. You think that's for the uh, wet weather or just because they got sore fingers? Well, for me, like uh, when I have a chat with our Korean players, some players say that they just want to put it on. No, there's no reason. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a fashion <laughs> thing, yeah. eh? <laughs> and that restart is looking a little short. Yes, and the referee has seen that. Uh, unlucky there. Uh, that's the that's the problem. Sometimes you go for that nice high ball on the tens. It gives you gives your jumpers an opportunity to attack, but you run the risk risk of coming short where which is exactly what's happened here. The, uh, the Japanese kicker has come short by about uh, probably 30 or 40 centimetres, but still that gives the ball right back to the Filipino guys on halfway. Now they chose their scrum. Now, let's look what, what they could do right now. So they've got uh, a centre field scrum and a referee's playing advantage. He's gonna call the penalty there. I think he called for a no binding. Maybe the breaking early. Uh, there's always that temptation when you see the ball coming out the back. As uh, there's only seven players on the field, so when you're in the scrum, you, you're not you're not much used to your players defensively. So you really want to get out of that scrum as soon as possible. But yes, you run the risk of breaking away early and getting penalised, which is exactly what's happened in the situation. Now the touch to Filipinos. Well, I think when I look at the Japanese players, I think there's a new players coming to the squad. Here we go, that right to the front again. They're using that front ball, but the referee has caught, I believe it didn't go five meters. Uh, so mm, again, <laughs> sometimes you when you do these risky plays, they don't come off in this stage, it hasn't come off. Japanese opportunity to really attack now. They've got the man out wide. Oh, fingertip stuff there. Managed to get him just on the jersey. Oh, that slippery bill. That slippery pill is not sticking. They've lost about 10 meters. They'll reset again. Nice pick and go. Looking for the offload. Oh, very good to pick that up off the ground. Fingertip kind of stuff. Yes, definitely going to the side, yes. Uh, number eight from the Philippines, penalised there. Uh, Donald Coleman trying to come through the middle, but he's caught himself on the side, and the referee's seen that. Now trying to go down that same channel, that blindside channel. Defence so far holding up. Little, little pick and go, and he's found himself right in the open space. Number 12 there from Japan, which is Takamasa Maruo. Sneaky little... Cheeky try down the side. I think the Philippines were all lining up to wait for that ball to go wide, but the man, the, like a thief in the night, sneaks down and steals one for Japan. And the Japanese coach there looking at his uh, playbook. Maybe that wasn't in the playbook. Maybe he's, he's writing it down now. He's like, that wasn't too bad. We'll use that again later. Uh, kick not looking so good. It's hard to kick it from out there, but he's uh, pushed that right across the front of the post. Now, the remaining time is 3 minutes and 50 seconds. Now, right now, Japanese, they have to focus and they have to make a momentum right now. So only seven points in it. Japan right back in this game. Anybody's ball? Oh, I think there's been a knock-on. Yes, uh, knock-on by the Philippines. Uh, opportunity now for Japan. That's what happens when you put a nice kick up. Put a lot of pressure on the catcher. Plenty of time on the clock. Plenty of time. 3 minutes, 30 seconds. That's an eternity. Japan will look to get this ball wide quickly. Also to the Philippines, they have to focus and they have to give a pressure to the Japanese. Bit of a cheeky uh, head rub there from the Filipino player on his Japanese counterpart. Oh, got ah, ball. tight head. Got to win your own ball. Those are coach killers when you have your own scrum and then it's bang banged away. Oh, referee's going to call it. You can't do that. That's definitely a penalty. Oh, I believe that should the, be a yellow card. Uh, I believe the Filipino, Pino, uh, sorry, Filipino player thought the Japanese guy was running in front of him, but uh, he's pushed him in the back, and uh, rightly so, just as you called, Oscar. Yellow card. So, Philippines now down to six. So, with the advantage now, will Japan be able to go around the outside, or will they... Uh, I think I think maybe a bit of frustration settling in for the Filipino players now. They're trying to get over the ball, but they uh, must let the player release the ball first. 
So now the Japanese players will look to go wide. Carry the ball in two hands. I think he may have gone for a kick there, but he possibly just dropped it. Yeah, before they, they missed the ball to a forward. Will Japanese right now, they have to make a chance right now. There's only six players right now, so they have to make a momentum. They have to make a, they have to make a chance and they have to make a score right now. They only have a two minutes. We have a couple of Filipino players down, both of them grabbing at their ankles. I wonder if this is... Uh just from the, the pace of play, that the, the legs are starting to get quite sore. Is that cramp setting in or maybe a twisted ankle? Uh, with the, the sevens, uh, there's a lot of running involved and sometimes you can get starting to cramp up. And with this weather cooling down, it's not going to be good for the muscles and the legs. You may have to get some substitutes running in. That clock's ticking away. The Japanese won't uh, be too unhappy about that as they're ahead. Yes, the substitutes are starting to come now. Give these guys a bit of a break. Well-deserved rest on the side there. I believe that was the try scorer Hernandez going off. Free kick to Japan. Go quickly. Philippines are also rushing out of the line. You risk leaving holes behind, just as they have done now. Oh, what a beast. Number four over the ball. Is he supporting his own body weight? It doesn't look like he is. Look like his, look, looks like his knees in the back of the player. Yes, referee has called not supporting his own body weight. And the Japanese now are going quickly. Now is their opportunity. With one minute left in the game, they are looking to go wide. And I'm sure they're well aware that they will need the seven points to be able to get in this. A try is not good enough. They'll need to convert. But the Filipinos are up to the task. And they're over the ball with some of their power players. They need to rip it out. They'll want to wind this clock down now. There's no hurry here from the Filipinos. They're looking at that clock. They're looking at the scoreboard. They're telling everybody, go on, let's, we've got a job to do, and we only have another 40 seconds to get it done. Yeah, they just need to make a touch, and they just make, make to, like, just use the time, just make it slow, then they could take the game. Yeah, not a lot of urgency from the Filipinos to the line out here. <laughs> They've got to be careful here. The referee might call the time off. But no, these, they've, they've managed to get there now. This is probably looking to be the last play if they manage to hold onto the ball. They'll want to wind that clock right down. They do not want to turn that ball over. There's a hand in there from a Japanese player. They're going backwards now. Last few seconds of the game. Oh, well the done by the Japanese. So this will definitely be the last play of the game. It's all tied up in there. They might want to go quickly while there's two Filipinos tangled up in that mall. Now they go wide. Ah, uh, very nice clever kick. kick. Will it sit up? It is. Is there a man coming across? There he is, inside step. There's a lot of defenders there, which means there's space out wide. Will the Japanese players be able to move it? Oh, uh, that nice was a make-or-break tackle. That could be a game winner, that tackle. If that ball managed to get out one more. Uh, yes. That is definitely a game winner. Those boys owe that man a beer because he single-handedly stopped that ball getting out wide. He made the decision to come in and take the tackle and they'll just bang it out. And obviously disappointing for the Japanese, but the Filipinos are jumping for joy because they put their heart and soul into that game and a well-deserved win. Final score, 12 to Philippines, 5 to Japan. Like, as I said to you the first time, there's a heavy rain and we cannot think that who's going to be a benefit for this weather. But, like, I didn't expect that. But Philippines, they tried to win the game and tried to give a pressure to the Japanese. Will, will, they, will Japanese, they did will, but winning the pressure, I think the Filipinos, they did will like, more than the Japanese. You can see what it means to the players. Look at the smiles on their faces. Lots and lots of smiles all around. High fives, everybody. Big hugs. Yes, boys. Nice job. Well deserved. It's going to be a huge history for the Philippines. Yeah, I think the Japanese are definitely uh, the dominant force in rugby in Asia, so they will be disappointed. This might give them a, a bit more fuel uh, for the next game so they can come out, but um, they were probably their own worst enemy at times with some of, the, some of those drop balls. Um, but when you have the opportunities, you have to capitalise, uh, which they didn't manage to do in that last play. Purely because a, uh, a Filipino player decided to come in and make that, that try-saving tackle, pretty much. So we will have a break here in the commentary box, and we will see you shortly for the next game.
Welcome back from a uh, wee break that we've just had. We welcome uh, our viewers from the Asia region and from around the world. And we are on game number. Where are we at now on the list? Game number 13, which is uh, Hong Kong women's versus Sri Lanka women's. So both these teams have had some games earlier on. And they'll be looking to come away with a win with this one. So the Sri Lanka women were on quite a receiving end of a high score so hopefully they've regathered themselves and are ready to go again so the weather has actually started to clear up a little bit the rain isn't coming down as much it's still quite wet out there but the rain has stopped so this should allow for some very good running rugby so you have myself in the commentary rock simon walsh and to my right we have a national malaysian player Please introduce yourself. Uh, Liana here. Thank you, Simon, for being with me today. Let's see if we're going to watch like some to great um, game from the Hong Kong and Sri Lanka today. All right, Hong Kong straight into their work. They have pushed it out wide and some very good carries. The Sri Lanka women are holding on, but this good lead drive pushing through. Now they're looking to go wide again. The ball's going right across the field. Spread no. out wide. No gaps out there yet. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, bite my tongue. No <laughs> gaps, and then she goes right around the outside. So it looked like the Sri Lankans had the, the defence there, but uh, they just kind of didn't let close down that last half a metre, which the Hong Kong uh, women's managed to slip through. Look at this. I thought the touchline was going to be her friend, but in the end it was not to be. So number eight from Hong Kong, which is Jessica Eden. Goes away and puts it right underneath the six for our first points on the board. She just tried it out to the try line area and scored the try. So what would you have done in that position? So you have a winger coming down the wing. Do you try push her inside or you try push her to the outline? Or how would you make that tackle? For sure, I would just push her outside. Push Definitely. her outside? L legally, hopefully? <laughs> legally, of course. <laughs> Big stiff arm. Oh, no, no, none of that today. All right, we go to restart again. Hong Kong ahead, 7-0. Only a minute 30 gone. So they'll restart. And they've gone for a longer kick this time. Sri Lankans cover it nicely. What will they do here? Just a quick straight up the guts run here. And referee's going to call that. Uh, yes, holding on. Tap and go. Hong Kong want to move this ball quickly. They look to go wide now, possibly to their speedsters out wide. They've got an extra man out there if they need it. And it's a number eight again. Bit of hot feet, bit of, a bit of dancing shoes, and yes, nice in the corner. Again, that is Jessica Eden again. She's gone from one wing to the other. She's getting around. Yes, it was a great move, great uh, footstep by her, and it's quite a try at the end of the, the corner flag there. One advantage of that <laughs> rain is when you do go in for a try like that, it's nice and slippery, like the, like the old slip and slides we used to go on as kids. So I think Jessica's having a little bit of fun out there. And a bit of a bit of a shocker on that kick. She probably it's, it's one that we, she probably doesn't want to see again on the replay. Kind of just went off the side of the foot. But uh, Hong Kong do lead 12 nil. Some eager eager players on the bench ready to get on. Do they know they're on the big screen? <laughs> All right. After two minutes to play or two minutes to play, we restart for the third time. Hong Kong go again. Trying to cover that nicely. Now, what can they do with the ball? They haven't managed to get out of their own half yet. So looking for a bit of a, uh, a trick play. Nicely, they've screwed the ball now. Going back across the other side. But there's plenty of defenders out there. They decide to go straight up the middle. Ball is secure there. Going back now. Need to get the go forward. Need to get some go forward. Ball. Oh! oh. What a great no, I, think, I, think, I think they heard me. I think they heard me from up in the booth. <laughs> Oh, and a little offload too, and very good hands to cover that. Sri Lanka now looking to pounce on this opportunity. They've got some ball. They want to catch the uh, Hong Kong defence napping. Now, the referee's going to call that. Yes. Holding on by the looks of it. No, 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 sorry. Sometimes these ones can be hard to know which way the ref's going to call that. And I think she's gone for uh, not being able to let the, the attacking team play the ball. So hands in the ruck have been called and penalty ball there. We do have a woman down in the background. So Sri Lanka are playing with six players. And she's back on her feet now. She just sort of bounces back into the back line. That'll be good for him. Another penalty, not rolling away. So 
Hong Kong are trying to attack that ruck, but in doing so, they've given away a couple of easy penalties, meaning that Sri Lanka have been able to get out of their half. Sri Lanka tried to uh, get things like slow down and try to make some move there. Let's see if the winger could do anything. Uh, she's just gonna go for a rock. I'm coming back inside. Yeah, they're, they're going left and right, but nobody's really breaking through the defense. Uh, and the movement there? Yeah, she's rolled in the tackle there, so double movement. Hong Kong ball. Back to the, uh, the, the try scorer. Nice offload. It's going to pin her ears back and go for that corner, and she's going to be uh, nice to her kicker, and she's going to bring it round a bit. Uh, the last Sri Lankan defender coming in there, stopping the Hong Kong player going right underneath the post. It was a great tackle by Sri Lanka, but um, Hong Kong just have like, support all the way from the first until the, the end of the try. Yeah, so Sri Lanka turned that ball over by doing a double movement there. So once you've tackled and you've gone to the ground, you must uh, you have one one move to place the ball, right? Yes, yeah, true. So what she's done there is she's done a roll, rolly, little roly poly, uh, <laughs> trying to gain an extra few centimeters. But in doing so, the referee has is called it a double movement, yeah. and penalty has gone to Hong Kong. And Hong Kong have used that opportunity uh, to their advantage and gone right around the outside and scored a try there. Yeah, I guess. After the rain, they just love to roll on the grass, I guess. Yeah, maybe having a bit of fun out there. <laughs> yeah, restart again. It's a same. It's a copybook restart. Going to the same position again. Sri Lanka are doing the same tactic. They're going to strike, go through the middle. And now they're going to reload. Hong Kong are really trying to put pressure on them. Oh, that ball kind of floated in the air. Referees deemed it a knock-on and calling advantage, but no advantage there. The ball rolled back to the Sri Lankan women's team. Yeah, Sri Lanka should pass earlier to the winger, but she just uh, hesitated to do that. All right, now we've got a midfield scrum. Mm -hmm. So what would your advice be here? Midfield scrum to the uh, Hong Kong women's. Are they going to go left? Are they going to go right? Mm, let's see. The blind side looks like quite clear, but let's see. If they want to be oh. on the safe side, they will go inside. Ah. Yeah. So maybe maybe there's a plan to yeah. put a player out there, and yeah, and doing yeah. Here we go. Yeah. So they've done the same thing again, giving it to their speedster. The same who is, Yep, player. same girl, number eight, Jessica Eden. She's starting to rack them up. She's she's going to run out of fingers soon to count her tries on. She uh, keeps getting scoring like this. Yeah, it was a hat trick for her for like the three try by number eight player, Hong Kong. Yeah, high fives all around with Hong Kong. They're very happy with that. That pushes the score out a wee bit. 22 to nil with 10 seconds left on the clock. That kick is away. We may have time for a restart here. It looks like there's only a few seconds left on the uh, game clock here at the game uh, on the field. Uh, there goes the hooter. So the referee will take the restart. This will be the last play. Can Sri Lanka do something with this ball? can catch the ball clearly I guess they can do something out of the few seconds left so the Lanka have been taking those balls very clean off the mm -hmm. kickoff that ball looks slightly forward mm -hmm. yes a bit of an NFL pass there from the Sri Lankan ladies <laughs> maybe that's their new, new tactic <laughs> but uh, yeah that's gone forward and I believe the referee has called it for half time we will go in score is 20 points uh, to nil to the Hong Kong women's team. We'll be back again. Uh, we have a little break as well and let these girls have some water.
All right, welcome back for the second half of the Sri Lankan women's team versus the Hong Kong women's team. And kicked off again, straight into the Sri Lankan arms. They've secured that ball. They will be looking to get some points on the board early so they can compete in this game. And that ball is still a little slippery. We've had a little knock on there. Uh, claps all around from the Hong Kong women's team. They know that that pressure has really uh, forced that error. So we we'll have a scrum feed to the Hong Kong women's team. And just a quick note, uh, we have the referee there who is uh, Krista Bell refereeing, and she's been doing an excellent job so far. Some very good calls from her. And a little inside, outside go, going right around the outside, and balls down there. Very well done to number seven, who is Ka Man Nam from Hong Kong. She's gone bang, bang, and left her player. Uh, and just go for a mm. try. The, old, the, old the old ankle breaker. The old ankle breaker. I would have sprained my ankle by doing that. No, I sure, I'm sure you would have got her. <laughs> Those are nightmares, though, when you get done like that, because all you think about is, oh, I should have gone outside, should have gone inside. But, yep, uh, we have to review that later on. So, again, Hong Kong very early with the scoring. They're on the board, 25 to nil now to them. Uh, they'll come back and restart and go again. So we had word earlier that uh, the number five from Sri Lanka is actually probably one of the more senior players on the field, and she is uh, Thanuja Rakodi. And oh, I've just been told that she has a couple of kids back home. So super mum out there running the ball around and also has the kids at home. So uh, if my mum's listening, it's, it's still not too late, mum. You can get out there and have a run around and uh, have a go, but uh, she's probably going to disagree with me. So, yeah, well done to her. Go out there, still, still going hard. Uh, and uh, just, as, just as I've spoken, uh, the number five from the other team has broken through the line and she's gone right through and scored just behind the post. Another try there from Hong Kong. Determination on her face. She can see the defenders coming, but uh, just bites down on that mouth guard and pushes on through and goes right through under the sticks. And she'll look to convert her own try. That is number five from Hong Kong, Hoi Yan Pun. And... <laughs> Successful conversion. Unsuccessful conversion. There's something must be uh, must be something wrong with those posts today. We've seen a lot of balls bouncing off those posts. She must be so tired after the try, I guess. Yeah, yeah. she couldn't focus. But it's okay. At least she made something for the team. Did you ever take the conversions when you were playing for Malaysia? <laughs> nah, -uh. I I don't think I can do it. <laughs> so it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot yeah, of pressure of on your course. team. Not not so much pressure when you're up 30 nil. So it's probably not too bad. But when they're doing the tight games, they can be those pressure kicks. Now, the Sri Lankan team looking to go on the outside. Uh, it's trying to string some phrases, fra phases together. Uh, but that ball, yes, very slippery. And just as she tries to tuck it back, a little knock on there. But the referee's actually called it playing on the ground. So it's a penalty instead of a, a scrum. Hong Kong are looking to go wide, looking to get it out to their pace makers out there. There's those steps again. Nice little play. Yeah, offload in the tackle. And, yeah, in the end, well done. I think this is the uh, same woman who scored earlier on. And uh, from Hong Kong is Georgia Rivers. She's gone right through. Managed to fend off a couple of last-effort defenders from the Sri Lankan team and gone over for a try. Because of the physical, uh, physicality, like Sri Lanka needs, like, two two players to get down of one of Hong Kong players so they just lose the chance there on the uh, defense part. Yeah, I have to agree with you. At the same time, you can't run without your, sh your legs, right? So um, uh, you'll see some of the, the smaller players in, the, in, in rugby, they are coming in, cutting you out from under your legs. Uh, even the biggest players can't run without their legs. So maybe the uh, Sri Lankan women are going to have to go a little lower on some of these bigger players to be able to cut them down. Uh, if they are going high, they are making the tackles, mm -hmm. but it's giving Hong Kong the opportunity to offload in the tackle, which we have seen uh, them use quite well. Uh, and that's why the, the last couple of tries have come from. So change of tactics here. They've kicked to the other side. And Sri Lanka going to go in here. Yeah, a good carry. Well, well done to stay on his feet. And she's managed to get, get over the advantage line. And staying within that same blindside channel. Now they look to go wide. Hong Kong up very quickly to make the tackle. And the three play on. And then she's saying uh, the Hong Kong women's team are not letting her play the ball. 
tap and go now. Oh, carry, well yep, that's why you carry it in two hands like that. Leave the defender. Uh, just as we, we jinx the players there. So, yep, penalty gone the other way. Turnover and Hong Kong aren't waiting around. They're gone. Uh, look to go wide. Same step again. Inside, outside, boom. This time, number six, Stephanie Cho Ki Chan goes right underneath the sticks. I guess all the Hong Kong players, they have the really nice footwork, like big hands for them. Really, it's really helpful for them to go all the way by themselves. Yeah, I think even if they do have the speed or they do have the power, they're using their footwork uh, very, very well. A lot of times they, they, they're starting to jam in when they're going along the outside, and that's, that's really uh, causing the Sri Lankans to bite in. As you saw there, the Sri Lankan mm -hmm. defender bit in. Once she bits in, it's really hard to turn out again, so the, the Hong Kong players are going around the outside. I totally agree with you, Simon. Let's see for the kickoff. Just one minute to go in this this game. Uh, so far, very dominant performance from Hong Kong. Uh, we're waiting for Sri Lanka, hopefully, to get some points on the ball. But doesn't look like it's going to happen this play because the ball has come back on the Hong Kong women's side. They are looking to go through and add to their big tally of scores. They've gone back a long way here. And oh, it's our first little kick through we've seen. There's a lot of hands going across there. And <laughs> Whoa. Such a great pick up by number five and scored the try. But like a, looked like a bit of a car wreck there for a while. We didn't know what was going on. The ball was going all over the place. But in the end, number five from Hong Kong, Ho Yan, Ho Yan Pun comes away with it. And as she scores... And an unsuccessful conversion. Just 10 seconds left on the clock, so we might get one final kickoff here before the referee and the full time whistle goes. How do you keep motivated when you're down by a large score like that? You, how do you, how's your feeling in the team? You sort of. you got to really keep your. I don't know, but I will just try to do what I should do, but I will hope for the. A referee to just like uh, blow the whistle to end the game. Well, she's blown the whistle, all right? But she's given a penalty to the team, and she's given a second one to the team. The referee is. Uh, oh, looks like there's a bit of cheek going on here. She uh, a smile from the referee, and she gives a yellow card to the Hong Kong women's team. Gives her marching right orders. The last moment. Let's see if Sri Lanka can do anything with like seven against six. Yeah, they do have an advantage now, and mm -hmm. today's been quite clean. We haven't seen a lot of cards. Uh, so not many cards, so that's one of the few ones we've seen. And Sri Lanka looking to go around the outside. Does well to stay in. She was dancing with the touchline for a while there. Is, is the referee going to say she's blocked it off? No fair contesting. So Hong Kong will get the ball back. Now they are down a man, but they will still try to attack. They still want to play. As we look at the clock, it's, uh, it's still going. They won't make it here 10 minutes. Now that ball is bouncing. Still in play. <laughs> Hong Kong aren't finished yet. They could just kick it out. They're 47 points up. This is, this is how much they love playing rugby. Honestly, the ref is calling I play on. Feel, I would just kick off the ball. But I guess when you're playing, you did not hear anything outside. Maybe you doesn't realize it's already. And there it is. Yeah, there. <laughs> Some very tired bodies out there. I think the only person not tired was the referee. She's just got a smile on her face. and she, I think she's enjoying herself more than the players. She's having a great run around. Great, uh, uh, you don't often see a referee smile when she hands out a yellow card, but there was a big, big, big cheeky smile as she gave the card. Maybe, maybe she knows these players so well that... Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> but uh, uh, excellent rugby there from Hong Kong. A uh, little, probably a little disappointed uh, that Sri Lanka didn't manage to get some points on the board. Uh, they've still got another game coming up, so they'll they'll regather, they'll have a chat. Um, it's always a learning curve. You know, what doesn't kill you makes make you stronger, hopefully. Uh, but Hong Kong, again, yes, very dominant performance from them. And uh, particularly this player we see on screen here, number eight, who was uh, Jessica Eden. She had an excellent performance. Uh, some very good tries, very convincing running around her, her players there. Looks like she's hardly breaking a sweat, too. She's I guess three try from uh, the full time spot was made by her. Just all by her three try. Mm, some very good tries and some very good passing ball. So the communication skills uh, from the Hong Kong women's team, like moving that ball very, very quickly. So they, they, they uh, must be one of the strongest contenders in this, this tournament. And uh, yeah, that's what we talked about earlier, that little uh, 
cutting inside and then bang back outside leaving the defender in no man's land almost the old ankle breaker they call it an ankle breaker in basketball but it's similar in rugby too when you uh, commit your player to come inside and then you go back outside yeah some very good running well we'll leave you there in the commentary box and we'll be back again for the next game Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Incheon, uh, to the Asia Rugby Sevens. And now we have game number 
14, which is the Chinese women's team in the red versus the Kazakhstan women's team in what I would call a... Turquoise, I guess. Turquoise. Yeah. It's a very, um, very fresh-looking colour. A bit of yellow in there too. So both teams are coming off wins earlier on today. Uh, the Chinese, a very dominant performance against Sri Lanka. And Kazakhstan with a, a very good win uh, as well. So both teams undefeated, both looking for a, another W for this one. So we'll have the Chinese team start us off. Uh, in the commentary booth again, myself and my very smart and knowledgeable Malaysian sevens player next to me. Yeah, Lena here. Thank you, Simon, for welcoming back. Let's see how's the kickoff going to be. High and very high, very nice one. Mm -hmm. Referee deemed that not to go. Oh, no. High tackle. High tackle. I believe mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be the. Uh, didn't go 10 minutes, but he's called a high tackle there. Uh, so it's going around the shoulder. So a bit of relief here for the Kazakhstan women to get out of their half. They've gone for the kick. But a bit of a wobbly one. The Chinese women looked like they were going to take that on the full. Kind of got lost a bit. The, the lights are now on at the stadium, so maybe uh, the ball may have got lost in the lights there as it came down. So what can we expect here from the line-outs? Good attacking opportunity for the women, but... Was one side at line out. Not straight <laughs> is the call, which means a scrum has been called. I believe the option is either a free kick or a scrum, and they've uh, gone for a scrum. So yeah, a scrum feed to the Chinese woman. Yeah, they'll be disappointed with that Kazakhstan because uh, you don't get a lot of clean ball uh, from set play like that. So to lose a line out off a, uh, a not straight ball is, is never good. And you're giving the ball back to the opposition. They went for the blind side. Mm, cheeky little run down the blind there. And Riff is saying that Kazakhstan want to have infringed and not let the Chinese players play the ball. Now they look to go wide. Oh, very nice hands there. Very nice fingertip kind of stuff. Oh, I would have dropped that one, but uh, yeah, very well done for the Chinese woman to hold on to that ball. Now they want to resettle. They want to resettle again. That line, that defensive line looks really good. I don't know who their defense coach is for the Kazakhstan woman, but they've done a good job. A push in the back there from the Chinese. And has it been called? Yes. Uh, so you can't push a player in the back. Even though the temptation is there, you can't do that. So it'll be a penalty, penalty to, Kazakhstan. to the Kazakhstan woman. <laughs> what do you think they're going to do here? I think it'll line out, kick to the touch? I think they're going to go for a line out. Let's see. Kick the line out there. Ah, that is a costly error, very, very costly error, giving the ball back and the opportunity back for the Chinese to start going on the attack once more. And going through a hole, hanging on just by the jersey there. Great tackle by number five. So they're going out wide now. Is it their speedster? Who's that with the ball? Going back inside again. Number two, coming back round. Looking, just probing, just probing, just testing the defence here. Slightly flat ball, referee hasn't seen anything. And they're giving it to the winger, who's number 11, Ji Kuang Lu, who's going to go right round under the post. Plenty of wheels on her. She got the speed. This ball here, mm, well, mm, maybe back out of the hands. It does look like she caught it, definitely in front of the player that threw it. So maybe unlucky there for Kazakhstan, maybe a little lucky there for the Chinese team. But uh, anyway, points are on the board. And it now is 7-0 to China. So now it'll be up to the Kazakhstan woman to try and come back from this. They uh, have, have blown a few opportunities. Those penalty kicks, uh, the first one, they were lucky that the Chinese woman didn't manage to catch it. But the second one was a gift giveaway to the Chinese player. Oh, unlucky there. I don't think she was expecting that. It sort of yeah. came back to her and just out of the corner of her eye, she had, a, she had to grab at it but missed yeah. it. 
I think being a tall player, when the, when the ball is right down by your ankles, they're, they're the hardest ones to pick up. I agree with you. And definitely number four, who is uh, Zhao Wang from China. She is looking like a big, tall piece of timber there. She's one of the tallest in the team, I guess. So now China will want to upset the scrum. They want to give them a clean ball, and they're trying to contest here. That's what they're kicking it through. But on the ground there, the Chinese managed to pinch it there. That's number it 10. Uh, Yao Yo Gu has managed to steal that away. There you go again on the attack. They're looking at each other. Everyone's trying to figure out what, what they should be doing. And in the end, just tuck it under and go for a good run down the field. And uh, yes, out to our, our tall lady at the side there, number four. She's going up. Just tipped her ankle, managed to get her. A resettle. Kazakhstan defence line still looks quite good. That bit of a mismatch here. Bit of a mismatch here. Yeah. Number 10 is Yao Yo Gu goes over for the try from China. Yeah, she's carrying that ball and having the player outside her means that the last defender is in two minds. Does she come in and take the ball or does she stay out and take the last defender? In the end, she kind of lunged in and, and ended up missing. So... Yeah, even though she didn't pass out wide to the the uh, extra attacker, having that having that person out there definitely uh, helped her with that try. Conversion is unsuccessful. Yaya Gu was, uh, I mean, like from the first leg, she was one of the key players for the team, I guess, and I think she's going to be just doing her best on this coming game and to to do the best for the team. Mm, agree, earlier on we saw her yeah. do a very good steal actually in a tackle. Restart now from China. They got caught a high tackle before, so this time they go nice and low. Very good hit. Kazakhstan managed to offload and get it back. Now with the reset. And they've gone for a little kick through here. Problem is there's not a lot of chases and speak of the devil she's back there again to clean up for the, uh, the Hong Kong uh, sorry the, the Chinese team yep and uh, I guess they just want to release from pressure in their own territory that's why she kicked out uh, forward so the, the ball was lost in that tackle mm -hmm. lost forward which uh, means they can either play the line out or the scrum and I believe the referee has actually not given them the option. He's decided that it's going to be a scrum. So the scrum, and normally the scrum is a option that has a much higher percentage of getting the ball back, whereas the line out, the opposition probably has a, a more a better chance of getting it. So it's probably to the Kazakhstan women's advantage that they will get a scrum here. Kazakhstan can do something from our from this scrum. So this will be the last play. Yeah. So Kazakhstan won't be able to win the game, but hopefully they can redeem themselves and possibly get something on the board here. Yeah. So they'll look to go wide. A quick defense up from the Chinese. And Reese in the middle. Reese is playing advantage. They saw a hand in there from the Chinese women's team. They've, they've knocked it forward. You'll come back. No, it's not a it's not a it's not a scrum advantage. It's a penalty advantage. Not rolling away is the call. Tap and go. Oh. And unfortunately, sometimes when the pressure's on, the, that ball. They just like, they should come down for a while because they got the possession actually, but they just want to try to get the try, I guess. But unfortunately, it was a knock on there. By mm. So, a bit of a uh, anti climax for that last play. We were expecting. Kazakhstan to go on the attack, but uh, the final play is a knock-on, which a referee then calls. Oh, sorry, half time. I apologise. <laughs> Looking at the clock, yeah, so it calls half time. So it's 12 nil at half time, and uh, we have the Chinese team ahead, 12 nil.
Here we go, ready to kick off for the second half. We'll have the Kazakhstan women kick off. Um, if you are watching this on the YouTube channel, we can actually see the comments coming through. I see a lot of support for the Kazakhstan women's team there. We have a Go Kazakhstan and a few Kazakhstan flags there, so nice to have you guys watching. Uh, if you are on there, please drop a message and we'll read that out and uh, maybe give you a bit of feedback. So now, Kazakhstan women tap and go. They get that back. Just getting a bit of feedback from my me watching that blink actually, so we'll just turn that off. Okay, here we go again. Kazakhstan throw a bit of a ball to no man's land and it flies away out the side of the air. Maybe one try from there, but unfortunately the ball just went out of the field. Okay, so we have China to throw to the line out. Oh, no. It's a scrum. So, no. <laughs> must have missed the whole play altogether. There we go. It's a Kazakhstan feed to the scrum. So something must have been a hand in there. So Kazakhstan to feed. So they still have an opportunity here. And they are in a good attacking position within the field there we go very very nicely done nicely wrapped around there leaving the Chinese defense wondering what's going on and then she throws up possibly a V or a W or a <laughs> something up there throws up a symbol great move by number 12 yeah. and scored a try very nice, like a, little, like a hot knife through butter, through that defense, slices through. The W sign is the signature of the players, I guess. And that was uh, number 12 from Kazakhstan, who is Ludmila Shiria. And a successful conversion, so game on, 12-7. Only five points separating these two teams. Yeah, I guess Kazakhstan could have the chance to get like uh, to be on the same uh, score as China. Yes, yeah, so and now we go back again inside the 22. Is the Chinese team? They want to get out of here. They won't want to camp down here too long. And they've managed to run it out. And yeah, good ball around the outside, going quite high. Be careful there, and the referee is going to call that holding on. So they've given the ball back to the Kazakhstan women. Now they have an opportunity to level it all up or possibly go ahead if they can get a converted try. They're going to go back to the same tactic they used before, which is the scrum. A very good tactic to use. Um, people may wonder why they're not just tapping the ball and going because once you go to a scrum, the defensive team have to bring four players in. That means out on the field, there's only three players left. Lots and lots of space out there. They did this for the first try. They sucked in all the defenders. That's where the hole's starting to open up. Whereas you, if you tap and go quickly, often the defense is already re ready and set. It's a smart play by the Kazakhstan woman. Let's see how it goes. What would you have done in this situation? Would it have been a tap and go? Try under the post? If I were there, I will go for tapping. Room. Because <laughs> for me, I just want to catch the advantage of uh, them being offside. That's what I always do. So this time, no holes. Well, there were, were, there were no holes, but... Uh, it's managed to keep it in. Oh, it's just like dancing along the side along there. And, but it's actually probably would have been better to go out because now the Chinese have run away with it. And... Oh, what Talk a about a turn of events. Run by number one from China. So the Kazakhstan woman tried to keep that in, but in doing so, the ball has bounced in the favour of the Chinese team, and they have managed to clean that up. And it's been Hong Tin Run who's gone all the way, tucked that ball under, taken the hit, and just gone across there for the try and you can see how much it's it's sucked the life out of her she needs a she needs, needs some, some water, yeah. water i wonder if she's looking to the sideline for a substitute or she's going to go back on so that actually gives the chinese a 10 point lead which means now the kazakhstan woman will need to score twice what do you think do you think kazakhstan will have the chance to uh go over China? Well, Kazakhstan have been looking really good when they had ball in hand, uh, but they have been probably their own worst enemy. Uh, that try there came off a Kazakhstan mistake, and before they've thrown the ball and it hasn't gone to hand, if they can clean up uh, their mistakes and keep the ball a bit tighter and then play their game plan, I think there's still an opportunity here. 
Two minutes and 15 seconds left to play. Ball is up in the air. Kazakhstan take it cleanly. And they'll look to yeah, go to game plan. Starting to go wide. Change of direction there. Running back into the traffic. Yes, running back in the traffic. And the Chinese have managed to get in over the top and take that ball. So will they look to wind down the clock a bit here? Or are they going to go try for the jugular and get one more try? And on the outside and inside ball. And yes, number 12 uh, China is Ying Zhao. And she goes under probably uh, the nail in the coffin for this team because that will push it out and straight for the try. with 1 minute 25 seconds left on the clock that pushes it out to I believe 15 points mm -hmm. which means Kazakhstan would need to score three times uh, not an impossible thing to do but with a minute 10 seconds it's very improbable which means if you need three more try it could be like for every 30 seconds you need to score a try. So probably a little bit of pressure off the Chinese team now. They could probably start to have a little bit more fun now that the pressure of uh, winning the game is off them. But for the Kazakhstan women, they are not going to want to settle for that. That's a, a scoreline they're probably not going to be happy with. They will look to try and get down the other end and get some points on the board. The China just make some substitution for the player. Yeah, fresh legs, probably resting some of the key players now that the game is already in the bag. Yeah. Uh, get some of the subs on, get them, get them some on the uh, so It's been lost in the tackle there. It's gone backwards, but the China Chinese have now got it. Weak and the oh, a little hot step there. Number six going straight through the middle. She will have too much gas. And that is Yu Sun from China to go right underneath the post. And we already mentioned now on the coffin before, it was already in the bag for the Chinese and they just add some icing onto the cake there for their, their scoreline. Yeah, I agree with you. I think she just like have so much energy left to just run towards the try line area. And the final play of the game is the successful conversion from the Chinese women's team. Final score, 29 to I apologise, the Huda had not gone yet, so they get one more restart. <laughs> I keep yeah. jumping ahead of myself. Uh, last play there, we looked at the clock, it was down, but the Huda had not gone. So there will be a restart here, it'll go again. And the Chinese will... Ooh, they still, they still want to play. Do they want to play or do they want to kick it out? They could just kick it okay, out. And it's now a, that's they kick it out. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you girls for ending the game and putting me out of my misery at the same time. Oh, foot and mouth here. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, good game, and maybe if the ball had bounced a little bit away the way the Kazakhstan woman and they managed to hold on the ball, it could have been a different scoreline. But the Chinese have taken advantage when they had their opportunities, and maybe the scoreline probably doesn't reflect um, how well the Kazakhstan woman played because they did have a few opportunities. But the final whistle is 29 points to seven, China over Kazakhstan. How do you think that went? I uh, even though China won the game, I guess uh, big kudos to Kazakhstan because they really, really uh, hold on for uh, on defend uh, defending. They are doing really good, but unfortunately, I I think China still they are just really good in taking advantage of all the opportunities that they had just now. Yeah, bit of a question mark about that first try. Even we saw some comments on the YouTube channel. Uh, maybe they got away with it, maybe ball out of the hand, either way it's on the board and in the end it probably didn't really matter because the, the Chinese did score enough. So some very entertaining rugby from the ladies, uh, good hard effort for both teams and a well, well done, uh, nice win for the Chinese. We will catch you back soon for the next game.
Good afternoon, everybody. So we're going to start the game, the women's Thailand against Philippines. So how was the game for, for a whole day? Oh, it was a great performance by all the teams. Yeah, I'm looking forward for the next uh, few more games left for the day. What about you? What, ab what about for you? Oh, right now, like, I was looking at the game and then, like, I could see that every player is they're showing their efforts to the pit, uh, to into the field and like trying to show their performance and, like, and also to the referees like everybody's everybody's like putting the effort into the field so I'm really surprised and like yeah anyway like all right the kickoff starts from Thailand and let's see who's going to win the game the referee blows for a whistle kicks the ball into the deep side Philippines they got the ball to go and nice support from the Philippines. Got the ball, go to space. Jacko. Oh, he's quite close. Go to the side. Tackle from Thailand. The, and they got the ball. Yes, definitely yes. Well, the player didn't. She didn't release the tackler clearly, so that's why the referee blocked for a release tackler. Penalty against Thailand. Off for the line out. Let's see what could they do from the line out. Well, for me, for this game, um, as we saw a few hours ago. The men's Philippines against Japan. Mm -hmm. Philippines, they won the game, mm -hmm. and then we saw that they prepared a lot in their country, and also for this game, yeah. also to the women's. I think they prepared a lot, so I'm really um, looking forward to this team. That's a great lineup by Philippines. Let's see if the wing could do something here. Oh, I guess. Also for, releasing? also for this mm -hmm. turn, clearly not releasing the tackler. And they're going to choose the kick. The touch goes to Philippine. Oh, like just a few minutes ago it didn't rain, but right now it's raining right yeah, now. It, it looks like it's raining. That's why I was like, am I like, I'm just wondering whether it's rain or not rain. But it is raining right now. Let's see. I hope the rain will not disturb their ball handling here. Oh, what a good... Oh, going to space. Quick support. Balls out. Going to wide. Can they make it? Going to oh, inside. That's a great run. Nice tackle from yeah. Thailand. They have to give a pressure to Philippine. Going to in goal line. Can oh. they make it? They made the try. They made the try. What a... Great leg works by Philippine number. Let's see. Look at Philippine, like they hit him, <coughs> made the contact, go to forward. Look at the power. She's really, really powerful. Yeah, the look at that. Number 11 by Lillian Christ Christine. <laughs> well, a few, a few hours ago, I, I've said to, to Simon that. Um, well, if it rains, he asked me that is it any benefit to to the team, and then I said to him that well, Philippine and also to to Japan, we cannot we cannot um, think that there's going to be no benefit to each team. Mm -hmm. So the point is that who's going to make a mistake, who's who can like win that pressure, mm -hmm. and also for this game, I think um, Philippine they could also win this game and just focus what they. Focus mm -hmm. what they could do. Yeah, they just because with the weather condition, I guess they just need to minimize their um, little tiny mistake. But if they could compromise with all those tiny mistakes, I think they can do it. The yeah, referee block for release the ball. Going forward. I guess this is a favorite move by Thailand. They try to hold up the player. Thailand. Going forward. Oh, Ooh, I think that's moving high. Tackle. Nice whistle mm -hmm. from the referee. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Well, this is the point. Mm -hmm. Well, like, 
will it's rainy but players have to understand also they have to concentrate if the ball comes to the front they have to catch the ball and they have to go forward I totally agree with you Oscar because I think both teams are under pressure like they want to do their best when they have the opportunities but I guess the pressure just like make uh, turn them down scrum nice ball it was a little bit bad pass but I think they managed to counter it again good clear up by Philippines player but let's see what's the referee's call referee block for offside mm -hmm. I think Philippine tried to do something from here. Now remaining time is 1 minute and 50 seconds. Let's see we, what, she, what they could do. At this moment, I guess they just need to be a little bit patient to not lose the ball. But uh, unfortunately, like what I've said earlier, Thailand is really quick in like counter over the rock. Oh, that was unlucky. Okay, Philippine got the ball, going to forward. Oh, I think that's going to go for a penalty. I think go for a advantage. Oh, he was a penalty over and then go for a knock on. I guess like Philippines going to try to do something from here. It's like a 10 meter from the try line, less than 10 meter, I guess. Well, tactically, mm -hmm. um, well, I thought that Thailand was really brilliant, mm -hmm. much more better than Philippines. Mm -hmm. But as I said to you, like as um, Philippines against Japan, the men's they prepared a lot and they won mm -hmm. against Japan. And also, I think that women's also they prepared a lot. Yes. So I think they could, they could make a win in this through this game. Mm -hmm. So I'm really I'm looking forward. I guess we've been will try their best to like um, to get the try for this time. Let's see. Pass. Ooh, was a great. Well, Philippines they are they're really aggressive, but Thailand is also they're trying to give a pressure to Philippines. Yeah. Okay, Thailand got the ball. Going to forward. Oh, power. Nice offload. Going to the space. Going to the side. Looking Did for support. She make it? Looking Aww. for support. I think the referee's going to go for it. Roll away. Oh, the roll away. That play rolled away. Thank you to Thailand. It was offside, right? Going to the side. Will not miss this opportunity, but Philippines were trying really hard to give a pressure to Thailand. Oh, I think it's going to be penalty. Definitely, yes, we the ball. If Philippines really wanted to save some energy, I guess they should just like tap in kick it out by right what do you think will they play or will they kick it, kick it out well like the play right now mm -hmm. we don't need to kick right now because in the ball is on the other side mm -hmm. anyway like, well the ball is going to the side let's have a look we can, we can make it or not the Thailand they have to catch it Thailand Thailand there looking for the support Oh, nice tackle from Thailand. Can she get the ball? Can she get the ball? Can she get the ball? Oh, she failed to get the ball. Well, I think that player was... Um, that player was angry at the um, Philippine player because the Philippine player who, who was a ball carrier, I think she didn't really clearly release the ball, so that's why the yellow, the Thailand player was upset with that player. But anyway, like the first half is over, Thailand 
Uh, Philippines is five, Thailand is zero. But well, I think well, this game is really tough. Yeah, I thought Thailand is going to be like leading uh, on in the first half, but wow, it's, I'm quite surprised with the score, even though it's not that much, five to nil, but it's a great uh, performance by Philippines. Yeah, like I was really surprised. Well, let's see what's Thailand gonna do on the second half because I don't think Thailand will just like uh, stay and watch just like that well for me I think for this game the important thing is that the the weather is quite wet so the players should get the ball clearly and try to get the ball and like try to just secure the ball and go to forward no mistakes I think that that's a key point who Who's going to make the game? Who's going to win? I think that's a key point for this game. I guess because of the weather condition also make uh, the... I, it could seems like Thailand make a, a little bit mystic, I think, on the handling and so on. Alright, we're, we're back for a second half. I hope that each team had, uh, each coaches said to the players about the tactical things. Yeah, I think they are going to fix any mistake that they've done on the first half. Kick off from Thailand. Ah, uh, Philippines, and sorry. Philippines. Got the ball. Wow! Oh, a nice step from Thailand. Looking for support. They have to go forward. Oh, that was speed. Well, look at that. She has the speed, long legs, and just quite all of it through the try line area. Will the Thailand, will she start a spot mm -hmm. and then go for number one, mm -hmm. which is um, Pan Pasa player. Mm -hmm. Will she start a spot and she made a good chance and give the ball to another player. Yeah. Conversion. Successful conversion by Thailand. Now the score is five all. Well, uh, as I said to you, like the weather is quite wet, mm -hmm. so players have to get the ball and they have to go forward. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that they don't need to do the fancy thing. They just True. need to do the basic I things. Just go straight. Just go to the spot. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I still remember when I. Uh, I was still a player. My coach always said that during this wet weather, just play simple, don't do any fancy stuff. Just make the basic wall. Nice securing from the Philippines. Oh, I think Thailand got the ball, I think so. Yes, definitely they got the ball. Going to the side, going to the space. Great tackle by Philippines. But Thailand still going. They have to run. Philippines, they have to run. Make it. Yes, another try by number 11, Chirawan Churakun. Well, like, I think Thailand 11 is really quick. Mm -hmm. like, like, well, Philippine, they have to look at that player. I think she is a key player right now. Yes. I mean, Thailand, like, all the players, they are just quick on their rock, on their uh, tackling, on their winger. They're just going to take... Have, uh, all the opportunity that they have. Well, that was really fun. If you were a player, if you if you kick in that moment, could you success the conversion kick? Uh, to be honest, I've never been a kicker before, so I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe after coming after coming to you, we'll, we'll just try that. Oh, let's see. Maybe <laughs> we could try. <laughs> <laughs> all right, another kick off from Thailand. Going to deep. Let's see if it's a good kick or not. 
on the ball into the Ingorsa. That should be a free kick. Ooh, they just need to make a try and they just need to see their conversion kick. Going to the middle side. What a beast. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that was a little bit unlucky. Nice pass there. But Tyler managed to get it back. Let's see. Are they going to... Oh, oh, look at that. She just cut it back inside and go for the try. Well, like, as I said to you, like, Thailand, they were, they were finding the space and going to the space. Do the basic things. Like, as I said to you, like, for this game, I think the team who do the basic things do not make a mistake, just do a ball carry. I think the, the team who does the, who tries to do those things, I think they could win the game. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Uh, compared to the first half, I think Thailand tried to reduce the mistake that they have done on the first half. And they tried to improve a lot in the second half. Now the remaining time, 2 minutes and 14 seconds. Mm -hmm. Well, Philippine, they do have a chance to win the game, so let's have a look if they could win or not. If they could sustain like uh, their performance, I guess they maybe have something to show us. Let's see from this kickoff. It's a deep. Good catch by Philippines player. Good offload. Oh, look at the power. Yeah. I think that was a double movement. Yeah. The yellow card, the reason why is she didn't release the ball accurately, so she should be going for not 10 meter. Going to the middle side. Oh, just through the gap and run all the way by herself. That's number one from Thailand, Panpasa Jaitarim. Look at that, she saw a spot and she went to the space, go to fourth. And she, I think she has a confidence that she could win that player, so that's why she just ran into that space. space yeah, I, I saw it too. Let's see whether they can make the conversion to add on another two more points for Thailand. Well, I think... Uh, my opinion went to into the pitch mm -hmm. after that compared to the first half players trying to go into s into space mm -hmm. like. I think even though she's small but she got the speed and she know that she can beat the space out of the two defenders of Philippines the kick off from Thailand it was quite deep oh it didn't go into the mm -hmm. angle that was a nice kick. Top just like that, exactly before the line. Great foot leg by Philippines. Oh, oh. nice tackle from Thailand. Oh, oh. Can, she, can she make it? Oh, she made a try. Oh, she made a try. The last moment. Wow. It well, was a good one. Well. <laughs> Right now, Thailand made the pressure a lot, and they also I, I just wanted to give give them a clap is that they try to focus onto the ball yes. and then just try to think, try to make them a mistake. Yes. And look at that. They just wait for Philippines to make uh, any mistake, and they're gonna like uh, grab the chance and see what happened. They just caught the try, and let's see whether they got this conversion. And successful conversion by Thailand. Alright, the score was 25 and 5. A great play from Thailand.
I hope that like Philippine could get better than for this game. Yeah, but big applause to Philippine as well. They really um, uh, did their best on the first half, but unfortunately, uh, I know that Thailand will not give a chance to Philippines. And there you go, the full time score: it, Thailand twenty seven and Philippines five. All right, for us, next game is Japan versus Malaysia. I see you in four forty.
we are back into Incheon Stadium, and which be, the game will be Japan against Malaysia. And the weather now, I guess the rain has stopped right now. So actually, I have a question for you, Oscar. Like, yeah, sure, um, yeah. I don't know. As a player, we have uh, our own preferences, like uh, for the weather. It depends on like who we against with. But as a referee, like, what's your preference on the weather when you blow the game? Well, um, first of all, as a referee, the basic thing is that like, we'll, I could say a lot of things, but first of all, um, if it rains, I was uh, every time I have to care about the whistle is it in my hand or not. I was uh, sometimes like. Well, rugby referees they have to blow up the whistle, which is really clearly also, which is uh, we have to blow powerful like this power. So anyway, like, we have to care about that one. Yeah. So anyway, like kick off from Japan. Um, oh, I think this is a mistake by the Malaysian player. I think both of them are just confused who's going to take the ball, and it end up with a knock on by the Malaysian player. Well, right now it's. J Japan versus Malaysia, and your friends are going to be a lot of friends in here. So yes, yes, I, I really love to see like they're still playing like half of them, but half of the team are uh, mostly a uh, junior uh, from Malaysia. I, I, to be honest, I'm so impressed with their performance so far because I can see how like the juniors player is coming up right there. I hope like it's going to be good opportunity for them. Oh, Japanese, they made a try. <laughs> What a nice try. Well, actually, like, well, Japanese, like, 15th team, the levels get got out into the World Series panel. Mm. And also, I'm expecting that seventh team, they're also getting up right now. Yeah. But the thing is, uh, I just want to think that can the Malaysia team, can they win that pressure? And can they also make a try? Or can they make a win? Can they win the game? Uh, for me, the most important thing for the Malaysian player I think they need to like be consistent on their, uh, even though they don't have the ball or they have the ball, they need to keep the ball like or the defense part really, really to take care of it, like really with all their energy. <coughs> well, another, another kickoff from Japan. Nice catch from Malaysia. They have to secure the ball. Oh, I think they got the ball. Yes, definitely. Support by the Malaysian player. Oh, oh great tackle! And that was lucky. Make it a rock. <coughs> oh, I think they got the ball again. Yes, okay. correct. Yep. Yeah. The referee blow for another again. The Japanese there making making time slowly as uh, slowly doing a scrum. Well, actually, if you, like, for example, if you have a scrum right now, then what do you usually think in that moment? Uh, for me, it depends where I am on the field right now. If I now looking at the the scrum, it's kind of like in the middle of the field. I will just try to use the gap on the outside. Oh, what a nice try again from Japan. See Japan just like swing out wide and get a easy try there on the wing side. Actually, the like, scrum half from Japan, I think she made a good decision. Like she first time she tried to go to the right side, but she saw the opponent, and the when she's looked at the defense, she thought that the left side was much more better than the right side, so she chose it, and that that made into a try. I think yes. she made a good decision. She made a right choice. Conversion kick was quite short. Another kickoff from Japan. Nice up high, but looking rough. Well, Malaysia, they have to get confidence. They have to get, um, just, just get, get patient. Yes, just do the basic things. Try to focus into the ball. Yeah, 
very good in another knock on by Malaysia because I guess they lose a little bit of focus on that. Well, I think Malaysia, they got a little bit nervous mm. right now. Uh, I guess, yeah, since Japan is one of the top uh, team in the Asia, I guess they got a little bit nervous like against them. Because in terms of like uh, physicality, because Jap Japan has like a uh, uh, almost the same size, but oh, what a nice push from <laughs> Malaysia! <laughs> Look at that. Let's see if they can do anything from here. Ooh, oh, nice tackle, tackle from Japan! Tackle, yeah, it's a little bit messy. <laughs> they got the ball going to the right side. Look at that, Japan, they're giving a pressure mm -hmm. a lot in the D zone. They have to get, get away from the diesel. They should really need to release the pressure from the territory, I guess. Now they have to release the ball, release the tackler. Going to the left side. Oh, no. Yeah, it, was, it was a knock on, I guess. Malaysia is under pressure and it, it leads them to that mistake. Is there any way that to to overcome this this situation? Uh, honestly, I guess that's the way for me. I will say like I just need to slow down the game. Oh, okay. If like you keep on doing it um, like very drastically, it just lead you to another mistake. So you really need to be calm down and just take your time to be more patient with the ball. Another try from Japan, number seven, which is Yumi Hirano. Conversion kick. The angle was not really good. Well, actually, like, we just saw right now, the Malaysia team, the scrum was really powerful. Mm. So if they push well, I think they could make a good score right mm -hmm. now against Japan. I agree. As as you said, like they, uh, I guess they have like quite a little bit similar physical uh, physicality. So the scrum is quite tight there, and if they can maintain their ball position, I guess they can do something out of that. Nice tackle from Japan, but. The Malaysia has secured the ball. The hula came out. Oh, wait a minute. They have to get the ball and they have to go forward. Just be patient. Just be patient. Yes. I guess it was a good uh, decision to kick, uh, to kick forward the ball to release the pressure, but oh. uh, I think I jinxed it. <laughs> Well, another try from Japan, which is Hanako Yusumi. Hanako Utsumi, yes. She just saw the gap and just ran through the gap and made the try. Well, right now, like, there's some, I think there's uh, some new Japanese players right mm -hmm. now in this squad, mm -hmm. but I think they trained a lot mm -hmm. because, like, a lot of players, they could recognize a spot and go to a space. Yes, yes. I Trying to do the basic things. True, I totally agree with you on that. Now it's a break. Let's see what can Malaysia do on the second half. So what do you think about the Malaysia and Japan performance so far? Well, this game? well first of all, <laughs> uh, like... Well, Japanese, they show us that they are in the world's serious circuit and also they do show us that their their levels are really high. But also, I'm really impressed that Malaysia, they try to do their efforts, they try to, in, especially in the scrum, they try to push and try to give a pressure to Japanese and try to win the ball. But anyway, like, the good thing is that the Malaysia, they don't really try to give up, yeah. they try to give an effort. That they need to minimize on their, uh, their little mistake because 
in seven the little mistake make the big big changes for the game. For this moment, I just have a question. Like, if you are in this moment, then what does a coach say to these two guys? Um, honestly, they will try to uh, talk about the mistake. Uh, they will try to uh, ask the players like to minimize the mistake and work on the things that uh, the basic thing because of the weather. Let's have a look what happens to Malaysia again. This is one of the main player of Malaysia. Kicking off from the middle of the field, Rosiliana Muhammad Ridwan. Now the referee blows for a second half. The ball goes a little bit deep. The Japanese got the ball. Oh, look at that offload. Nice pass. I think that was a little bit high. But the referee just goes away. Going to his side, look at that speed, look at that. Oh. Wow, well, look at that. I think it's just like an eagle, <laughs> just going to his side on that, going quickly. Yeah, yeah, that's a try by number 11 from Japan, Wakabahara. The ball speed and going forward, look at that. Look at that speed. Wow. Well, to be honest, like if I have a race with her, I think I'm going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so too. <laughs> she's really, she's really quick. Yes, yes, yes. I can see that. Look even th even though her face looked like effortlessly, but I guess I think she made it through, hmm. through the try line area. Another kickoff from Japan. Oh, I think it's going to go. Oh, oh. It went more than 10 years, and that was a little bit lucky. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was oh, a knock on from knock Japan. On? So let's see if can Malaysia push the scrum. And I hope that they could get the ball and make a try. Collapsing from Japan. Got the penalty. Go forward. She's alone there. Let's see if the friends got spotted. Yes. Nice pass. Oh, she kicked the ball. Will anybody get to chase the ball? Ah. Uh. Uh, well, um. <coughs> I think that kick mm. was not really good because mm. like there was no supporters yes. and like after they just gave the ball to Japan. Whoa now what a oh. nice pass. Going forward. Oh she cannot oh. get it, she cannot catch it, she cannot catch it. She's gonna save a little bit of her energy just by jogging into the try line. <laughs> and Make well, uh, another try by Japan, uh, number 11, Wakabahara. Well, like, to be honest, like, Japanese uh, transmission is really good. Mm -hmm. Also, get the ball and going forward, look at that speed. Yes. But as I said to you, I, she looks like an eagle. It was a good long pass by the uh, Japanese player, Chiharu Nakamura. Best substitution to each team. The score is 36 nil. What a great kickoff by the Japanese player. Not an advantage to Japan. It's definitely roll away. Oh, I guess Japan, Japan gonna score another try from here. Yeah, that's it. Another try by the Japanese player number. Let's see again. 
Did you just see that? Mm -hmm. We were like, the Japanese number three, yeah. Miho Matsunaga. She just, when she just got the penalty, just do the quick play, quick yeah. tap, go into space, give the ball quickly, and make a try. That's what I like about this uh, Japan's team. They just doesn't stop and look uh, for the opportunity. Anything that's in front of them, they will just uh, try to penetrate all the opportunities that they have in front of them. Now the score is 41-0. Remaining time is 2 minutes and 19 seconds. Another kickoff by Japan. Well, I think the referee mm. is a little bit tired. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> <laughs> well, if it was me, I would, I was, I would be really, really tired. <laughs> side entry from Not Malaysia. Going to his side. Mm. Look at that. Oh. oh, unlucky there. Oh, now they have to make so a chance. Small, but let's see. What was the call of the referee? Oh, Did you see it? It was a knock on from the ah. referee. Yeah. This girl, she's really small, but she got the speed. But let's see if she can get the ball. And let's see if she can make some run with the ball. Well, if I look at the referee's mm. face, mm. Like, I could feel that he made a lot of sprints. So. <laughs> I guess so. Well, for me also, mm. like when I ref for 7s or 15s mm -hmm. and like... If there's a situation which is the situation where we have to do the sprint, mm -hmm. then my face looks like same as like that. So. Okay. Uh, secured from Malaysia. Full squad. Oh no. Japanese got the ball again. Going to the side, going to the left. Going forward. Oh, they missed the ball. That was quite close. Yeah. They should still have the opportunity to do something with the remaining uh, 50 seconds left. But let's see from the line if they could do something. Well, I think like I think Malaysia could make a try mm -hmm. right now. Well, the thing is that well, I think they do have a good ability, mm -hmm. and they could get, get, get they do they do have a ability to make a try mm -hmm. so they just need to like 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 these ones mm -hmm. they just need to do the basic thing yes. and just do the just catch the ball and go to see forward. how japanese grab the ball so easily from the malaysian oh and look at that look at that another try by number 11 wakabahara i think it's a hat trick by her for the three tries so far for this match she just ran up for herself, not looking back to the supporter or another players. I'm just gonna go try for it. The conversion failed, and the score is Japan's 46 and Malaysia is nil. Is there any comments to your friends? Mm, I guess they try their best, but I, uh, they really need to uh, improve on their, uh, maybe like their defending and also I think they need to try to recover from all the pressure for defending and also attacking. All right, thank you so much. All right, for the next game will be the men's game, which is China against Sri Lanka. I'll see you at five, five, five o'clock.
Here we go, and welcome back to 
game number. What game are we on, Oscar? We got the sheet there. We can check what game we're on. Oh, oh for this game is 17. Game number 17, and we're back to the men's side of the draw. So we have the Chinese men versus the Sri Lankan men. Both played earlier on this morning, and both had losses. So uh, a couple of L's for these guys. They'll both be looking for a W. Uh, the weather outside, it's getting a bit darker, so the lights are in full effect. You can see the shadows starting to stretch across the ground there. So, uh, you have myself in the commentary box, Simon Walsh from New Zealand, and Oscar, oh, obviously from South Korea. Hello, good to see you. Well, actually, um, well, I was born in South Korea, but after four months, I went to Hong Kong for four years, and I lived in England for three years, so I, sometimes I don't think I'm, a, I'm not a Korean. Really? Who do you support when Hong Kong plays uh, South Korea? <laughs> right? We'll uh, be honest. That's secret. <laughs> That's secret. All right, kicking off, and away we go. And the Chinese are running it out from their own 22. Went for a deep kick from the Sri Lankans, and the Chinese are moving across the field. Well, how do you think about this game? Uh, well, they both come off losses. Um, They've got some big guys in their team, so it'll be interesting to see. I think in the past you would probably say the Chinese are maybe the favourites. They've got some good athletes, and uh, here's an example of it right there. Just the power and the speed and the pace, and he's going to back himself all the way to the line. No, he's done. Oh, well done from the Sri Lankans to bring him back. But in the end, it's actually number nine that goes over from China, and that's uh, Ying Hao Gao from China goes over. Scores the opening try for the match. Well, I think I thought that the Sri Lanka could be able to catch that player, but the supporter was too late. So that's why they just made it. They just gave the ball to make them try. Oh, I think I like how the Sri Lankan man uh, never, never gave up. He chased them all over the line, and in the end, it was quite lucky that the Chinese managed to get over because the Sri Lankans were coming back on defence, but not quite enough. So just a uh, hello to everyone out there watching us on YouTube. Uh, if you are watching us on our YouTube channel, we ask you if you could uh, like the channel and follow us. Uh, and we always like to see your comments on there as well. Uh, in other news, I'm about to give you the update from the Women's Rugby World Cup final. The score, they're currently playing. So if you don't want a spoiler, please turn off the microphone now. New Zealand are currently trailing. 29-31. England are ahead by two points. Very, very tightly contested over there. All right, back to the game. We have a hand now. Oh, a little fumble with the ball. Is the ref going to call that gone back? It has gone back. So we'll carry on from here. Just five points in it. Oh, little stab through with the boots. Sort of a a uh, Hail Mary hope and pray kick, I think. I don't know if we get any accuracy on it. <laughs> a little, little no-look backhander off the ground. Good payoff well for the Chinese. They're going wide. Yep, another no look pass. These guys are doing some fancy, almost Sunny Bill like handoffs here. And look up there, sees there. There's a lot of traffic ahead of him. That means this space out wide. And oh, 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 if he managed to pick that up, I think there would have been an opportunity for the Chinese. But slips through his fingers and bounces across the line. So we will get a throw in to the Sri Lankans. Probably the best attacking opportunity they had. They had a little kick through before, which got them down into the half, but the Chinese cleaned up very well and managed to attack back. Well, for me, uh, I think this game is going to be really, really tough. Well, like, the weather is wet, and uh, also the, well, as we saw before, the Jap Japan against Philippines, like, I said to you that the benefit, there's no benefit to each team, but also for this game, we, we cannot uh, imagine that which team is going to win. Also, Sri Lanka. They have a lot of good abilities, so I think they have a good. Um, they can make a good result for this game. A couple of loose balls going on the Sri Lankan side, though. A few drop balls there. Uh, luckily, there was a penalty advantage that the referee was playing, so the referee will bring them back for a penalty. I didn't see what the penalty was, but never mind. Tap and go. Here we go again. But a deja vu. They're doing the exact same thing. Hopefully, the ball stays. Wow! Oh, what a nice offload. <laughs> That ball around the corner was money, and right underneath the post, and they score. Oh. Wow, that, that was really. I think really even uh, I think even the Sri Lankan players are trying to figure out where that ball came from. Look oh. at that! Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, like a well done steak. Oh, tasty. Ah, oh, it was really, really sweet. Yes, and that puts them right back in it, and with the conversion to come. Bang! Over we go. Sri Lanka lead. 7-5 over China. 
Uh, that was number 13 from the Sri Lankan team, and that is Tarindra uh, Ratwati. He's gone over there. He's not out of breath at all. He's ready to go again. Straight back in with the Sri Lankans are lined up, ready to go. This should lift their spirits. They uh, had a couple of runs with the ball where it was turned over and the Chinese managed to break away, but they're going to go deep here. There's nobody back in the pocket for the Chinese, meaning they have to turn. Automatically puts them all offside, but good, strong run. Runs into a solid tackle, though. They'll reset and go back out the back line. Looking to move it across. Big step inside. Back into traffic now. Will the Sri Lankans try to get over that ball? No. Now they're going to go back there. Oh, good hands. Holding onto the leg. Heavy, heavy. Contesting there. Step arm, hands them off, back inside. That's the number three. Bao Wang running like a, like a human buffalo, just smashing people out of the way. Oh, playing a bit of a 15 style game here, the Chinese. They're just going straight up the guts. Oh, that was really, a little bit unlucky. And uh, unlucky there, knock on by the Chinese, which means they'll turn it over. Carry there. The Chinese man, very strong. Uh, also to Sri Lanka, they, the defense is really, really good. I'm a little bit, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised. Substitute court called here. The man coming on. Beautiful haircut this man carries. He's not only bringing fresh legs, he's bringing some crazy looking hairstyle fashion at the same time. Almost got a... Uh, who's, who's the famous singer I'm thinking of here? I think. Like little Richie. He's always got the little Richie haircut as he comes on the field. Right, the ball here. Going out there. Going to go out about 22. Going across. No, not going to run it this time. Decided to save the legs and just bang it back down. Chinese are going to have to scramble. And just as we talk about the weather coming right, the rain is now pouring down. It's coming down thick and fast. Heavy, heavy rain. You might even be able to hear it. I think some of the microphones down on the field might be picking up. Well, you can see it anyway. Yeah. It's torrential. Uh, but the microphones might actually picking up how heavy it is. Because before, it, uh, it cleared away, but now it's come right back. So this is going to play a major part in how these guys play now. And that ball is going to be very, very slippery. It's going to be like a little, trying to hold on to an eel out there. Slippery eel trying to get away from you. Just uh, just over 15 seconds left in this half, which means this could be the last play if the Sri Lankan team managed to hold on to it. We're going down the blind side. Now in this moment, they they just they have to do the basic things. Just do the basic things. Penalty there. Here's the hooter, so this will be the last play. Will Sri Lanka managed to capitalise on all this pressure. Ooh. Holding on. Oh, he wasn't held. He probably could have gone himself. Well, but he hasn't been greedy and it's bouncing around. Oh, oh, finally. Ah, number nine from Sri Lanka. The number nine from Sri Lanka, Srinata Sriam Bandra. Oh, what a nice try. Well, they didn't, they didn't give up. They just tried to go forward and look at that. Yeah, some good feet on the man. He actually came in, came out, bounced back out. In doing so, the uh, Chinese defender had committed himself to the tackle. He ended up going down on his knees, and in the end, he goes around. Uh, not even touched and goes down the side. So that takes us into half time. And surprisingly, it looked like the Chinese were doing quite well in the first few minutes, and the tide turned definitely with Sri Lanka going in half time 14 5. So, what do you think the guys are going to be chatting about at half time? Probably the weather. They were talking about how to hold on to the ball. They don't, they don't want to be doing any, uh, any fancy stuff because the ball's very, very hard to hold on to out there. Yeah, like, well. Like for me, like I will, as I said to you before, I was a manager and a transfer for a national team. And if I go there and have a, a speak with their players, our our head coach always said to the players, just do the basic things like that. But I think also right now it's going to be quite similar as what our head coach said to the players, just do the basic things, go to the space like that. I think that uh, that first try from Sri Lanka, that round the back ball with this one here, oh, oh that was magical. I think uh, he'll be telling stories of how, how many players are actually on him and how he got that ball away. But uh, the proof is in the pudding. Look at that try and look at that replay. It's a beautiful try. The 
take a break here, and we'll see you back here for the second half of the game. Very quick break, and we're back. Boys are refreshed, boys are ready to go. Boys look like they just come out of the swimming pool. <laughs> That's how wet they are. <laughs> yes. We might be able to save uh, some water for the planet. We don't need showers after the, after the game. The boys have had plenty of showers out there, as it is. Here we go. Change of direction on the restart. They've gone out here to the left side. Schwank is up for the task. Bit of a floater. Those can be dangerous. Oh, the old no-show, no dummy and go. Stepping left, stepping right, going back up the guts. Good secure ball for Schwanker. Now they look to move it. Coming out wide. There's plenty of defence there for the Chinese. But Schwanker are making ground. And cheeky little arm gets in there, managed to scoop it back. The ref is called play on. So this could end up working out okay for Sri Lanka. Have to be careful now. They can't tackle the man on the ground. You have to let him play it. Yep. And the referee has called that. Once the man goes to the ground as he slides on the ball like that, you have to let him be able to retake his feet. So Sri Lanka guilty of tackling the man on the ground and penalty for China. That was a little bit high. I think that was a little bit high. All right. So we'll take another re-tap there. China starting to go through. They'll be wanting to score next. The score is 14-5. Nine points in it. They don't want to let the scoreboard tick over too much. They want to get back into the game, though, to be the next one to score. That was a little bit Not enough here. juice on that, that ball. I think maybe our man there didn't have enough lunch at lunchtime because, <laughs> uh, yeah, that ball kind of floated out there and there's no one there. All right, these balls, these passes are starting to look a little ugly. Oh. Need to get back to their gameplay. There were some nice passes earlier on. But the slippery pill again. Here we go. And we go. as a result of that ball just sort of bouncing around and passes not. <laughs> what a nice dive. I think uh, that's something um, uh, Phelps would be proud of. That looked like almost an Olympic swimming pool dive for the 100 meter start, the way he dived in there. I think he's doing for, going for the. Uh, oh, that's what it was, eh? Foot on the ball. Perfectly legal. You can actually play it with your foot. Uh, when the man went to pick it up, it wasn't in the right form. And then. Casual as you like, come in, bit of a swan dive at the end. I think that player missed their swimming pool. <laughs> They're asking what he thought of his uh, his dive at the end, and he's shaking his head like, well, I could have done better. Maybe he'll get another chance. <laughs> I need time left, so maybe he'll get another chance coming up. Score is now 21 to 5. That means it's a 17 point wall game. So. It is running away from the Chinese. They are going to have to do something if they want to stay in this game. Just wait for a ball. It seems like even the ball boys can't hold onto the ball. It's that slippery. So we get it back out there to restart. All right, there we go. Ref calls time on again. Let's see if we can get this ball away. Now we have four minutes and ten seconds. So the Sri Lankans are using the same tactic, they're going over the top and there's no sweeper for the Chinese. So when the Chinese are getting the ball, the pressure is on. But they have managed to slice open this defence and if they can hold on the ball, they're going to have a really good opportunity. One on one, one on one, the fend and yes, he gets through. Look at that, that was a brilliant power, brilliant balance. Number 11, Ji Tak Duwale Tibeki. He has a very interesting, very long Chinese last name. So his name is almost as long as his legs as he strides out there all the way to the finish. Big man. Big man on little man. Yes, have to go around, have to go a bit lower. He managed to get a hand on his shorts, but this wet weather comes very hard to hold on to. And he's gone around under the sticks, which gives his team a, the opportunity to convert, which they have done. Bringing the score a little bit closer. They want to get the ball back now, the Chinese. So what are they going to do? They're going to do a nice short restart. Possibly too short. Yes. And they'll bring it back. Too short there. Hasn't gone to 10 metres. Could be costly for the Chinese. That was a really good opportunity for them to actually camp down here. Put a bit more pressure on the Sri Lankans. 
And the Sri Lankans are not going to be in a hurry. There is 2 minutes 40 on the clock. They're going to want to slow this down. Yes, they're going to want to score again, but they don't want the Chinese to score again. So if it comes to them scoring or the Chinese scoring or no one scoring, they're probably going to want no one scoring or them scoring. So they want to slow the ball down. Keep it in hand. Keep the... Yeah, so there might have been a Chinese hand in there, so it could be play a, on. I think that was a knock on before that. If it yes. wasn't, the second one certainly was. So the referee has called that a knock on. So it will be a Chinese scrum and we're going to get some substitutes, some fresh leaves going out there. With just two minutes to play, both teams are looking to use their bench, get some players out there. This man has a plaster on his eye. I'm not sure it's actually doing anything. Looks like it's just hanging on there. Is it a plaster or a tissue that's just been picked up from him sliding around on the field? It's almost got that Nelly look from back in... I don't know if anyone listens to Nelly. It was back in the, the 2000s. The, the plaster on the face was quite a fashionable accessory. Maybe that's what he's got out there. Anyway, there we go again. The Chinese have got the ball. They wanted to score next and score quickly, so it'll give them some more time. Here we are to our big man on the outside. He ran well, carries well, passes off. Ooh. Bit of a no man's land pass going out the back. So people are starting to slip off a few tackles here. I don't know if that's fatigue or the weather. And ah, just as I talk about the weather, there's a drop ball out there. That ball is very, very slippery. So we have a knock on and a scrum called. I can see a lot of people walking over there. Probably not in the best interest for the Chinese to be walking to the scrum because they want that ball to go quickly, but the Sri Lankans are definitely not in a hurry to set the scrum. We just have under a minute left to play. And with the, with the difference being nine points, that means the Chinese will need to score twice in a minute. Not impossible, but it is a tough ask. Substitution from Sri Lanka. Well, I think Chinese could make a score in one minute, but the thing is that they can't. They have to focus onto the ball, do not make a mistake. So the Sri Lankans have actually done a tight head on that scrum and they've turned it over and they've juggled with the ball, but it's gone backwards. There's a little fancy goosey, 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 goosey step, and he's looking for support. They're not in a hurry. Maybe a little chip. Oh, it's been charged down. That's the last thing the Sri Lankans want. They'd rather hold onto the ball than charge it down. And then the Chinese oh, have done well ball. to win this back. There's a big hole right in the middle of the field. It's closed quickly. Now we have 20 seconds. We have 20 seconds. Yeah, I think the time is not on the Chinese side here. They probably running out of time. The defense can hold up. They would want to score before it runs out of time so they can take the quick and get, a, get one more play. Just a few seconds left on the clock. It might be just a last try. Oh, now it really opens up. He's got a two-man overlap. Overman left. Puda's gone. So that'll be the game. But they've given it to a speedster on the outside. He still wants to play. But the Sri Lankans aren't going to give it to him easy. He's so close. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. He missed the ball. <laughs> There's a lot of chat going on. Who's blaming who? The referee has called. I don't know what he's called yet. He's just having a chat to his sideline members. From what it looked like here, I think what he's saying is, that to me it looked like the Chinese have dropped the ball. The Chinese are saying there was a hand in there. But let's see what they end up calling. It's not going to make a difference at the end of the day. There is a nine-point gap. They score if they don't score. But the uh, the Chinese are obviously wanting, wanting to get more points because that's going to look better on the scoreline. Let's have a look here. Uh, he's called it a deliberate knockdown by the Sri Lankan player, which means oh. it is a professional foul. He'll go to the bin. It won't matter anyway because the game is over after this play, but the Chinese will have one more roll of the dice, which means they could potentially pull that scoreline in a little bit closer. Oh, ah, a well, there we go. Penalty try. Just as I said, they're going to pull in closer. They have pulled in closer. So penalty try. Uh, because it's penalty try, conversion is not needed. It's a full seven points, so it'll be 19-21. A win for the Sri Lankan men over the Chinese. And just to give you an update on what's going on in the Women's World Cup, if you're not watching, or if you don't want to watch, please close your ears. Uh, it's changed over once more. Now New Zealand is ahead of England, 34-31. to There's only two minutes left on the clock. It's a nail-biter over there. 
Uh, so we will join you back again for the next game. Uh, it's a very entertaining rugby, both from the Sri Lankan and from the Chinese men's team. We'll see you shortly.
Welcome back. Now we have the two men's teams. We have Hong Kong men's versus UAE. Both teams coming out to huddle. So we have UAE in the green and Hong Kong in a multicolored strip. Bit of blue, bit of red, bit of white. Nice and stripy like the old school jerseys. Uh, just an update from the Women's Rugby World Cup. Uh, we had a bit of cheering and a bit of shouting and some high fives and some clapping in the commentary box, being as I'm from New Zealand. So the New Zealand women's team have managed to hold on to a very small lead and just get past the England team, a very, very closely contended match. So congratulations to the Black Ferns down in New Zealand. Nice win. All right, back to the game here at Inchon. Very high kick, contested by both teams, but UAE have managed to hold on to it, and a scrum advantage to the UAE team. They'll have to move across. Well, for me, this game, like, I'm really um, looking forward to that. UAE won Chinese, so I'm really, like, I just want to see how they could give, show their good performance against the Hong Kong. And we keep talking about the weather, but uh, it has been four seasons in one day here. The rain has stopped. Uh, maybe a little bit moist out there, but it's going to make for some more free-flowing rugby. Uh, the previous game, you saw these guys they were almost drowning out there. That's how much moisture was on the field. But actually now it's, it's, it's cleared up a bit, probably uh, to the advantage of, of these players being able to move the ball. Going to space. So they were neck deep in water, but now they're fine. And so far, Hong Kong are looking quite strong. The defense is holding from UAE, though. They're just probing, testing the line. Coming in, coming out, looking to find where the weaknesses are. Well, <laughs> when, you, when you go that high and you get a forearm to the neck, but it actually has backfired and UAE have managed to found a, bind, a, a bouncing ball go in their favour. And a number 12 from UAE has managed to stretch the legs and head off down the field. And that is number 12 is Sukusu Naisu, who's gone all the way down the other end. And number seven, Nico Vola Vola made a try. Let's have a look again. What a speed, what a beast. Yeah, good uh, support play there. Almost got to the line, but very good defense from Hong Kong to chase him down. But not quite a little bit too little too late, and the offload goes there. UAE take the lead. Seven points to five. Oh, sorry, seven points to nil over Hong Kong. What, what weather do you prefer playing in, mate? Nice and dry or a little bit of rain? Keep it cool. Um, well, for me, as a referee, I, we don't really care. I just, for me, like, I just want to. I'm sure. I'm sure the referees care, mate. They still have to stand out there in the weather. So, if you had the option of playing in the rain or playing in the dry as a referee, think, which would you choose? Well, for me, um, maybe dry. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Here we go again, the restart, taken cleanly by Hong Kong. Don't want to be the next to score, but a bit of a uh, no-look pass out the back. He's been turned over and then turned over again, which is going to give Hong Kong an opportunity out wide. UAE up for the task, though. The defence is coming. Yeah, starting to slip off some tackles. Got him around the boot, manages to hold on. And the big arm comes through and scoops that up like a bit of ice cream. And away they go. Gonna take the dessert. He looks over, he sees his man on the inside. That's, the, that's a very good option, actually. Yeah, it was a really good kick. And rather than kick it through, he's decided to slide down on it, knowing the surface is wet, knowing that ball is wet, they can be hard to pick up. Hong Kong will get them back, back on side here. Looking out one side, deciding to go the other way, deciding that's the best option. They are hanging on to the players, but nobody's really putting the tackles in to knock the man down. They are staying on their feet. They go to ground now. There's no one there, no half. Okay, he's coming to play half now. Looking to draw that defender nicely. Oh, nice job of drawing the man, but the pass not quite there. Now in this and moment, referee calls a penalty. Now in this moment, they have to make a chance. The Hong Kong, they have to make a chance right now. I think uh, UAE would have blown that. That was definitely a overlap there. If that ball had gone to hand, I think the Hong Kong team would have been in trouble. But probably, luckily for Hong Kong, UAE didn't manage to control that ball. It's been turned over and then a penalty results. So, yep, they've gotten out of jail. Nice big clearing kick, taking them all the way down to the other end. 
Uh, that, that, that hurts when you work so hard as you to get down there to look, watch that ball fly over your head. Then you've got to moonwalk all the way back to your own half. Line out opportunity here. There's always plenty of room out in the field off, off the line out. So he's going to look to go back inside. Didn't offload there. He, he saw the man, but maybe decide to hold on. I think the better option is out wide, and he might be right here because there are three men out there. Number one's going to have a go himself. He's stayed in, which is good. Oh, referee might have something to say here. That looked like it could have cost Hong Kong very quick ball. Yes. Ah, uh, got caught with his hand in the cookie jar, and as a result, he'll be walking to the sideline. Almost too tempting sometimes, though, when the halfback picks, picks the ball up like that, and you are on the you're on the back foot. It's quite it's too tempting to dive over and slap that ball out, which he's done. Uh, but it's a professional foul, so UAE down to six players. Can Hong Kong capitalise off this? They know they've got an extra man, so they'll just play it smart. They're going to keep the defenders guessing in close. And yes, well done. Very smart play. Once you've got six players, you're sort of second guessing where your defence should be. So uh, UAE is off, have actually sent their players out very quickly out the back line. But in doing so, uh, the actual extra man ended up being down the inside channel. Hong, very uh, committed Hong Kong supporters there. There's the flag. There's a smile. There's a wave. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and just away. So quite close. Quite close. Just a two-point game though. That brings it right in. Just over a minute to play in the first half. Anybody's game at this stage. And we've seen a few balls that have gone, uh, has, haven't gone to hand, that have bounced along the ground, that have been scooped up. But uh, Hong Kong do have an advantage here. Seven on six for a little bit to go. Oh, what a nice kick. Uh, they found the UAE team napping. You've got to be awake. You've got to be ready for those balls. Going too high on the tackles. A lot of fins out there. Bang, bang, bang off each foot. Oh, he's looking for the offload. A big floater over the top. They're letting the ball do the walk, work. The ball is much faster than the man. It's very hard to chase a ball that's flying away. And they're going to go through. Good defense. They've got to get back on their feet quickly, UAE. They can't afford to have a man on the ground. Oh, look at that. Uh, just a, I think that is running a bit tired now. It's really difficult to defend six on seven. You have to put in an extra 20% extra each player to cover up for that man that's away. And the result is... Gaps are starting to appear in the defence. Oh, right there, man. Smart play. So that's a try there for number seven, who is Kwai Chung Muk of Hong Kong. He's gone through, and he will have the last say of the first half. So we'll go into the sheds. All the boys will go have a chat, and they'll discuss. What do you think they're going to discuss, Oscar? Well, I think um, we'll, well, Hong Kong will just say about try to focus on the ball, but, like, we'll... Well, UAE, they, I think, personally, they changed a lot of tactical things. So I think they, the coach is going to say about what they prepare in their country and try to just focus on their, what, like, what they have to do. So anyway, like, I think, um, well, UAE, I think they're going to concentrate in, in this moment and try to think about what they, they're going to do in the second half. So, I think anyway. both, both teams have uh, been guilty of probably pushing a pass they didn't need to. Or... Yeah, like, there's a perfect example. When you push a pass like that, which is... I mean, in this day and age, you should be able to take that catch, but it's wet out there, so they're really hard to take. Slips out of his hands, and then you're giving opportunity to the other team. Both teams have been guilty of this. So maybe the coach is going to say to them, guys, look, we need to tighten up that ball. Let's play crisp, crisp clean rugby. Get the ball in hand. And if it's not on, just take it into contact, reset, and go again. I think that's what I'd be saying anyway. Yeah, I do agree. Yeah, 100%, 100% I do agree. We're right now... The ground is really wet and also the ball is going to be really wet so anyway like we have to i think the players have to concentrate on the basic things and like just try to do the simple things yeah, okay get you back for the second half
Here we go for the second half. Um, as you know, earlier on the day, both these teams have a win, so it's going to be very tight this pool. So even the team that does not win this game, the points difference is going to be crucial. So they'll be looking at that scoreboard and making sure they either, obviously, first option is to win, second option is to get as many points as they can, because this is going to be crucial later on when it comes to how the finals play out tomorrow. So we had a restart there, but something's gone wrong. I think somebody did, which is a foul play. Is that a foul play? The ref is reaching in his pocket here. He's looking for a number on the back. He's asking the man to turn around. And he's decided to send... Uh, oh, where's this man? I can see the back. back here. He's a very big man. Yeah. Jeez. Well, uh, well, he made a lot of um, gay line. Uh, Gela over. Yes, he's done some good carries already. So that's disappointing for the UAE. They won't want to lose him. And he's gone off. And as a result, uh, Hong Kong have got the ball and they've gone back up. Uh, in the naughty chair for a couple of minutes. He's going to have to think about what he's done. Might be an opportunity to catch, catch his breath as well because it looks like he's uh, been working hard out there. Oh, it's slippery, so he's tried to step, but he's lost his footing there. Same same try score as before, which is uh, Kwai Chung Muk. He's gone through again. This man is electric. He's got some hot feet. Well, for UAE, one player is in the bin, so they have to focus to how they can do it. Can we get a smile from the supporters? The Hong Kong team's doing so well. I don't know we can see his frowns out there. So maybe they expect more from their players. <laughs> What a nice try for Hong his, Kong. His feet are as fancy as his haircut. And some uh, bright hair there. Very nice. Well, if I was not the referee, I would just try to follow that one. <laughs> would you now? <laughs> so Hong Kong extend the lead. They're out to a 12-point lead now. Which means that... Uh, here we go. Oh, there's a smile. There's a smile. Oh, beautiful. Hello. Uh, nice smile. Thank you, ladies. Oh, no. It's disappeared again. <laughs> Bit of a shy smile. <laughs> All right, Hong Kong to restart. 12 points in it, so UAE will need to score twice. A very high one hanging in the air. And the referee's going to call a... For a knock on. Yeah, I believe he's lost it in the play there. It's quite hard under these lights. There's some bright lights, and it is wet out there. So a lot of pressure on these guys to try to catch that bomb coming in. Good tactical decision by Hong Kong to go so high. All right, our man is ready to return, and it is number one, I believe. Is that his number on the back? Oh, it's number one. Yeah, number one is Amosi Vekanua. He is coming, oh, he's warming up again, so he's going to come back on. He'll be nice and fresh, ready for some strong carries like he's been doing all day. It's a beautiful mullet, <laughs> sported by his partner in crime on the other side of the scrum here. Okay, here we go, guys. Very big pack for UAE. They're probably going to contest this. I don't blame them. No. So, all the skittle on the ground, but it's cleaned up nicely. It goes right out to the wing. They've lost a bit of ground here, but that's all right. We have been guilty of going quite high in some of these tackles now, getting pushed off. We talked about those balls that are loose. There's another loose one. Oh, that's a bit better. Much better tackle. Oh, yes, and that's a result. When you have a dominant tackle like that, it's very hard to offload. So that was a very good, strong driving tackle right below the waist. And as a result, uh, we've had a lost ball in the tackle by Hong Kong. Turnover, UAE ball. You must have played a bit of rugby back in your day, Oscar, before you started uh, riffing. Played a bit of rugby? Well, well, I just played for about one year and a half. And I, well, I just played for a short time, so I can't say that a very long time. Oh, those, those tackles hurt. Oh. <laughs> I've been on the receiving end of many of those tackles. Ah, oh, unlucky. Oh, a touch, eh? <sighs> I was looking to offload the ball, but managed to put a foot into touch. So, yes, he's disappointed. Maybe he didn't see where the touchline was. I wasn't quite aware of where he was. Do you sometimes make a mistake like that? I make plenty of mistakes, mate. <laughs> I think my nickname might have been the Mistake King <laughs> back in the day. 
Most of my mistakes are probably around decision making. I've done some kicks that I'm not so proud of. Uh, some of the sole survivor rugby team might, might tell you. Some of them have come off, but uh, many, many, many haven't. Okay, here we go again. Hong Kong are looking to run it out. Maybe they're just looking to hold onto the ball here. They are ahead. They won't want to kick it away because it'll turn the ball oh. over. Oh, 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 this is we do about turning the ball over. It's a gift. It's a, it's a Christmas present come early for UAE. Wrapped, sealed, and delivered. <laughs> and he scores in the corner. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. I just had to check this Hong Kong man wasn't wearing a green jersey because he just slipped him a nice pop ball. And it's number four from UAE, which is Robert Sproul goes over. And he just slides across the line. Uh, very difficult kick from the sideline, but that puts it back into play. It's only seven points now. Plenty, plenty of time on the board. Yeah, remaining time is just only two minutes and 30 yeah, seconds. Over, over, do over have two and a half minutes, plenty of time, plenty of time to go. Yeah, Hong Kong will be disappointed. That was a, uh, had a bow tie on that one. All wrapped up. All right, now what's the tactic going to be, mate? Are they going to go short, long? What do you think? A little grubber along the ground? Well, I think he's going to take a good short kick, I think, sir. Oh, he's going deep. Well, remind me not to play any uh, uh, blackjack with you because yeah, you didn't call it right. And, well, it's good. in the end, it, it's paid off. He's brought it out and Ooh. then they've taken it all the way back in. This should be a scrum. It should be a scrum. Yeah, I mean, to scrum. UAE. Oh, that was a great kick. I didn't expect that. I think uh, Hong Kong will be disappointed here. They could have probably put that ball down inside their own goal. Instead, they chose to run it out, which has resulted in them being driven back into their own goal line and the ball going dead which should mean and it does a very good attacking opportunity for UAE right in front of the Hong Kong try line just five meters out so what do you think mate they're going to go wide here they've got plenty of space out wide if you can get a clean ball out of here I think maybe you go to a short side oh, he's like going yeah. to go himself maybe wants to reset again but got to be careful uh, the referee that. has called. No, not releasing. So they'll have a, they'll have a second go here. No, they have to make a score. They have to make a score. Yu yeah, Yi keeps calling out for offside because the Hong Kong guys are keen to get off the line. There's plenty of hands in there. The referee's going to call again. Yeah, oh, there's a oh, double blow on the whistle. A, that's that, a yellow card. He's going to reach. He's going to go for his pocket. Yeah, number five for Hong Kong, who is Percy McKinley West. We'll go sit, probably, uh, maybe the remainder of this game he'll sit out. Oh. And are they going to make a meal of this? No, they managed to get over. But they do need seven points. Maybe this decision to go wide may have not been the best one. They must convert this to get back to uh, draw the score line. Maybe it wouldn't be to go under the post. But they've got time, and they do have an uh, extra man. So maybe they'll take the shot here. Ah, probably they just want to win the game rather than go for the draw. 40 seconds to go. 40 seconds. So he'll kick this quickly because they want to keep the ball alive. He won't want to take too long. At the same time, if he does convert it, that does draw the scores. Looking good, Look looking that. good. That is a beauty. You could not kick that better. And the substitutes for UAE really enjoy that. A big cheer goes in from the crowd. This is a nail biter. Just 20 seconds remaining, which means we probably only have a couple of players left, and Hong Kong are down to six men. And it's a large kick again over the top. Nobody sweeping back there. We've seen this a few times today. Oh, it's slippery. There goes the hooter. This will be the last play. So if Hong Kong managed to hold on to this, they could choose to kick this out instead of, and they have. They've choose, chosen to take the draw. That makes this pool very interesting now. It's really, really interesting. It's very tight. So it's going to come down to points difference for some of these games. But in the end, UAE managed to come all the way back after being down, plus having uh, a large period of the game with only six players on the field. So well done for UAE for digging deep and managing to come all the way back again. Going ahead. Uh, sorry, not going ahead. Bring you back to a draw. And in the end, Hong Kong deciding... That's enough. We'd like to kick it out. And big smiles uh, from the UAE guys because I think they know what they've done here. They've dug themselves out of a hole which they, they had originally, but now they've come all the way back. And shaking hands, uh, very good gentlemanly uh, gesture there. Guys are very happy. Been some really good friendly games today.
no uh, ill intent uh, cards. There's been a few fouls that have been proper professional, but nothing, nothing uh, dirty. Uh, very clean rugby, and that's what you like to see. So we will take a break, and we'll hear you back for the next one. Right, welcome back to 
Incheon, South Korea, where we have the battle of the giants, the old nemesis of each other. Both love playing each other. This is Korea versus Japan. Uh, Japan have both won both their pool games. Where Japan have had a bit of an upset. They were beaten uh, by a very strong Philippines team earlier on in the day. So Japan will want to win this game. Uh, but this is always a clash of the titans, these two guys. Here come the support. There's a lot of cheering going around the field for the Japanese players. A lot of cheering for the Korean team as well. Here we go. So, Japan in the red and white. And on the other side, South Korea in the blue and white. Here we go. I guess it's going to be a tight game between these two teams. But let's see uh, with the weather out there. I think the rain has stopped. I hope the weather will not... Uh, disturbing the games. So we had a very close game in the previous game. It was a draw. So now both teams will be looking to get another win. The men's competition has been very tight today. Korea looking to go on the outside and manages to break the tackle and he's away. Got a support on the inside. Has he got the wheels? He's going to go all the way and dots it down under the post. Korea draws first blood. Number seven, Korea Jong Min Jung scored the try, the first try for this game. He comes from the missed tackle there, manages to break through. That's the problem. If you miss one tackle, there's always going to be a hole there, and there's the hole. Well done to Korea, gone through. Japan now looking around, having a chat, looking to compose themselves, ready to go again. And here comes the cheer, the roar from the spectators. <laughs> what a great and conversion. The, and the flags go up. Korea ahead, 7-0. Just one minute in. Someone very kindly has brought me a little cup of beer to the uh, commentary box. I just saw the New Zealand women's team win the World Cup, so I'm just going to have a little celebration beer. Not too much, just a little taste. Just a little taste. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying it right now, Simon. Oh, I'm a bit worried. I was sharing so much for that women's World Cup final. My voice is starting to crack up a little bit. So yes. you, might, you might get a few high-pitched squeals as we go through uh, the next few games. I hope you're going to survive for tomorrow's. <laughs> there might be a few more beers tonight afterwards. Anyway, here we go. Korea <coughs> uh, managed to yes. steal that line out oh, and a run against try. the play. Another try. And we can hear the crowd cheering away. <laughs> yes, a win against the line out. Very quickly and they pounce right there. Try. Green flags are waving around the ground. Lots of cheering out there. Let's see if a number 10 could, com uh, could do the conversion. Ideal start for Korea. Already 12 points up, possibly 14. And it's a what beautiful kick. What a beautiful kick, kick uh, by number 10. But just... Nope. It has flags been up. Oh, the flags go up. We ever had one super fear too many already. Wall has gone over. Korea lead 14 0. Here we go again. Going deep. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of these teams are going over the top into the back play. It is wet. Oh, what a step. Oh, great tackle by number four. And great pick up by number 10. And. Here we go, another try. What a wonderful pickup and try by number 10, Korea, Jae Hyuk Yu. Japan managed to get a breakaway there, but I, I think you didn't see the man coming, the defender coming in. He got hit from behind as he was looking for support. Lost the ball in contact, and Korea very quick to scoop up the opportunity and run away and score again. Yes, it was a quick pickup. There's the Korean fans cheering for the team. Well, they, they can't contain themselves. Look at them go. The energy in the crowd is almost as big as the energy on the field. A actual easier kick, but he uh, hasn't quite got there. There we go. Let's try Korea. We never stop.
김현수 한국 선수가 트라이를 하여 고전을 득점하였습니다. Number five for Korea, Kim Hyun-soo has scored a try and s c o r e five points. 한국 선수가 커버전 팀을 성공하여 2점을 추가적으로 득점하였습니다. We are back. Apologies for a few technical issues we've had in the commentary booth, but we are back. And Korea still well ahead, 26 points to nil over Japan. The first half still not over. Yes, the siren just went on. And let's see if Korea is going to do something with the leftover. So this will be the last play. <laughs> the Koreans can opt to kick it out and take the line out. Uh, they have that right, but they can also tap it and then kick it out, which means the, the half will stop. If they are really going to save their energy for the next half, I guess that's going to be a good idea to just tap and kick it out. He might be going for a drop goal here, which is very uh, unusual. He's going to go for a drop goal to get a few more points on the board, and he's managed to what do it. What a good Whoa. kick so by Korea. Smart play. That'll push the score out. To another three, 29 mil. You don't often see drop goals and sevens, but uh, smart play, last play of the half. I totally agree with you. It's very unfrequent to, for this kind of kick to be happen in seventh game. So let's see if we see a smile on the face of the Korean coach. He's looking like he's getting a few high fives and taps on the back of the head. Yes, it's. It's only half time. He looks like I hope you haven't celebrated too early. But uh, yeah, the Koreans are doing a very good job. Uh, excellent uh, work by them. The Japanese will be disappointed. 29 points to nil. They wouldn't have expected that. A uh, bit of shell shock from the Koreans coming out there. There were a couple of times when the Japanese did have a good breakaway, but uh, the defense managed to come across and the spilt ball actually ended up in points at the other end. Yeah, as I totally agree with you, Simon. They took all the opportunity that given to them and just executed all the plan and managed to get all those try. What do you think the Japanese players are saying now in that halftime huddle? Um, it's kind of like a big um, score to catch, but nothing is impossible in uh, sevens if like they really work hard for the next half i think maybe they could manage to get uh to climb the score with korea i can probably imagine what the coach is saying to them but it probably can't repeat those words on the microphone he will be uh, disappointed with that result mm -hmm. and telling those boys they need to get their a into g and get out there and show what they're worth because uh, the japanese team i think are better than this yeah. they are going up against a very very well drilled mm -hmm. well skilled and well executing south korean team mm -hmm. uh, we're about to start again there's the coach sitting back down he'll be feeling pretty good mm -hmm. feeling good with himself he's looking out there though uh, he uh still got another seven minutes to get the job done so south korea will restart this ball here we go Will they go long? Will they go short? I think they went long last time. They might try to go over the top again. 
The rain has stopped here. It's a deep kick. Very deep kick, but a good catch by the Japan player. Trying to use his feet to get around mm -hmm. the defense. The defense is up to it. They're competing very well at the breakdown. The ball pops out the back, but uh, it was on a the ground. Knock on by Korea, I guess. Yeah. Uh, hard to pick up those little balls that are uh, spinning along the ground like that. So unlucky for Korea, they missed that ball. But why did that ball pop out there? Maybe possibly a hand, possibly a boot. Maybe because of the weather too, it was uh, a bit slippery. <laughs> the weather made that ball pop out. I guess so. A lightning bolt. <laughs> A sudden gust of a wind? <laughs> I don't know if the weather made that ball pop out. <laughs> I think that's that's what players say to the referee when they uh, put a hand in the ruck yes. and they pull the ball out. And that's he's asking why it's you. popped out. And he's, <laughs> it was the weather. <laughs> Looking for, for someone to blame it on. Anyway, here we go. Japanese will feed that ball into the scrum. Very hotly contested. Already it's getting contested by the Koreans. Let's come back. They want to be the next team to score. Oh, here. there comes a good step, <laughs> but... Read well by the Korean defense. But Korean really disciplined on their defense. Oh, yeah. we talked about yeah. it all day. Yeah. Yeah. Catch yeah. those balls. And I don't know, come by Japan. It was not a difficult yeah. pass, but I think he caught uh, the Korean player coming at him out of the corner of his eye. But I think Korean really put a good pressure on their defense towards Japan. And often this can happen when you're, when you're chasing a game. <laughs> The pressure in the back of your mind, you got one eye on the scoreboard, one eye on the defender, mm -hmm. and you don't have a third eye to catch the ball. So <laughs> yes, the thing true. you need to focus on first is getting that ball. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Korea with a good attacking opportunity. Yes. And then just to get it back, going to come to the open side, carrying the ball in two hands, running well into the line. Nice secure ball. He's going to go what right up the middle. Great shot pass to the very... That small space there. Number two for Korea, Song Dok Choi. Throws up a salute. His signature, his signature yeah, yes, card. yes. Almost like Captain America, but the Korean version. <laughs> Captain Korea. There yes. You go. <laughs> he looks like he's been for that same enhancement program that Captain America went through as well. You know, he started out really skinny, he comes out of that tank, and he comes out like a big juggernaut. This, this guy looks the same. Great run. Give that man a shield. Yes, another. Captain Korea comes off the field. I, like, I, call, I think I called him a tank the first, the first game, but I called him a former Captain Korea this time. He comes off, gets subbed off. Well deserved break. Yep, high fives all around. Can Japan win this game now? What are your thoughts? I guess it's going to be really hard for Japan to catch up with the scores. Maybe yeah. they could do something to get a try, but I well, look, believe it's going to be hard for them to win the games. Well, Korea just helping them a little bit. They're giving them a bit of a gift. <laughs> They've overcooked that one. They put it in the oven, put it on high. And someone's <laughs> forgot to check it, and it's been burnt crisp in its dust. Way, way overcooked that kick. Here we go. And Japan deciding to go straight up the guts, straight through the middle. Put the smash and bash. Holding on to the... Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Japan have. Um, We're gonna play on here. They want to move. They had it. a lot of opportunity, but they just like. Uh, this will be Korea dangerous. Opportunity because of the silly mistake made by them. We come back. No advantage to Korea. No, we won't come back. There's been a penalty called holding on. So the advantage must be over for the knock on. Yes, and there we go. finally, they've managed to hold on to the ball, not drop it, and they've gone under the post. Who's that? That scored there. Number 13. Timo Sofia made the try for Japan. The first try for Japan. Timo Sofia. Excellent. On the board. Japan Only Japan have got rid of that donut. I love donuts, but that's not a donut you want. Seven looks much better, much healthier for you. It's kind of better right now, really. Korea fumble a little bit, but if the score has gone back. There you go, a bit of a roly poly there. Lucky to get caught for double movement. No one's holding on. Oh! Oh no! Oh dear! Just so if we criticize the Japanese players for not catching the ball, the Koreans have done the same thing. And Japan is not going to let them get away with it. 
Try made by number five, Japan, Tayo Sugino. Tayo Sugino. So the, the Koreans were, they had this game in the bag, but they've decided that they don't want to make it easy for themselves. They want to give out some brochures, some free gift cards, some, some coupons for the Japanese, some free try coupons. The Koreans are going to, uh, the Japanese are taking, thankfully. And well, very well. Oh. Yeah, you know, Korean love to give free gift. That's, <laughs> Did you know that's that? <laughs> interesting way to catch the ball with your legs. When you run out of two hands, you just get your legs to catch it. He's done well to hold on the ball. Ooh, might okay, be, yes, high, high, high around the head. Yep. We're going to go quick ball here. Tap and go. And a little chip through. Referee's going to call. I don't think the, uh, the Korean players were back here. And as a result, there will be a yellow card. Now there's an opportunity for the Japanese team. They're well behind, though. They're still 22 points behind. Only a minute 40 left on the clock. Let's see if Japan could get another one try from here. S seven against six. If we scan across mm. and we see the coaching box for the Korean team, I believe there'd be some disappointment on the face. Mm. Maybe a hint of a smile possibly from the Japanese team now. They've actually come back into this game after being well and truly out. Here we go now, just a direct carry. Staying on his feet, Been driven back though. Places the ball back. He's going to take the ball. Yeah, to come in. He's going to dummy. He's going to have a go. Yes. And yes, well done. And Japan. Number 11 for Japan to go over the line is Yuki Ishil. Very yeah, lucky there. There was actually a, a high tackle on him as well. If that try wasn't scored, possibly a penalty try. But mm -hmm. it was scored. Because of the high tackle, mm. yeah. <laughs> 17 points uh, advantage to the Korean team. What a comeback by the Japanese though, after being 36 points down. A few seconds left for the match to be over for the second half. Let's see. So they've managed to clean this up nicely. Put a fancy feet Get into contact. We all want to hold on to this ball. The, yeah. Oh, I oh, want to do that. That's a clean break. No one chasing. He's looking back, checking on his uh, on his rear vision mirror. He Nobody saw there. the oh. very small space there and just oh. go oh. through the space and make the try. He has time for a quick two-second nap once he scores the try. <laughs> he, was, he was looking through the space all the all the time. Yeah, looking back, look at him. <laughs> Gallops away. Number five for Korea under the post. Hyun Su Kim. He looks like uh, <laughs> he looks like he's he's almost Coach, done. Take me out! Take me out! Siren. So we will have time for one more restart. Uh, the referee is calling for the Koreans to hurry up and get back on side. So game is well and truly over on the scoreboard, but uh, somebody tell the players that because I'm sure they're going to carry on. And uh, what do we talk about overcooking again. Free kick <laughs> to the Japanese players. Coach of Korea will be disappointed with the second half, I believe. The first mm -hmm. half they were cl uh, very clinical, but uh, there's been a lot of mistakes from the Korean side, and it's allowed this Japanese team to really get back into the game. Uh, the Japanese want to finish on a high note. They won't want to... Uh, the game to stop. No, I believe ja uh, the Japan players are not going to give up, so they try to take uh, advantage on the, all the mistakes made by the Korean. There is a slight smile mm -hmm. on the coach's face mm -hmm. there. <laughs> Here we go, Japan to feed. Number five is Tayo Suguni. Feed goes at the back. A little banana style kick. I don't know what, what that was. I'm not sure that's what it was meant to do, but it's gone back. It's, uh, it's come off for them. They haven't really made any ground though. And the Koreans are coming fast and hard on defense. Now an opportunity to go wide and to really stretch the defense. Three tackle by nice number tackle. three, Korea. And Korea are over the ball. Oh. And what will Korea do here? Oh. They're going to have a go or they'll bang it out? You think they'll play this? It's a penalty. Tap and go or kick it out? What do you think? I guess they're going to like 
tap and just kick it out. Yep, and that's exactly yeah. what they've done. <laughs> exactly what they've done. Well deserved win by Korea and a great fight back from the Japanese. Possibly left their fight back a little too late. The score had gone away with them a little bit. As you can see there are a big smile on all the players' face. I think they just feel so happy with this great win over Japan. And a couple of thumbs up from a uh, local supporter in the crowd there. Kind of a thumbs up, then a sideways thumb. The sideways thumb might have come from a few of the uh, <laughs> turnover balls in the second half. Yeah. But uh, yeah, as we expect, a well-contested game of rugby with some big ball carriers and some speed. All right, we'll take a break and we'll join you back for the next one. Welcome back. Let's move on to the next game. It will be between Malaysia versus Philippines. So this is a start up for Malaysia and Philippines team. The 
Philippines were beaten earlier on in the day by South Korea and they managed to get a win over Japan so they are looking pretty good at the moment with Japan being beaten by Korea in the previous game the Philippines can smell victory here they want to come out strong so it is against your fellow countrymen of Malaysia <laughs> But I guess Malaysia really want to gain something from this match too. So let's see if they could do anything to win this match for today. This is going to be their last game of the day. Malaysia have lost two games, uh, one, to the, one to South Korea and one to Japan earlier on. This is what we play. by Philippines. What a quick tap by Malaysia. Good start by the Malaysia. Hmm, Malaysia have nothing to lose here and that can be quite dangerous, whereas the pressure is probably more pressure on the Philippines because they will be wanting to progress to the next round, uh, meaning that the... Malaysians can throw pretty much the kitchen sink at them and see what sticks. So, and oh, look yeah. exactly what they've done here. They've gone right through the middle. And another tap. I believe oh. they're offside there. They're going to go through in Malaysia. That's Have number scored. seven, Malaysia Ahmad Azhak Rifki made the first try for Malaysia. Let's see if they could manage the conversion. That guy looks pretty young. Is it, has he been around for a while? Or? He is young. He's a new player uh, brought to the, uh, to the team for this series. Oh, I remember when I was that young, I used to be fast. No, <laughs> used no, to no, be. What about now? What about now? I, I guess I, you're still fast. I move at the speed of an average glacier. <laughs> so I move, but if you, if you look too long, uh, you don't, can't see me moving. You have, to, you have to come back in a few years and you see I've moved. Uh, not, not as fast as this young man anyway. He, he really gets around and he's got some wheels. Okay. I, I, I hope to have those wheels again, but uh, no, unfortunately not. Not these days. I guess the first try makes uh, Malaysia want to go for more, but let's see if they could sustain the per performance. Yeah, so Malaysia will have their heads high now. They know that they can do it, and their ball is still slippery. The rain has stopped. The Philippines will want to counter attack now. They want to come back. They are inside their 22. Malaysians are going to put pressure on them. And they have managed to tackle them right out in front of their own posts. Will they kick or they're trying to try and run it out. They're trying to run it out. And, oh, nice offload in the tackle. Still standing and look. It's a no no look pass. It's, it's gone backwards though. Well, Philip has got the, uh, the advantage here with the uh, great physicality against Malaysia, but Malaysia, I, I believe they also have a speed. I hope they got speed because that mm -hmm. man it did, did have an overlap, mm -hmm. but the uh, Malaysians have yes. managed to come across and close that down. As you can see, it took like two players to bring down one of the Philippines player. And now they've gone back the other way, a bit of a slip there. So he's going to have to cut back inside. He's not falling for it. He's not going to buy that dummy. Philippines haven't managed to get out of their own half yet. Malaysia need to maintain their defense line. Yes. yes. What he's done Penalty there. Penalty to Malaysia. He's been tackled oh. and he's tried to come back to his feet, mm. uh, but a second tackler has come in. Was uh, holding on. Yeah, which means he has to release mm. the ball and he hasn't done so. As a result, Malaysia get the ball. And they will look to kick it back down into the Filipino 22, putting more pressure on the Filipinos. So, still haven't had a Filipino, uh, Philippine team in <coughs> their in their own half. They haven't got out of their own half yet. Let's see if Malaysia could do something with this line out and maybe try to take the opportunity to get another try. It's an excellent kick by the Malaysians. They pretty much put that right mm. on a button kick down there, mm. just five meters out. That's exactly where you want your line out to be. And here we go now. Perfect attacking opportunity. Bang, bang, bang. Mm. Oh, a bit high. Yeah, high yep, ref has seen it. The arm's gone out. It's good a penalty. They may want to tap and go here. He's going to tap and go again. Be careful. Uh, the Philippines yeah. going to be careful. They don't get caught doing... Uh, oh, uh, what a long look pass there. Another try by number five, Malaysia. Mohamed Sharul Naim Rashid. 
I'm, I'm glad you're here to help me out with these Malaysian names. So of course, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you I'm pretty good with John way. Smith and, uh, and uh, Mark Buchanan, <laughs> but some of these names are, for me, a bit of a tongue, tongue twister. So <laughs> yeah. lucky I have you, have you here. Yeah, so I'm glad to be here to like announce all the players' name. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, our Malaysian viewers might get a bit disappointed if you pronounce some of these names wrong, <laughs> considering that they're, they're your countrymen. <laughs> yeah, maybe I can do for the Malaysia team's name and you can do for the Philippines team's name. <laughs> yeah, we've got the Philippines. Oh, I, I like the, the name of number four, uh, Harrison Blake. That's a very good Filipino name for me to pronounce. There's a few good names in there, but uh, the, we haven't had an opportunity to pronounce the Philippine names yet because they haven't had a lot of ball. That team soon, soon you're going to get the opportunity to announce their name. So it's sort of a run against the play. We expect the Philippines to probably have a uh, advantage here, but they're now down 12-0. Just over one and a half minutes to play in the first half. Here they go now. They've got some ball. What do they choose to do with it? Try to come back inside, not to try pass it outside. Okay, now there you go. I think what the Filipinos are probably guilty of uh, is trying to power no, through the tackle, and they're getting getting tackled pretty much. They're trying to power over the Malaysian team. But the Malaysian team are up for the task. They're making the tackles. Here's an opportunity. He's managed to scrag the jersey. Just a minute left on the clock. And the Malaysian man has been caught on the wrong side of the ruck there, so the penalty to the Philippines. Oh, it stayed in. That could be costly. Well done by the Malaysians to keep it in. And he's going to try to run it back out, and he's managed to beat the first defender. And a no look. Oh, no. Did all the hard work. Oh, no. It's just error after error oh, out there. Oh. Knock on there by Philippines. Oh, that was <coughs> open right up yeah. for the goal line for the Filipinos. That's the best opportunity they've had. Yes. Yeah, and so they've dropped it there. The Malaysians did well. They did all the hard work to get out yeah, of their own They tried their best to maintain the defending line. So we will have a scrum. The Filipinos will get the ball back. It was, that was the original knock on. Yeah, maybe Philippines have this uh, opportunity to get a try from this scrum, but let's see. And the Uda has gone, so mm -hmm. this will be the last play of the first half. The Philippines will want to get something on the board. They won't want to go in empty handed. And oh. fancy feed. Managed to drag him down, though. Where's the support plate? There it is. Coming out quickly now. Yes, the little dummy. And bang, oh. bang. Advantage to the Philippines. And they will go over. by number 14. Oh, in the process, it looks like he's hurt himself. Hope he's okay. I think his leg might have gone up against the post there. He looks like he's in a bit of pain. I think he might have slid in and hit the post there. He's got the ball down. So he's got his team on the board. And this was quite good. Bang, bang. Nice Boom. little onside ball. Oh, oh yeah. that's a lot of pressure on that leg that's gone on the post. Thankfully, that padding was there. Oh, it looks like is that a bit of blood. Straightening it out there. What we don't want to see is lumps where there shouldn't be lumps. and Obviously, blood where there shouldn't be blood. But it looks alright. He's got some tape on his knee, though. Maybe he's got a previous injury there. Might maybe be a bit of bruising. Maybe the coach will sub subs the player. What do you think? Well, he's not looking very happy at the mm -hmm. moment. That looks like a face of pain. Yeah. I believe so. Oh, and both of them. Oh, they're dropping like mm -hmm. flies out here. It is the the last game mm -hmm. of the day. And sometimes uh, when you played a couple of games earlier on, yeah. it really starts to uh, take its toll on mm -hmm. the body. This is where you got to dig deep. But sometimes the body doesn't want to play ball <laughs> and it just starts to break down. So that's what the subs are for. Yes, he's yes. going to jog it off. He's fine. He looks fine. So what do you think? What are, so what are the Malaysians saying? First of all, as a, uh, as a Malaysian, what do you think they're going to say to each other? Uh, I guess it's going to be a tough game for both of them. Like, uh, I think this match going to be like both of the team wants to win this game. But it's going to be 50-50 because, uh, as you can see, Philippines have the physicality, but Malaysia kind of have the speed in their teams. Um, but as you know, in sevens, like 
everything is possible. So uh, the team who made a uh, last mistake can be uh, go for the win for this match. What about you? What do you think about this game? I've been very impressed with the uh, not only the defense but also the attack from the Malaysian team. They uh, they are going up against some pretty big Filipino boys. And the Filipinos have been trying to run them over, but they have been up for the task. So we'll take a quick break and we'll be back for the second half. Back to the second half of the game. Now the score, Malaysia 12, Philippines 7. Good kickoff by Malaysian player, just right on the 10 meter line. Taken well by the Filipinos. And they look to carry on from that score at the end of the second, uh, the first half. And some Ooh. fancy footwork. He's looking to really go in, out, oh, and he the gets Philippines. the ball, but there's cover defense there. Putting on a beautiful display of footwork. Malaysia should maintain the uh, defending line, and then they uh, they should be more disciplined. If they could sustain the discipline of the match, I guess they could make it through till the end of the whistle. And a, just a very straight, powerful mm -hmm. run. He's looking for an offload. Mm -hmm. His hands are free. Couldn't see him, any support players. The counter mm -hmm. run looks pretty good. It was a good counter run there, but nobody cover on the outside and that's number five from the Philippines and that is Nicholas Robertson who scores in the corner looks up no defender in front of him no sweeper there no guard on the side of the ruck so he just goes ahead and just slides over probably one of his easiest tries he's ever scored and here comes the chair from the Philippines on the sideline. Is that a mascot? Is that some mm. kind of cat they've got there? Is that yeah, the, woman, the women's Philippines team player. I believe they're called the Filipino volcano, so I'm not sure. Is that a, a volcanic cat? A cat that lives on a volcano? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> so it's very hard to have a mascot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if, if you're called the volcanoes, it's very hard to dress up as... Oh, there's a person dressed up as a volcano. <laughs> Maybe that's oh, the mascot right so here. so happy right there. The plastic bag <laughs> volcano. Oh, there's another oh. volcano. Here they go. They're everywhere. <laughs> oh, they look so happy cheering up for the teams. I think they're happier than the men. Yeah. So here we go. To put the Filipino men's team ahead. It's not an easy kick. He's pushed it across the front there, so it is unconverted, which does leave us drawed. 12-12. Plenty of time on the clock. This game is far from mm. over. It's going to be who can hold it together. And as I said earlier, it's going to be like 50-50 games. Uh, it's got, it could be anybody games. Uh, both of the teams really want to win this game, but let's see who's going to make it through the end of the whistle. What do you guys think, uh, the viewers who are watching on YouTube? Uh, we can see your comments, so mm. write a comment on there and let us know what you think. Uh, I, I can see a Go Malaysia Go written on there. So there is some cheering. And uh, if you are watching us on the YouTube channel, make sure you give our page a like and a follow. Just back to the game, just as I mentioned that, maybe I've cursed the Malaysians and they have dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. so the Filipinos have it now. And well, to Malaysia? the curse of the commentator, now mm -hmm. it's going back to Malaysia. So they'll have a relieving penalty. Oh, Malaysia can do something from this penalty. Oh, we've got a man from Myanmar. He's commented on there. Welcome to the uh, the rugby and thanks for watching. Love having you here. And then another one from the Philippines. So now they're, they're, they're watching and now the cheers are starting to come in. Now so Malaysia going to take the line out. 
So some support coming for the Philippines now. That jersey looks like it's being grabbed at, pulled at, tugged at all day long. It's starting to get stretched out. It's almost looking like a football jersey with shoulder pads under it. All right, looking like the Filipinos are wanting to contest this line out. They probably have the height, and they do. Look at that, and the height and the steal. Great steal by the Philippines player. Here we go now. The Philippines are going to want to capitalize. They're going around. Very good backdoor pass. Goes around the outside. Great Doesn't quite have it. the winger. And the referee, yes, you oh. must release the ball when you've gone to ground. And the Filipinos are going to, oh, the, sorry, the Malaysians are going to oh. tap and go. Run straight back into traffic. Oh. Unlucky, bit of breakdown of communication. Lost there, playing advantage to the Filipinos. He's going to go straight up the middle. And this is the offload. Bang, step, bang, go, bang, offload. And... And no, they've been cut short. I believe that ball's rolled forward. Yes. Oh, what a great tackle by the Malaysian player. That's what strong defence looks like. That defence was excellent from the Malaysians. It looked like the Philippines were going to score for all money, but the Malaysians managed to drag them back down. So those are game winning. It's game winning defence. Now the subs are going to start coming in. Fatigue is sitting in. The guys are tired. The Malaysian player just don't want to give up and keep on they are fit to keep on tackle and tackle until they made it and yes our Philippines made a mistake there and scrum to Malaysia and there's a substitution by the Philippines to get a fresh leg in let's see what could they do for the team so now feed to Malaysia what can they do here can they run it out of their own 22 I'm sure the Filipinos are going to want to contest. I think the Filipinos have the size here. Yeah. They could push them off the ball. Yes. So the Malaysians are going to want to feed this very quickly and get it out. And they have, but they're right on their try line. I hope they're, they're not going to And kick and go, but I think the sweep is coming across. Oh. See, the sweep is there this time, which means the Filipinos mm -hmm. are going to have a very good attacking opportunity out front. Ball is coming across. They've got the numbers. If they can get it, one more. Nice cut play. But Good defense. Yeah, they got good carry, good carry, good pumping of the legs. There's a lot of Malaysian defenders there, which means there must be some space out wide for the Filipinos. Inside ball. Malaysia need really to be disciplined on their defense. They're looking for holes, they're probing. Looking for holes. Some of the big boys are now carrying it up, yeah. pumping the legs, getting close. Off your feet. I think he's off his feet there, and that's what they're going to oh, call. Oh, oh no. Malaysia. The opposite. They've called that he's been holding on. So the Malaysians are trying to get out of their half quickly. If he's still got the energy, he will go all the way by himself. Let's there see. There we go. Defense is coming across in the Philippines. Inside step, outside oh. step. But they've managed to get him. There's, there's very little support for the Malaysians. And as a result, the ball has come out. Now the Filipinos are going to go. And if he can get this ball away. If he can get this ball away, and there it is. If he can pick it up, that should be open run. He's going to back himself. He's going to come back in. He's going to pay. He's going to look for support. But he's, he's breaking tackles. Left right. Yes, we'll very, very tired. Very tired <laughs> defenders there. Very heavy like that. And he's going to come in. He's going to make it easy for his kicker. He's going to bring it around, and he's going to put it down. And there come oh, the cheers okay. from the Philippine supporters. Jumping up and down, I jubilation. They've managed to break that. I guess both draw. them are really tired right now. Oh, you can see that. Yes. <laughs> you can see how tired these players are. And time is running out on the clock. So the Philippines won't be in a hurry to take this conversion. There goes the siren. That means once the conversion is taken, there won't be a restart. There are bodies everywhere. These guys have left everything out on the field. Hands on knees, hands on heads. Everybody's trying to get as much oxygen into their lungs as they can. Yes, uh, the last few seconds they're just playing like inside out and jogging in, not even like through the full speed. So we are still waiting for the kick to go. Uh, the game will be over once this kick is taken, so it won't mean too much, but is the... Oh, very Ooh, good, nice very kick. Very good conversion by the Philippines. So as we know, these pool plays have been very tightly contested, so every point's going to matter when it comes to uh, the finals tomorrow. Uh, lots of pats, lots of high fives going around. Disappointment for the Malaysians. They did very well to stay in the competition. But in the end, Filipinos too big, too strong, and they managed to come away with the win in the end.
Yes, I believe like Malaysia did their very best uh, to sustain all their performance for today, but it was just unlucky that um, Philippines got the advantage on the physicality. But kudos to both teams. It's hard luck for Malaysia. Let's see for the next game. There's some very happy Filipino women in the crowd are cheering on their boys. Look at them go, pointing at the volcano. <laughs> Explosion time. Yeah, I agree. They are very happy. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think they know how close they were to a possible upset there. I believe the <coughs> Filipinos were the uh, the favourites coming into this. They did they did uh, manage to get a very good upset over the Japanese team earlier on today. And they've managed to, at the very last play, come away with a win. And nice win for the Philippines over Malaysia. We'll catch you next for the upcoming game. See you soon. Now here we here we go. We are back for our 21st game, which is the women's Kazakhstan against Sri Lanka. So, what do you think?
think about this game between Sri Lanka and Kazakhstan? Oh, like, first of all, I think well, Kazakhstan, they play really well. Mm -hmm. And also, Sri Lanka, they also try to play well. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, uh, like, I think Kazakhstan is going to give a pressure a lot to Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. And also try to... Um, um, what should I call that? Like contact, yeah. contact, yeah. As Physically, you know, yeah. yeah. As you know, like the Kazakhstan, they are really, really aggressive. Yes. On the field. All right, let's have a look. Starting from starting kick off from Kazakhstan. And right now it's raining a lot. Let's see what's going to happen in this game. Good catch by Sri Lanka and going to the winner and pass back to the inside. Going to the left side. Going forward. Yeah, that's the knock on from Kazasta. Well, for me, like personally, I think um, Sri Lanka they have to um, move out to the wide or go to the space because. Mm -hmm. Um, if we just, just compare the physical things, Kazakhstan is really big. Well, Sri Lanka, they're also strong, mm -hmm. but they have to. I think they have to move to the space, not go to the play right straight away. I totally agree with you because, uh, as I know, Sri Lanka really have the speed uh, for the player. I guess they should just like spread it outside and maybe when there's the opportunity oh, inside. Oh, what a good pass! Yeah. Like as I said right now, like. If they just go to space and you look at that, they could mm. just go forward like that. Yes. And they can make a score. A penalty <laughs> against Kazakhstan going to his side entry. Going to the left. Oh. Very hard pass to the teammates, I guess. Oh, oh Kazakhstan got the ball. <laughs> what? Number three of Kazakhstan. Alina Askarova made a try. Oh, that's her signatures. Oh, I think she has a boyfriend. Oh, really? <laughs> well, like, if you look at her ceremony, like, sh she's showing up the heart. Ah. And also, and then over here, she has a, a heart. Can you see that over there? <laughs> I think sh she's Perhaps maybe <laughs> her husband. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> oh, look at the coach. They're, they're really happy right now. Can she make it? Oh, it's quite short. But as I say, like, like Sri Lanka, if they just go to space, I think they could make a sc make a score. Yeah, let's see if they have such opportunity for from this kickoff. Oh. oh. Okay, let's see from here. Oh, great step from Sri Lanka. He needs the support from there. Yeah, the rock. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's a high nice. tackle. Yeah. The referee just goes, <laughs> move, moves away. Oh, it was a knock on made by Sri Lanka. Scrum to Kazakhstan. Well, for me, like, my feelings, like, right now, like, I think Sri Lanka. They, I think they don't need to get nervous. Mm -hmm. I think if they just do it aggressively, like then I could, I think they could just play the game well. Yes, I totally agree with you. But sometimes, you know, players tend to get um, a little bit nervous and pressure because of the um, the pressure gave by the oh, another look at opponent. That. Mm -hmm. Look at that! It was a good try. Another heart to the boyfriend, I think so. <laughs> and number three, Alina Askarova. It was a good gap that she made it through. I hope that mm -hmm. the blue fan looks like the game. Of course. Number three from Kazakhstan has scored a try and scored five points. The balance, oh. brilliant. Ball carrying, yes. brilliant. Everything's really brilliant. The leg power. I think the head coach has a habit mm -hmm. putting a cigarette on his mouth. 
Oh, how can you yeah. notice that? Oh. <laughs> Kick off from Kazakhstan again. Nice and high ball from the kickoff. Let's see if Sri Lanka can get any opportunity from here. We just need to set a clear, nice rock and s swing. Oh, there's going to be a loop, but that's a defending. Oh, I think that should be a penalty. Mm. It's definitely mm. sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess Kazakhstan is going to use this opportunity for getting another try. Let's see. There's a... Ooh, look at that power. I think this is going to be rolled away, I think so. Oh, she rolled away. That was a little lucky. Going to his side. Oh. Maybe she thought she's going to be a, just a dummy space. runner. But yeah, number eight got the ball and make the try by Azalika Pichugina. Look at that space, man. Uh, she could s find that space and go to go to the space and make a try. It was really, really beautiful. It was just a small gap there, but she managed to make it through to the try line and scored the try. Now the score is 17 nil. The remaining time is one minute. Uh, before we start the kickoff, uh, start the restart. Let's go substitution. I think so. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's too late. Kick off from Kazakhstan. I guess Sri Lanka should try to uh, penalty to Kazakhstan. Going to the side. Going forward. Oh, there we go. Look at that. She's really. She is small, but. I mean, I saw her games before she mm. was just like a beast. Yeah, I think, yeah. yeah definitely, yeah. Not kind of advantage. Mm. So, uh, when you were uh, play, when you played with with um, Kazakhstan, how did you feel and how did you prepare to play with them? To be honest, I was really um, during my first game with Kazakhstan last time. They were just like. Uh, very big and the aggression that they show really made us like oh should i go inside should, or just should i just stop uh, running through them because after i get i got tackled they just like oh they will contest for the ball like really really hard they will not give you any chance to play the ball at all or a scrum for sri lanka I think it's going to inside, yes, definitely yes. Going to inside. Nice tackle from mm -hmm. Kazasa. Tackle again. Oh, I think oh. she got the ball. Before that, there was a roll away. Mm -hmm. She interfered there, got the, the player who was coming to the gate. I think he's going to say another roll away. Mm -hmm. Yep. And quick tap, play on again. Going to the side, into the middle side, middle side. She's not going to do something from here. Hopefully, we can make it. They really play in a like very sh small area. If you can see, they don't like try to spread it out wide. But I think there's the game plan, I guess. Oh, uh, look at that. This is the play that I'm looking forward to see. She's re I mean, to compare with other team players, she's quite small, but she's really fast and like a beast. Number five, Kalina Krasavina made a try for Kazakhstan. Yeah, right actually, under the post. Yeah, actually, um, when I saw the game, Kazakhstan against China, well, number five 
Galina, she made a, a, a brilliant try and like it, th this is also impressive and, mm -hmm. and like she's really quick and like I'm yes. really as far as I'm concerned she's one of the player that uh, the the other team should be aware of because she got the speed and she's really aggressive on the field now let's see so, as a commentator, how, how do you feel about for today? So far, um, since morning until right now, I feel it's a really good opportunity for me. I mean, it's kind of a different whole experience to be a player and to be a commentator. It's a new atmosphere that I'm, I'm looking forward to try new things in rugby. What about you? Oh, like, you know, I, I'm a referee right now in Korea and like, well, as a referee, I could speak a lot of things, but like, as a commentary, like, it's a little bit nervous, it was a little bit nervous, and also, um, like, I always think as a referee, so, well, it was quite interesting, and like, if there's a chance again, I, I really want to do it again. Oh, but senior, not English, senior. In Korean. In Korean. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Because like, well, I could speak English um, a bit well, but mm -hmm. like, um, what is she called? But like? it's gonna be like, I mean, this is such a great opportunity for both of us to be here right now. Maybe we could do like in the future with our own language. What do you think? Oh, that's good. <laughs> you in Korea and me in Malay. Oh, I speak in Korean, you speak in Malay. Maybe we can try it someday. <laughs> put the translator in the middle side. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Oh, right, the second half starts from Sri Lanka. Let's have a look what they could do. Grab a kick from mm -hmm. Sri Lanka. Oh, look at that. I think the coach said to Kazakhstan a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Compared oh, to the first half, it. like, they got really aggressive. Mm -hmm. A touch from Sri Lanka, a ball goes to Kazakhstan. Great line on by Kazakhstan. Give the ball to the side. Oh, oh I'm lucky there. No con by Kazakhstan. Well, the support <coughs> was really quite good, mm -hmm. but like I think they just need to be patient. Yes. They are about like three players in the ruck. Going to Sri Lanka. I guess they changed a few position. Just now, um, Galin, uh, Alina Askarova was the scrum half. Now she's playing on the prop side. Interesting. Well, uh, tactically, mm -hmm. a lot of teams change their position. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, um. For um, uh, when I was in LA in not last year, also mm -hmm. for this year, mm -hmm. when I was translating for national team, we always say to players go to a, for a prop or like mm -hmm. go to outside. We always change like that. I guess it all depends on the. Um, oh, what a good kick! The opening that they're facing off. Oh, playing chasing a football a and there you go, another try by number five, Galina. Krasavina. Well, I think like when I saw the game against mm -hmm. China, like, I think she is a, a key player. Yes, yes. Number five, Francis, just has scored a try and scored five points. Well, I hope that she also have a boyfriend. And if she goes back to Kazakhstan, I have a good, good, good clap from a boyfriend. Conversion kick was quite short. Now remaining time is four minutes and fifteen seconds. Sri Lanka still have the chance to get maybe at least one or two try from here, but if they try to improve from the mistake, I guess they could get some 
anything out of the match, the, the remaining time left? Well, as I said the first time, like, well, when I said to um, when I said to you that if Sri Lanka just go to a space, mm -hmm. and then uh, after that when they went into space, mm -hmm. they also like they went to space and they just moved out more than like 20 minutes. But right now, like they they got really nervous against. I guess they disaster, still so. don't have the chance because like the defender like keep on coming in very fast and close all the gaps for them. So every time they try to get some space, uh, the ball just get uh, grabbed by the Kazakhstan player. Nice pass from mm. Kazakhstan going to forward, mm -hmm. going to try again. Kazakhstan number one. Veronica. What a good try. Kazakhstan coach like uh, seems like very relaxed after a very big difference on the scores. Kick off from Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. uh, the ball just bumps on the grass. And let's see. Where's the ball? Uh, it's penalty to Kazakhstan. I guess they're gonna get another try here. Let's see. Oh, There's yeah. a big advantage there. Swing it out. Yes, there you go. Number eight. Yes, another try by number eight player. Azalika Pichukin. Eight step in, and there you go. Try there. Well, I think Kazakhstan is like they're using the field in the wide place mm -hmm. and also in the short place, mm -hmm. and also they could recognize the space and also yeah. they can recognize if is there a space in the outside mm -hmm. or inside like that. So that's why that if they catch the ball yeah. after they just try to scan where's the space and it goes to the forward. Oh, look at the happy face. Eh? All the player like, um, they could see all the gap uh, on the field, so they took advantage of that. I think after a long day, after a uh, few games, they could like play together very, very well. Oh, oh I think they got the ball again. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a little bit lucky. Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. Now you were right. Uh, they have the chance to like uh, move the ball wide outside, but they just decided to go back inside and they lost the ball over again. Yes, it's a away, yeah. I do agree about that. Mm -hmm. Yellow card, I think she moved the ball away. Well, the thing is that Kazakhstan in this moment they they just give the give the pressure to the Sri Lanka. That's a scary thing from Kazakhstan. I think they're going to make another try. Yeah. I think so. I think oh, that was, was a bit unlucky. It's going to be a last play mm -hmm. for for Sri Lanka. I hope that they can make a try right now. Let's see. But Kazakhstan, they they will not make them. Make it a try. Yeah, of course, definitely. Time is on. What's the call there? I think the scrum was not um, st stable. Yes, yeah, stable. Um. Oh, 
Ah, she's going for the possessed too. If they can make it. Not the last try by Kazakhstan. Good work by Kazakhstan. We want to look at the power. The power of the scrum, the forward packs of Kazakhstan. She seems so happy with the try. Number 16 from Kazakhstan. Good try. What is the final score right now? The final score will be. Kazakhstan. Oh, that's sweet for the conversion. Oh, that's a little bit cool mm -hmm. kick. Anyway, the Kazakhstan won the game. Score is 46 nil. Congratulations to Kazakhstan. Unlucky for Sri Lanka, but they did really a great job. Like try to maintain their energy out of the games throughout the last whistle. So for the next game, we'll be China against Hong Kong. We, I really expect that this game is going to be really tough. So see you in a minute. It's a match that just ended. The Kazakhstan team beat the Sri Lanka team for 46 to 0. The next match will be played between China and Hong Kong.
Now we are back again. The game China against Hong Kong. I do really um, expect that this game is getting really tough. Mm -hmm. How do you think about this one, Ria? Uh, once again, I, f I felt that it's going to be 50-50 uh, games, but uh, both teams going to do their best and make the hard for each team to get a try. But let's see who will get a try first for this match. Oh. <laughs> Before the game starts, it, there's a heavy rain, mm -hmm. rain right now, so we cannot imagine that who's going to win or not. This is going to be really, really tough. The rain is just playing with us, I guess. It's like rain stop, rain stop, but I hope it's going to be okay for the team. Kick off, starting from China. We would like to introduce references from the match between Japan and Hong Kong. Japan is to China. Goes out. Go to the side. Look at the speed. China is there really, really quick. Try to cut inside and... Ooh, she just fans up every defender. And let's see. This number four. She passed back. Again, inside, and I guess she should just pass it outside and all the way to the winger. Oh, oh she got the space pass. there, great and pass. she's just gonna run up until the try line and make the try there. Number 11. Um, I think the name is Sha Kwan Liu. Mm -hmm. well, what a great run. Look at that. She looks really, really scared. She is. Yes. Good conversion mm. kick from China. Now the score is China 7 to nil. Well, Hong Kong, they also have a chance right now, so. Mm. I hope that they can Number 10 from control. China has succeeded a conversion kick and scored two additional points. Remaining time is 5 minutes and 10 seconds. Another kickoff by China. Let's see if Hong Kong could... Oh, I guess it's a knock-on by Hong Kong. No, like, as like right now, also before a kickoff. Well, I think Hong Kong got nervous and like, I think they don't feel confident mm -hmm. right now because at the first time also they knocked the ball to the forward. Also right now they knocked the ball to mm -hmm. the forward. I think the coach is going to be really uh, get angry with their mm -hmm. players. But anyway, like I hope that they could get some get more confidence. Uh, but I guess we, this is because of the weather too because it was it is still raining out there. Just going to his side. Mm -hmm. The middle. Mm -hmm. oh, to get inside. That. Is there anybody to support? Yes, number nine and offload to number two. And look at that. Oh, trying to cut in back inside. Oh, she just do all the stuff and make it through to the try line. And she's gonna take some. Okay, try by number one. Number one from China. Well, I have a question right now. Um, some coaches ask to players to use the referee. That means like, if there's a ball carrier and then the coach says to that ball carrier, run to the referee. How about you? Do you, do you sometimes use that tactical things? Run to the referee? Uh, not before. I never done it before. Oh, yeah. Because sometimes when I when I ref for that game, mm -hmm. and sometimes like players run to me, mm -hmm. I'll get I'll get surprised. Of now. course. And also after that, like when I heard those tactical uh -huh. things that, well, I heard that the coach saying to the player, use the referee, mm -hmm. run to the referee like that, and then after that. I, I sometimes like recognize that play is coming to me, so I just run away. From that I think maybe there's a new tactical kind of playing because actually it's a good. I mean, it's not like to say it's good, but because uh, the opponent will never see it's coming through. So they, when the referee is blocking the way, they couldn't. Maybe they just 
could get it and like maybe it could be easy for the player to pass through. A scrum to China. Okay, another. Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Oh, speed. Ooh, what a great. Going to forward. I'm trying oh. to offload, but she failed to do it. But luckily, there's support from the teammate. She's trying to look for an option. And. Ooh. 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 Yes, definitely that's a knock on, yes. Well, like, as a referee, like, as you just saw just a few seconds ago, mm -hmm. like, sometimes, like, players, players try, try to challenge the referee, mm -hmm. like, have you, tr have you tried to challenge the, to the referee before? Um, for me, I never did it before, but my teammate, like, uh, got used to it, but, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I don't like to challenge the referee, because no matter how far you challenge for it, there's nothing you can do, because the referee is always right on the field. Yeah, definitely, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> A rough. Well, a good shield from Hong Kong. Good pass. Oh, oh that was a little bit high, but. Oh. It was definitely a high tackle, yeah. Let's see if Hong Kong can do something from here. Oh, great tackle by China. I guess it's hold on. Yep, hold on to the tackle. Great yeah. dummy pass. I think it's going to uh, offside. Yes, definitely. Mm. Yeah. Oh, look at that player. Mm. Maybe a quick tap. Going oh. to forward. Great offload there. Ooh, Ooh what a great fence <laughs> off. <laughs> oh. What a pass. I think that's going to go all the way. I think so. It's going to take a lot of effort. Just going to get a quick tap and. Just swing. Oh, she missed it, but she tried to recover from it. Yes. Um, That's a full <laughs> knock on. Knock yes. on. Wow, well, look at that, Paul. I think that player got down because of the uh, number two from China. I think so. She was really powerful. I think the first half's gonna end really soon, but let's wait. What's the call from the referee? I don't know. For me, like um, as a referee, mm -hmm. I saw a lot of situation like that, mm -hmm. and like I always think about like, was there any high tackle? Um. Or, like, was there any foul plays? Try to consider. I try to think about the safety mm -hmm. for the players. I hope that she's fine. She's trying to talk to the AR. Well, let's see. What's the final de uh, decision by the referee? She's she tried to get confirmation from the AR. Mm. Let's see for the signal by the referee. What was it? Oh, I think it's just going for Strong. a scrum. going to Hong Kong. I hope that they can make a try right mm -hmm. now. Oh, they the just ball. wanna save the energy for the second half because the scores right now uh, for the first half is China 14 and Hong Kong nil. I guess if like Hong Kong can fix uh, their mistake on the first half, I think they can, they could catch the score right, uh, for the second half. Well, the scores right now is not really um, it's big really gap, right? It's not a big gap. Yeah, it's not a big gap. Yeah. Yes. Well, I think a lot of coaches has been changed. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I could see that the Chinese they prepared a lot, mm-hmm. like their physicals and like passing skills, running skills. Mm-hmm. I think compared to the for um compared to the past, mm-hmm. I think they their levels got up really mm-hmm. uh, really high. Yes, yes, yes. But also in Hong Kong, they also sing. Mm-hmm. So it's a break time, and see you in, see you when we start the game. Now it's the second half, starting from Hong Kong. Well, I hope that they have. Oh, I hope that coaches said to the players about tactical things and get the try. This is the kickoff by Hong Kong. <whistles> Very nice kick. Ooh, good challenge by the Hong Kong player, but still balls with the China. And there you go. She's going to oh a bit dummy, but she managed to make the pass. Oh, and here pass. you go, number eleven. <laughs> she just got the speed there and just go all by herself. What a good try! Well, at the first time of the kickoff, the Chinese recognized that well, the, they. I think they thought that Hong Kong will make a mistake, mm-hmm. and after they. They just stand on the, their their own position mm-hmm. and got the ball mm-hmm. and just moved out to the side mm-hmm. and give the ball to the key player. And after they made they made the try, I think yes. they did a brilliant a brilliant job. Yeah, Conversion kick. Ah, it was a little bit unlucky. It was really close. Really, really close. But yeah, let's see if they could redeem it for the next kickoff. Now the score is 19 nil. Remaining time: five minutes and 50 seconds. Kickoff from China. Oh, oh little mistake there, but oh, I, I think it's gets high tackle, high. right? That's a little bit high. Yes. Yep. Going to the side. Nice tackle oh. from China. <laughs> If you just look at the defense, like mm-hmm. Chinese, their 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 pressure that was really really brilliant. So that's why like Hong Kong just kicked the ball yeah, out I beli- to I escape believe from that diesel. Yes, I believe they just want to release the pressure on the half. That's why that's the only option for them to like kick kick the ball off forward. Nice ball from mm-hmm. China. Back to the right side, and there you go oh on the oh winger. Oh, she got the. She just, I guess, she just jog, striding maybe. Yeah, there you go. Another try nice by try. number four. Ooh, ooh, speed, pass, everything's really brilliant. Look at that. It looks like she doesn't use like the full energy, but there's a little strike there, but she managed to made it through the try line. Conversion kick. Did she make it? Yeah, yes, she made it. Very good conversion by number 10. For example, if it rains right now, then um, 
the there's gonna be a huge change for uh, tactical things, right? Could you just explain one of the uh, tactical tactical things which you changed before? Oh, uh, throughout my experience, uh, for us when playing uh, during the rainy weather, it's just like it's gonna be good for us to against like uh, the fastest team because the rain weather will make them a little bit slower but uh, in defense we also need to be like uh, very uh, careful with our basic stuff like especially the ball handling Line out to Hong Kong oh yeah, okay, 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 short. Mm -hmm. drop drop well, actually, like, what I'm thinking is that if it rains a lot, mm -hmm. um, I think the ball should go to the forward, not to the backward, mm -hmm. because like, because like, the ball is slippery, and also mm -hmm. like the accurately accurate thing, accurate number is going to get low, mm -hmm. and so I think in a line they should throw the ball to the front front line, but they they throw the ball to the backward, so I think they they just fail to get the ball. As far as I'm concerned, like they try to play m more close to each other and try to like make the short pass, but through the gap instead of like passing it out wide because to um, just to not make a handling error because uh, the the rain will make the ball very slippery. Right now, the Hong Kong gives a. a a good pressure mm. to China. Oh, but they probably kick there, but let's see if China could take the ball. And no, Hong Kong is out there. I think players have he's going to have a good shower tonight. I believe so. I hope that they don't get fever tomorrow. <laughs> yes, yes. Ooh, great line out by China. And there you go. Looping, but Some no. Advantage. She's trying to go back to the right side. Oh, I think I guess it was a slippery ball there. To the side, but what a great the start by number three, China. And here you go. What a lovely try by number three. It was, yeah, it was a really good step, though. Number three, China. I scored the try and scored five points. A good conversion from Wenyang Cheng. I guess the rain is getting heavier out there. Then I think I won't be able to ref tomorrow. It's really tough. Um, it's gonna be more tough for the players actually. Oh, I guess. To this point, I guess Hong Kong can't do anything here. They keep on losing the ball. Scrum to China. Let's have a look. Now, remaining time is 10 seconds. Going to, going to the side. Oh, God. <laughs> Very good loop there, and so coming back inside, and I think they're going to make a try again. I think so. I think China's not going let's to see, give let's up. Let's see. Oh, oh unlucky, unlucky there. Ooh, it's a little bit high there. Oh. So no advantage, and that game is over. Oh, it was like it was a little bit unlucky to mm. Hong Kong. I think so, but they did a great job. Yes. Especially on defense. So the score is China 33, Hong Kong nil. It was a little bit unlucky, but the Chinese, they did a great job. And congratulations to the Chinese team. Kudos to Hong Kong for giving a good fight to China. Let's wait for the next game. See you in a few more minutes.
the China tip that the Hong Kong team 33 to 0. The next match will be played between Japan and Thailand at 19.35. Good evening, everybody. So we're here for the 
Japan against Thailand and my name is Oscar and in the commentary we have Nick uh, Simon sorry Simon how are you you wish you had Nick but <laughs> sadly he's not available and you get Simon <laughs> sorry mate <laughs> uh, well, sometimes you don't always get what you want like the weather today we're getting a downpour it is coming down hard so these women, uh, the last two games of the evening. Uh, so we now have a Japan, Thailand, and just after that we have Malaysia, Philippines to round out the day. So here we go, uh, Thailand kicking off, and Japan will want to take this cleanly. It's very wet out there, so we're going to have to watch the hands. Uh, just on the colouring there, Japan in the red and white, and Thailand looking like bumblebees. A bit of a black and yellow stripe theme going on. Thailand are coming oh. up very, oh, if that, if that ball's stuck, there was a big hole there, but couldn't quite uh, bring it in. So the referee will be playing advantage to Thailand. She's looking to go on the outside, coming back now, running out of space. And now they go across the field. There's an extra woman out there if they want to get the ball out. Just has to straighten. Oh, that's good. Uh, uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. that, nice call the Oscar. So a good tap and go. Looking for the cut ball. Sometimes these these little manoeuvres in this weather really struggle. It's raining so much they can probably barely, <laughs> barely keep the water out of their eyes. You can see how wet it is out there. Well, I think they don't need to take a shower. They just need to take a shower in the pitch and just take it off with a, with a towel. So. Yeah, it's pretty wet out there, mate. So those jerseys will be saturated. So they're probably carrying an extra uh, five kilos of water on their bodies. So it can be quite tiring. Picked up the leg there, but the referee is going to call knock on by the Japanese. So, as she went to pass that ball, a cheap little hand came in and displaced her leg. So, put away with that one. Now the scrum feed to a Thailand scrum. Try and get this ball out quickly. It's hard when you. Is this wet? She's going to go back inside. It's just as difficult to defend as it is to attack in this kind of weather. She'll give it to one of the speedsters. She's going to cross field though. She's going to go all the way around the Japanese defence, it looks like it. But what a tackle! Textbook around the legs and got her out. Very nicely done by the Japanese. Will Tyler live in Jiwaran? Will she just ran away just across the pitch? But I think she's was trying to get the ball and go to the floor and make a try but anyway like well, I think that's it like that makes the team a little bit bad yeah, you can often uh, run away from your support here very uh, nice uh, quick throw to the line out the front here but referee is saying it hasn't gone the five meters so the Thai woman will get the scrum like a bloody uh, water park out there. <laughs> you can see the water pouring off the faces of the players. Even to pass the ball is so slippery. That's a good option. The Japanese are coming up very, very quick and it could cost them. It's been tapped through and it's gone dead off a Japanese player's foot. So the referee's going to bring it back out. I think he's going to go for a five minutes from I think so, yeah. Yeah, so that kick through uh, was actually a good option because what's happening is the Japanese players are really rushing up on defence. So a little stab through, and with these weather conditions, it can be quite tough. So you can almost die. If you wanted to score a try, you could almost dive five metres out and you'd just slide straight through. You know? So if the Tiger girls want to, they could probably run and dive and slide right underneath the Japanese defense. <laughs> that's, how, that's how wet it is here. So here we go, trying to get it in. It's going to come right at the back. She's gone out the back door. They've gone to the blind side. Bit of one-on-one, -on -one, but they're getting some support, the Japanese defenders. Yeah, that's a nice jackal. Yeah, straight over the ball there. 
problem I think there with the, uh, the Thailand attack was that she's by herself out there. Uh, so if she did get around the player, yes, she would have scored, but the problem comes when you get tackled and you don't have the support player, uh, whereas the Japanese were there, managed to get over and managed to steal that ball back. So now they're going to try and run it out of their own 22. And in these conditions, it can be quite difficult. But they've managed to get an overlap here if she's got the wheels. She, oh, she's chosen to go back inside. Oh, very, very good tackle right around the legs. Chopping tackle. Another attack to, from Japan. Oh, it's a slippery, slippery banana out there. And it's just slipped right out of her fingers. And forward. Just when the Japanese were looking to open things up, just when they were looking to be a bit dangerous, heading down to the opposition half, the ball... Yeah, slipped right out of the fingertips there and giving them all back to the Thai woman. You can just see how slippery it is. It's been, we've had five minutes and 30 seconds of play and we've had no scoring. So it's just a reflection, I believe, on the conditions, not on the, uh, the players themselves. Because in previous matches, both these teams scored plenty of points. But it's really hard to hold on to that, that pill. So even there, you can sort of see it's going along the ground. He's opting for Ooh. a kick, but it's being charged down, oh, and okay. she... That should be a yellow card, I think, sir. So. Yeah, she's Definitely throwing that arm card. out instinctively. I don't think there was any malice in it, but just instinctively, she's throwing the arm out, caught the Japanese player, which is now a professional foul, and off she goes to the bin. Uh, yes. If she could take that kick again, I believe she wouldn't have taken it. Now the Japanese are hot on attack. So they'll be trying to use their number advantage, oh. and just a very good step there. Bang, bang, and right underneath the sticks there for uh, Michio Suda, number 12 for Japan. To open up the scoring. It's almost <laughs> been a full <laughs> seven minutes, a full <laughs> half, <laughs> and it's our first points on the board. Bang, bang, right there, right underneath. Well, the, the player went to the bin, but I think if she comes back to the pitch, I think there's going to be a, a, cha a huge change from tactical things and I think they could make a try and also the score is only just 7-0 I don't know why they're giving water for there's plenty of water coming out of the sky <laughs> all they need to do is tilt the head back and open their mouth and I'm sure there'd be plenty of relief fresh as it comes right out of the air so <laughs> filtered by the clouds or you could just if you're really thirsty just take a mouthful of your jersey and take a little and you'll, you'll get plenty there so maybe it's just instinctual that you uh, take a mouthful of water <laughs> from the bottle as it comes off. So a quick restart here. Very short ball, and it's been knocked on by the Thai woman. So we're playing advantage to the Japanese. They're going to have a free roll of the dice. Looks like the referee's dropped his arm, so advantage must be over. And trying to go on the outside, but the Thai defense is up to it. Oh, I think that's inside entry, I think so. The referee has called a Japanese player side entry coming to the ruck. So, last play of the first half. The Thai women are going to have an opportunity to level up if they can. Oh, nice little stiff arm there. Looking for some options, and it's just a bang through. And we're the chasers. We've got the speedster coming through. Pressure is on. How's she going to approach this? Sliding in and then standing up. Staying on her feet. Now one knee's gone to ground, so they have to release the player. Fend off there. You might just kick this out. Oh, it's a bit of a not a, a bit of a different kind of pass, sort of a spinny pass there that went out the back there, and they've kicked it out. It's probably the best thing for them to do because they do have a uh, a player in the bin. No, sorry, it's the so they managed to kick that out. Uh, seven points to nil to the Japanese team over the Thai woman. And they'll go and do a huddle. And get a much needed break from a very fast paced game. What's your thoughts, Oscar? What are your thoughts, mate? Oh, right now, I was just thinking about taking a shower or like. I mean, what are your thoughts on the rugby? <laughs> oh, uh, the rugby. <laughs> uh, yes, I mean, what Sorry. do you think about the game? I know. Sorry. I, I saw you staring off into space. I thought you were really analysing the game. I thought this man must have some something intelligent to share with the, the audience. So I wanted to pick your brain, but apparently you just think about having a shower. So uh, we'll leave you there. Uh, we'll take a quick break and we'll catch you again for the second half.
Now the kickoff starts from Japan, and let's have a look at what they could do. There's nothing in this game, just seven points, that's only one try. Thailand very much in this, and they would have spoken at half time about just holding on to the ball, controlling the game. Yeah, and they won't want to be doing giving the ball away like that. Too easy, and they've done it right out in front of their posts, giving Japan a very good opportunity here. Carry it through, but yes, I think the Japanese player did there. Guilty of trying to get back on her feet and having a go, but not releasing the ball. Referee very close to that and picked it up nicely. So, penalty to Thailand. Bit of relief there, so they'll be able to kick this out. A kick from Thailand. They have to get, get escape from that place, from the Diza. Yeah, not a lot of distance on that kick, but it's gone out. They've got the line out now. So they want to win this ball and they want to get some running game going down the field. You can just see how wet it is. Everybody in the back there wearing the plastic bags. Nice. Ah, yes. Not but straight. it looked nice from this angle because they won the ball, but obviously the referee's right on the mark there and she's called that. The ball has not gone straight. So, scrum option will be taken from the Japanese. Very good attacking opportunity here. They are just in, not that far out, 22 metres out. Got their full stretch back line out there. Now that it's just going to have to make sure that ball sticks to the hands because it is very wet. Ooh, he manages to beat her nice opposition pass. player. Trying to go on the outside. But looks like the cover defence is coming across. to go again now Ooh. oh god that looked painful oh. i felt that here in the commentary box <laughs> oh we're going for it for thailand i have to check that she hasn't lost any teeth from that <laughs> that palm off there this is why you wear mouth guards kids not just for running into people but getting it face hands in the face <laughs> right now japan you can do counteract these these rocks He's starting to push the, the Thai woman back. Need some go forward ball here. Just hanging on to the one leg. Looking to reset, decide if the kick's the best option. A lot of space in behind. He's just checking over his shoulder to see where the Thai defender is. And she's managed to pick it up very well. Oh, yeah. Maybe that was not the best option. I don't think she was actually expecting that. I think she was expecting uh, the Japanese player to run it back into contact and po possibly support her, but the ball did come out the side there. Can't see much at the moment. There's a big purple shirt in the way. There we go. <laughs> I believe that there may be our Korean linesman down on the field. He's a better door than a window. Can't see much through him, so cameraman zooming in on a purple shirt. But here we go again. And... Lost forward by the Japanese, giving the Thai woman a very good attacking platform. So they are very close to the centre of the field. Time back on. Let's see if they can utilise this ball. Still, still plenty of time on the clock, got four minutes. I hope that Thailand can make a try for this moment. So good feed, good ball. It's coming out clean. They're giving it to the speedster. She may want to try to go around, but last time the Japanese were up for the task, they, they came across and cut her down. And she's run into two players there, but placed it back nicely. That ball possibly gone straight to ground, but judged to have gone forward by the referee. So that's another wasted opportunity. The ball will go back to the Japanese women. 
Now, it's their turn to attack. Similar sort of position on the field. I think there's some substitutes coming on. Normally what sort of happens around this time of the game. Halfway through the second half. Tired bodies out there. It's getting really tired. Referee having a good chat to the ladies. Okay, here we go. Scrum feed for Japan. Off the back. Pops it up. Ooh, some very heavy collisions out there. Running straight. My old coach used to say, better to run at branches, not at trees. Uh, but she ran straight into a tree there. <laughs> a tree being a tree, a Thailand woman tree. And she got smoked. Uh, but penalty to Japan. So they will still have an advantage here. Are they going to kick for the corner, do you think? Because the lineouts have been very hard to regain the ball. So yeah, I think they're going to go for a scrum. The scrums in the wet weather are probably a bit easier to get the ball back. Whereas when that ball's coming in off a line out, it can be quite hard to regather. Here we go. So, plenty of time on the clock still, like we said. Two minutes, just under two minutes, 30 left. Hands come in there, but the ball's gone back. Good clean out. Some very heavy collisions out there. Both teams eager to dominate the collision. And not quite going to hand, just on the fingertips. And she spilt it forward. Unlucky. Not, a, not an easy uh, pass to take in. But if she did manage to bring that in, I believe it was a clear run to the line. And so she may have had a little peek up and saw there was no defenders in front of her. But unable to take that catch. Now the remaining time is 1 minute 40, 54 seconds. I hope that... Yeah, because of the, uh, there's been a lot of knock-ons and drop balls here. The referee's uh, stopping the clock quite often. So it may feel like the game's going a lot longer. It's just because the ball's been out of play so long. Uh, a little chip over the top. Very well covered by the Japanese. She's come across a nice little slide there. Slide and recover. And just held on by a jersey. Looking for options now. Sides to go and down the blind sides. A lot of traffic down there though, not a lot of space. And almost looking to take a knee, like an old-fashioned football knee there, gone straight to the ground. Didn't want, didn't want to know about the defender. Looks like the Japanese are almost killing time here. They're not in a hurry. We're good in a minute, but very good counter -act. Yes, and that's the result from her hard work. Yeah. Put in the work and got the results. Japanese just got caught being a bit complacent and not really staying strong in the ruck. Uh, the Thai women have come over the top and pushed them off their own ball. As a result, it is now a Thai feed. And the ref is getting a little angry at the Japanese women. I think they are slowing things down. They're not that keen to set the scrum quickly. Because there is only 30 seconds left on the clock and they are ahead by 7 points. Thai team are wanting to score, wanting to score twice, but if they can score once at least, uh, and again, and again, handling error. Looks like she's a bit upset. She probably believes that ball didn't go forward, but uh, the ref has judged that to go forward. Just 10 seconds. You can see the board in the background there. Uh, it looks like eight minutes on the clock on your screen, but if you just look above you, above the scrum. Yep, and there goes the Huda. This will be the last play if they manage to get it out, and they do. Japan managed to hold on to a real nail-biter. Very wet, very sloppy actually handling by both teams, and that's probably just down to the weather. It's uh, like trying to hold on to a uh, slippery fish out there. You know, that thing is trying to get back in the water. That ball is very, very hard to hold on to. And uh, it kind of reflects on the score line. We saw some very high-scoring games earlier on today when the weather was a bit dry. But as the rain has come down, the score lines have shrunken down. And that's shrunken right down to a 7-0. Thailand will be disappointed they didn't get on the board and also disappointed. They, they probably had a few opportunities that went begging and, and uh, yeah, couldn't quite get it to go to hand. But uh, congratulations to Japan who have managed to hold on to a very tight battle. Oscar, what are your thoughts, mate? Oh, well, like, as a referee, like, there, there was a lot of handling, so there was a lot of scrums, but, well, except for that one, like, 
there was no big issues coming from the penalties, just maybe about like roll away. But there was no big issues about from, coming from the referees. So I think they did well. Both of them did a good job. No disciplines. It was really perfect for me. All right, we have the last game of the day coming up. So we'll take a quick break and catch you here soon for the last game. Now for the last game, uh, uh, last, the 24th game, Malaysia against Philippines. So last but obviously not least, uh, the Malaysia women's team versus the Philippines women's team. It is very wet out there. And what we saw in the last game with the uh, Japanese and the Thai women, it's very difficult to score points in this these sort of conditions. So, uh, Oscar, what do you think? A low scoring game? 
will um for this game like will as for the men also they they will be really quite close and also I expect that for this game also it's gonna be really really close. Well, let's, these women have had the opportunity to watch the previous game, so maybe they know um, they need to really control the ball and look after it. So here we go. Kick off from the Philippines. Nice little one along the ground. They're really hard to pick up those balls, but the Philippines have taken it back. And we hope that the men's team is cheering on the women's team like we saw them cheering them on before. So it's really wet. You can see the water is spraying off the ground there. That ball's just skipping along the ground like a stone on a river. I think you could just swim in that. You could just swim in over there. Oh, it's going back, but they're still controlling it. And she's going to get a little bit isolated there. Is the referee going to judge it? Yes. Isolated. Malaysia over the top. Managed to get it. Smart play by the Malaysians. They tap the ball on the ground. It can be... Oh, she's going to try to stretch the legs. Oh. And she's been pulled back and... They've both been pulled back. I thought it was going to go all the Ooh. way. I think, what's, what's the referee going to call here? I think it was a knock-on, I think so. Yeah. What's she called it here? She's called a knock-on. So, uh, yes, it's uh, unlucky there for the Malaysians, but it's been a knock-on. And so the ball will go to the Philippines. And let's try to see the ladies try to run it out of their own 22. They're just in, really close to their try line here, so they've got a bit of work to get out. So maybe uh, you think I think you better kick here because it is wet. Well, I think the kick option is going to be good because if you possible, it's not the ball is not going accurately, so the kicking is it's going to be really good. They decided to run it so far, and they managed to get a penalty. The ref is <laughs> but the problem is when the ball is that wet, and you try to take a quick tap. You are there is the danger of of losing it forward, and I'm sure she's a bit disappointed there. But uh, should be able to make up for it now on defence. So Malaysia will get another another go, another opportunity here. Sort of gifted on a plate by the Filipinos. And they've let them off the hook. And they'll look to... Oh, very good scrum by the Filipino ladies. They've actually turned this right around. How's the ref going to judge? What would you call that, mate? Looks like it twisted a little bit. Yeah, I think it was going to the inside push. I think this judge would, would be really tough for the referee. It's so a lot of situation right now. Hmm, she's going to reset it here, so the Malaysians will get another chance. But the Filipinos are really contesting this. They're really trying to push them off the ball. And they go again, but they managed to get it back. And they're looking to open it up. A little bit of a wrap around. She's running the wrong direction. She <laughs> yep, they're still holding onto the ball here. But a lot of pressure coming from... It's gone between her legs and the referee's called... They've called a knock on there. Oh, one of the Filipino players looks like she's holding her head. This could be an injury. Looks like she's in a bit of, bit of pain here. Possibly going into that contact, she may have taken a boot or knee to the head. She does not look comfortable at all. So I think the time is off here where we just check on player safety, which is obviously the most important thing at this stage. She's definitely in a very uncomfortable position. Let's see if she can come back here. Some worried faces from the sideline. Just checking on their player. And we see again the Filipino mascot, which is some kind of cat. So she's just uh, clutching she's at her now. head now. Maybe a, just an accidental elbow or blow to the, the side of the eye. So she'll come off and get checked, and the replacement will come on. And it will be a scrum feed to the Philippines. Enjoying that at all. Very uncomfortable. Now we will carry on. So we have four minutes and 30 seconds in play, and still nobody has scored a, a, a point yet. As we said before, the games are going to be very tight with this, these weather conditions. 
And she's learnt from her first mistake. And that, that much cleaner tap this time. And just a quick 10 metre gain. She's been stuck there on the wrong side. She just fell awkwardly. And the Malaysians have managed to get over the ball. And win it back. Strong counter ruck by the Filipinos. But the Malaysians have held on to it. Keep running back into traffic there. Now they look to go wide. She's going to go try around going out around the outside of your opposition player. The arm comes out and she just manages to get it. Probably probably the leg trip, accidental leg trip ended up getting her. Balls come back. Go wide again. Looking for holes in the Filipino defense. There's none there at the moment. And ref saves play on. She's managed to get over the ball. She's holding on to it. Have they managed to get it back? Yes, well done to the Philippines. They've managed to get that back. Plenty of hands in there, though. How's the ref going to go? Yes. <laughs> hands in. Once the ruck is formed, you can no longer put your hands in, and the Malaysians have been caught. So they might be able to get out of their own half now, the Philippine ladies. They, they're going to tap and go. The remaining time is 2 minutes and 30, 30 seconds. But the score is still nil nil. It's off the foot. No. Ref has called it not off the foot. It must have come off a hand there. She's saying that it's been knocked on, so it's not a penalty, it's just a scrum. Still, nobody has managed to cross the line. Nobody's actually got really close. I think Malaysia got within 10 metres, but hasn't really been a try scoring opportunity. Uh, the Philippines are yet to get down the other end of the field. It's just this weather is very difficult to play, very difficult conditions. Penalty, tap ball, here we go now. And the run through, strong run, but the defense is up to it, tackled there. Now they'll look to go wide. They probably can't actually see the other side of the field, that's how bad the weather is here, but good step. Good hands, the fence is still there, can she get the ball down? Referee says yes. The hand goes up, the relief. Sigh of relief from the Malaysians. It was quite close, but anyway, like, she made a try. Yes, look, look at, at that. that. Just pump the legs, hands go off, and turning, rolling, spinning. Philippines almost managed to hold her up, but she just needs one blade of grass, and there it is. You can see it's down. It was really close. Huh? So we finally get some points on the board after six minutes of play. And the conversion is unsuccessful, so the score is 5-0 to Malaysia. Just 30 seconds to play in the first half. Well, as I said to you, like, this game is really tough right now. It's really, really tough. I, we, I count on the, uh, like, right now Malaysia got the five points, but we, cannot, we don't know who's going to win this game. It's almost a uh, repeat of the first game. Uh, it was, um, sorry, the previous game, which was 7-0. This is 5-0 without the conversion, but this is how tight these games are in these conditions. Very good take. Just dropping down to an E. You can see how much water's on that field. As she drops down, there's a big splash. That's the hooter. The Philippines will want to get some points on the board before they go into the sheds. Now they look to sprint it. Oh, just, just holding on the ball. They are... It's going to go all the way, I think so. Yes, so they're going to have another opportunity here. I think it's a yellow card. I think that player didn't move away quickly. Yep, judge professional foul. Number nine for Malaysia will be sent to the bin. So the Filipinos are deciding to kick it into touch here. We haven't seen a lot of kicking into touch. Mostly it's been tap and goes, but maybe they just want to get a bit closer, give them a bit more opportunity to attack. And also, as always, uh, that line out will draw in the Malaysian defenders giving the outside backs of the Philippines much more space to work in. So if they can take this cleanly, they will have a very wide open field to attack from. And it's taken nicely. Here we go. Here's their first real attacking opportunity. They go right through the middle. Pop ball. Looking to go wide now. Oh no! Just when they had it right. Yes, disappointment. The old fist pumps there. But that'll be half time. Nothing in this game. Just five points in it. 
bit of frustration showing there by the Filipino ladies because that was a really, really good opportunity for them. <sighs> and probably relief from the Malaysians because uh, they do have a player in the bin and they probably got away with one there because that ball went to hand, I believe. It was a straight run to the goal line for the Filipinos. All right, we'll take a break and we'll join you back for the second half. Here we go again. Second half of the match between the Malaysian women and the Filipino women. So we just give a shout out to all our viewers on the YouTube channel. If you're there, let us know what you think. Uh, would you enjoy playing in these conditions? Do you want to be out there running around in that weather? It's not too cold, but it is very, very wet. And we can see almost mini lakes starting to form out there on the field. Malaysia are going to kick us off and it's a little one along the ground hard to pick up because it's so slippery so wet and what was the referee call here i believe it possibly lost forward oh yeah missed forward is a knock on i think so yeah so i think that little stable on the ground from the malaysians has actually paid dividends for them they're going to get the ball back so they've, they've stabbed it along the ground and Philippine woman unable to control that ball. So that scrum to feed to Malaysia. What have they got planned? And it's pretty messy in there. And it's turned over the Philippine woman. Have it. Here we go. Running straight, running hard, running well, running straight through the middle and offloading <sighs> and fending. Holy guacamole. Look at them go. <laughs> They're away. They're breaking down the field. Has she got the gas? Has she just held on from the oh, jersey end? Malaysia got the ball. Oh, oh, that's a oh man. Oh, let me catch my breath. Oh. Look at them go. They almost went through. Just Malaysia managed to grab them just by their fingertips. Just at the end there. It's just amazing right now. The Philippines just got the ball. Just go to fourth. And after that, Malaysia got the ball and made the touch. It was really amazing. Okay, not, not enough spacing in the line out here. So the Filipinos will get another opportunity. It's their feet to the line out. And they've got oh. the ball, but there was another hand in there. Ah, there was a double knock on by the looks of it, and it's going to be a scrum feed to the Malaysians. It looked like when she took the ball in the line out, she also took the ball and a Malaysian hand at the same time. So as she came down, that hand just managed to pry the ball loose. So now to feed the last scrum, the Filipino woman managed to get a tight hit and push them off the ball. They've got the size advantage, they're trying to do it again, but they haven't managed this time. So it's going to go to the Filipinos and Malaysians, but they're getting pushed back. They're almost back to their try line. They've got to be careful here. Yep, and that's exactly what's going to happen. She's been caught there without her support play, and now really big opportunity. Quick tap and go. There are opportunity both sides here at the moment. Both directions. She's gone forward, trying to place it back. Playing advantage, so they'll get a free attack here. No, and the referee's blowing the whistle, not rolling away. Should be a quick tap and go here. Tap and Got to come back on the mark. Just a little hit of herself. What are they going to do here? Use one of their power runners to go through. Oh, oh very strong defense. And too many numbers at the end of the day. And the Philippines managed to go across the line. With number two is Erica May Legapsi going across. Oh, I think it's not a try. I think it's a forward pass. Oh. 
All right, let me take that back. <laughs> it looked like a try from up here, but we didn't quite see it, and the pass has been deemed forward. Yes, <laughs> called by the referee. Uh, jumped ahead of ourselves. Apologies. So it will be a scrum feed. I thought the Filipinos had done enough to get across the line. But just a slight forward pass as they're going to win it. Those scrums are looking very, very unstable. Oh. And uh, yes, the referee almost feels sorry for these girls because she knows how hard it is to pick up that ball off the ground. Yeah, picking up that ball has proven to be very difficult in these conditions. It's almost as difficult to pick up as Thor's hammer. That's how hard it is. Few are able to do it. <laughs> Probably not as heavy, just a little slippery. <laughs> here we go. He's gone out the back. Malaysia's got caught on their own. Now, yeah, they've gone for a different option here. They've cut over the top. This time, at least, Ooh. it's gone back, but... I think she missed their forward. What's happened there? She's played the ball and the offside player has picked it up. So the kick is paid off. Ooh, oh, that's, yeah, cool. that's a high tackle there. Is she going to go to the pocket? No. Oh, just got probably lucky to, get, lucky to get away with that one. And again, the ball has slipped out, but it's gone backwards. The pressure now from the Filipino defence. They're really coming up. Ooh. Good hit there by the number eight. Looking to go around the defense. Looking to work, looking to move. Now the ball's coming back. What's out the clock looking like? Still plenty of time. Just under three minutes on the clock. As they're going in there, they got to want they might need a snorkel just so they can breathe when they go to ground here. It's almost like a uh, tropical snorkeling expedition for some of these ladies when they get tackled. So a bit of relief there. That was a long passage of play. So the breathing in the heavy ones. The substitutes are coming now. Philippines are bringing on fresh legs. It will be a scrum feed to the Philippines. Some very eager backs there waiting for the ball ready to attack. I just want to give a clap to each team and to the referee because the jersey is going to be really wet and the weight is going to be really heavy. Did well, doing well to hold onto the ball. Look at, look at that leg drive. Very well done. She has a Malaysian player hanging off her but she managed to pump the legs, gain a few metres. There's, there's that ball again popping out in all sorts of directions. Look at that it's pressure. gone back onto the Malaysian side, but they're going backwards at the moment. They want to regather themselves and start going forward. And well, they managed to find himself in some clear open space here. But defender has come across and shut her down. Very good counter ruck. The ball looks like it's out there. And referee is saying Malaysian player didn't stay on her feet. She was pushed back. So the penalty will go to the Philippines. So there can't be a lot of time left on the clock. So the Philippines are going to have to make a plan and execute quickly. They're just five points behind. But if they're wanting to win this game, they're going to have to score twice. Oh, or they can score under the post. And What I mean twice. A converted try will do it. So time is running out. There is the Huda, so that will be the last. This will be the last play. The Malaysians will want to try and hold them out. The Filipinos will be wanting to score, and preferably within a good kicking position. Oh, oh and just like that, the problems that have plagued both teams. Uh, pretty much the weather is the has the final say with that drop ball.
I mean, it's a disappointment for the Filipinos, but look at the joy and jubilation on the Malaysian girls' faces. Both teams have worked really, really hard in this game, and it could have gone either way, but in the end, Malaysia women's team have done just enough to hold on. Just enough. Not much in it at all. Just five points, and they will go in for a well-deserved hot shower. And that'll probably do it from us and the commentary team. So thank you very much for those uh, around Asia and around the rest of the world that have joined us here today. This is the final game. But join us again tomorrow. Uh, myself and Oscar will be back and along with the other commentators. So uh, good evening and good night from Incheon, South Korea. I hope to catch you all again tomorrow. You. See you tomorrow, everybody. And I hope that you guys have a good sleep.